very good message. I it heard it in my like ears. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the official go ahead from Kelly, but that seemed like. Uh, okay, guys, we are ready to go. We're ready to go. Thank you so much, Kelly. And, um, and welcome, everyone, to the 2021 ACB DC Leadership Conference for the first time being held virtually, uh, broadcast on ACB Radio Mainstream and also simulcast on ACB um, uh, YouTube and ACB uh, Facebook. Uh, this year's uh, conference is dedicated to Charlie Crawford, who was an amazing man in memory of Charlie. Uh, he was our second executive director with the American Council of the Blind, a lifetime member and friend, and a tremendous advocate for the blind and visually impaired community. And we'll hear a little more uh, from those remembering Charlie later on in our program. We come to you th this morning really reflecting on what has been an amazing year for all of us in 2020 going into 2021. It's hard to believe everyone that just a year ago, we were all together in person in Washington DC and the Holiday Inn sharing stories and food and drinks and pre getting prepared for a wonderful uh, president's meeting and a legislative seminar and heading out to Capitol Hill to walk uh, uh, to visit our representatives and congressmen. And so much has happened within the last 12 months. And given how much has taken place with the virus, uh, with the social unrest, with an assault on our ca capital, it has uh, just been um, a year of change and a year of growth for the American Council of the Blind. And I come to you this morning very, very proud of what our organization has been able to accomplish. It was just a year ago at our DC Leadership Conference board meeting that we adopted our code of conduct. And it has been our beacon to guide us uh, to create a safe, respectful and welcoming environment for all of our members and friends. It has been joined bar, by our key five core values that we adopted 18 months ago, uh, right before our Rochester uh, convention. And those are integrity and honesty. And I think you see that every day with our organization. You saw it yesterday with an eight hour board meeting where we were, as we have been for the past year, very transparent, doing our business on ACB radio for all of our membership and friends to hear. And we've conducted ourselves in a way that is truthful, it's honest, and it really, I think, says the best about our character. Our second core value is respect. And again, I think we have strived so hard inside the American Council of the Blind to really create an environment of respect. Again, we saw it yesterday in our board meeting where we can have differences of opinion without taking it personally. We honor each other's opinions. We work in a democratic me method and manner and we move forward. This convention, the theme is fostering voice, choice, and community. And I think that really plays out in our third core value, which is collaboration. For the first time, you're going to see a tremendous amount of integration at our ACB DC Leadership Conference with our corporate partners and our partners in the blind and visually impaired community. This is collaboration at work. You're going to see legislative breakout sessions that feature mem many members of industry and governmental agencies, as well as a fireside chat, which will involve seven of our closest partners inside the blind and visually impaired community from the National Federation of the Blind, 
the Blinded Veterans Association, the American Foundation for the Blind, uh, the Vision Serve Alliance, AER, and APH. They're all going to be involved in our fireside chat. And we're also going to see many, many more partners involved in our legislative seminars talking about policy and things that will affect the blind and visually impaired community for years to come. The fourth core value for the American Council of the Blind is flexibility. And I think we have demonstrated flexibility over and over again over these last 12 months from making the historic decision to host a virtual convention last year and for all the follow through that every put, everybody put together to make that really a tremendous success. And also the uh, flexibility that we have continued to show with a staff that had to move to a remote environment in the middle of a pandemic and did not miss a beat. In fact, I would say worked even harder and were more productive through really, really difficult times. We've learned a lot uh, about ourselves. And I think one of the things we've really learned is the value of flexibility. The last uh, core value is initiative. And I think initiative has really shown itself through the invention and the creation of our community events. A year ago, we did not have any community event calls. In March, we, we really hosted the very first one on March 17th. Cindy will talk about this a little bit later. Now we have over 300 community event calls a month. Isn't that amazing? Over 2,500 of them over the last year. They range in so many different care, uh, uh, categories and disciplines, but what I'm the most impressed by is the initiative of this organization that has promoted and fostered uh, people to get involved, to share their talents and their opinions and their spirit at a time when many people felt isolated and alone the American Council of the Blind met the challenge and has been there for our members. This makes me so, so proud. I'm going to turn it over to Eric in just one second, but I also want to thank our membership for all they've done in the area of helping us with financial support. Uh, an organization that's trying to grow as ACB is, one of the life engines of that is people's time, treasure, and talent. And I want to thank our membership for how well they've supported all of our fundraising programs this year and the difference that has made for our organization. The monthly monetary support committee wanted to let you all know this weekend that they are going to do a special campaign in order to continue to grow our members in the monthly monetary support program. It takes a minimum of $10 to join the program and they are going to offer a smart television uh, to anybody who joins this weekend. They'll automatically be put in a drawing for a smart television that will be uh, selected uh, at the end of, of this session once people's pledges have been uh, collected. And if anybody would like to get involved and learn more about the monthly monetary support program, I'm gonna give you a, an email address and a phone number. The email address is askacbmms at gmail.com. So that's A-S-K-A-C-B-M-M-S at gmail.com. And the phone number is 202-743-743. 0755. Again, that's 202-743-0755. Uh, if you call the number, please just leave a message. It's a Google subscription phone. If you leave a message, uh, you won't get a per person uh, to speak to you in person, but leave a message and they will get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you all for considering joining the monthly monetary support program. 
all the contributions you all have made as members and friends of this organization are the engine that keeps it moving. And now I would like to take a moment to introduce Eric Bridges, our executive director. I cannot again say enough about the partnership that Eric uh, and our team and the board have had over this last year plus. Eric's staff has done an absolutely amazing job. You heard their reports last night on the board meeting. But Eric is not only a business colleague, he's a friend. And we can't wait till we get to get together mm -hmm. next to share our Let's Talk Sports show yeah. and hear a little bit uh, from yeah. Debbie Hazelton about her meal replacement shakes because it brings a <laughs> smile to our face every time we get together with Rick Pellet Gun Morin because we got to have a little fun. But Eric, I welcome you as a friend and a colleague and I want to introduce to you Eric Bridges, our executive director. Eric. Well, thanks so much, Dan. Appreciate it. Um, would like to acknowledge a very important uh, contributor to this uh, set of events the next couple of days, and that is J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, they they are a presidential sponsor, a ten thousand dollars sponsor of this event, and have very much appreciated their support over the last several years. As many of you are aware, they also sponsor the J.P. Morgan Chase Leaders. Uh, fellowship program that we launched in 2016. So thank you very much to them. Uh, I'm here uh, this morning to, uh, number one, uh, thank you all for coming uh, and, and participating in this virtual, first ever virtual uh, DC Leadership Conference. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a pretty action-packed next uh, three days. And uh, you know, our team has worked really hard to uh, cultivate the, the, the programming and uh, go out and locate interesting and dynamic presenters uh, to share their, their viewpoints and their, their knowledge with all of you. And in turn, it's, hope that it's, it's our hope that we hear from you. Uh, there will be Q&A uh, &A, uh, where available with many of these uh, breakout presentations as well. The fireside chat this evening, I think is, is going to be really very interesting to, to listen into. Uh, as Dan alluded to uh, when, when he kicked this off, uh, we are honored uh, to be able to dedicate this year's DC Leadership Conference to a, a very special leader within this organization, Charlie Crawford. Uh, just to give you a, a little backstory, my, my very first uh, ACB interaction with regard to a convention was in a 1999 in Los Angeles. And uh, I heard Charlie give his executive director's report, and I went up to the stage with the hopes of meeting him. And there was a line of folks that were chatting with him as they went to break. And uh, he came to me and, and said, hi. The name's John Wayne. I was like, oh my gosh, he was hilarious uh, and endearing. Really, obviously very smart uh, and a passionate advocate. And I came to know him better uh, when I moved to the DC area 20 years ago, right out of college, taking my first job and began interacting with the American Council of the Blind as a, as a participant in a, a cross blind community monthly meeting. ACB would host these meetings and I'd show up and, you know, I was really just learning about policy and advocacy within the national blindness movement. And what I was struck by was his level of knowledge, how he was able to synthesize some, some fairly complex issues into uh, words and phrases that, that were understandable to me as a new person that had not uh, done this sort of work for very long. Uh, he was willing to share. He was willing to educate. Uh, he was obviously very passionate, but also ultimately very effective in the work uh, that he and ACB did. And I always thought during those years, 
man, ACV works on some really cool issues, whether it was audio description or accessible paper currency. Uh, there were numerous initiatives that ACB had undertaken that Charlie was leading that got me interested in thinking about, man, wouldn't it be cool to work here one day? Well, here I am, right? Uh, I, I want to thank Sue uh, for allowing us the, the opportunity to, to dedicate this uh, conference in, in Charlie's memory. Uh, Sue is Charlie's wife. And uh, it gives me uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, the video that honors Charlie. And here it is. Guys, I got to be able to share a screen. Please bear with us. We'll have the video up shortly. I think we're going to go ahead if it's all right with everybody. Um, I, I believe we have uh, um, 
Janet with us. Janet, are you with us? I am. Okay. Um, while we're working to get the video for Charlie queued up, and we really want to share that, it is a really wonderful and moving tribute to Charlie. Uh, but I'm going to ask Janet if she can take uh, the next few minutes uh, and share with us uh, the uh, highlights of the upcoming uh, ACB virtual conference and convention. Uh, better together wherever we are. And so that was uh, let my me. First line, you I'm sorry, Janet. Down. I apologize. So, Janet, <laughs> let me introduce Janet Dickelman, our uh, convention coordinator from St. Paul, uh, Minnesota. Janet? Good morning, everyone. And I have to say, I'm kind of glad that Kelly couldn't get the screen share going because I was trying to figure out how I was going to talk after the tribute to Charlie. So, thank you, Kelly. Um, <laughs> Those of you who attended our 2020 virtual convention know how exciting it was. Of course, we'd much rather be in person with you, but the one good thing about the virtual convention, one of the good things, is we were able to reach so many new people new to ACB and people who just are not able to attend our in-person conventions. So 2020, for that reason, the um, fact that we had to go virtual really was a bonus for ACB and I'm sure 2021 will be also. And as um, Dan said, our convention theme for our 2021 convention is ACB, Better Together Wherever We Are. That was submitted by Janine Stanley. When I opened up a contest for a potential theme, my email exploded. I had so many good suggestions and in the first minutes, I probably had 30 emails with suggestions. So we have a lot of creative people. Thank you very much. I will be reaching out to all the state and special interest affiliate presidents about our roll call. We will do something similar to what we did last year. We will set up times so that we can have a Zoom call with our affiliate presidents and get their recordings. I was, it was suggested by Tony Stevens that I try to keep them to 30 seconds per affiliate. So I will have you say your name, your state. And I thought it was nice having a little quick fun fact about your state. So um, however you wanna do that, but we will try to keep it at 30 seconds. So I will be reaching out to you shortly about that. Our convention registration will open on May 20th and it will close on June 28th. Um, we need to close the registration in order to get the braille and large print programs out to everyone. And we will offer that format again as we did last year for braille and large print programs. Registration this year will be $25 for ACB members. It will be $40 for non-ACB members. However, if you're a non-ACB member and you would like to join as a member at large, that will reduce the registration cost to 35 because the member at large is $10 and then you can get the $25 registration um, fee. Registration will allow you to be in a door prize drawing. And last year we had many, many good, great door prizes and uh, you don't have to be present. Your name will just be called and you'll win a door prize. It will give you the Zoom links so you can be involved in all of the sessions. It will give you a bidder number for the auction. You can also, of course, if you register, you will be able to become a convention sponsorship, purchase the convention newspaper, which will be sent to your email box every morning. And there's a lot of advantages of registering for the convention. Uh, we will have five streams for sessions every day. So I'm working with the affiliates and um, committees to get their information as to when they would like to try to schedule their sessions. I'm trying to work to make sure that we don't have more than five sessions concurrently so that we can stream everything that needs to or wants to be streamed. Uh, this our will not include not our exhibitor channel or our audio described tour channel. Yes, we're going to have audio described tours again. I know that was very um, popular last year. Our exhibit hall for any of our exhibitors, they will be able to set up Zoom rooms in addition to their sponsorship presentation. And we will show send out the links for the Zoom rooms so that you can go in and talk to each exhibitor if you would like to do that. 
um, the planning Sandra committee. We have a representative from every special interest affiliate and, com and committee. If you are the president of a special affiliate, um, know that the dates for them submitting our information for the pre-registration form or the registration form is April 1st and for the program is April 20th. Although I want all of the affiliates and committees to send me as soon as possible their preferred time so that we can get that I can get that on my calendar. And if I need to ask someone to potentially change a session so that we can make sure that it gets screen streams, we can do all of that. Um, let me give you a little information about the format of the convention or uh, what's going on. Friday evening, July 16th, and convention dates are Friday, July 16th to Friday, July 23rd. Friday evening, the 16th, I believe we're going to have our ACB film night, and then that will be followed by the Friends and Art Showcase of the Performing Arts. Saturday evening, we're still working, but I'm quite sure we're going to have a session on Get Up and Get Moving, um, all about exercise and getting moving. That will be a great session Saturday evening. Um, Sunday will be our opening general session. Monday evening, we will have a session similar to what we did last year. so popular with audio description um, that will be set up by the audio description committee. Tuesday will be our ACB auction. Wednesday evening, information access committee is working on a, a session and I can't wait to get a little write up on that that I can send out as a convention preview that's going to be on financial freedom, doing your banking and other financial things online, we're going to have a broker. Um, we're going to have people from the banking industry, a financial planner, I believe so that should be a wonderful session. Thursday evening will be our banquet. And our banquet speaker, I have to thank Kim Charlson for helping us for getting this. Our banquet speaker will be Peter Sagel from NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And anyone who's listened to the show knows what a tremendous um, speaker Peter is. And yes. in addition to being a media host, he is also a runner and he was running with as a partner to a blind runner during the Boston Marathon and they crossed over the finish line just a couple of minutes before the bombing. So that he's gonna have lots of wonderful stories to tell us. And Friday evening in conjunction with hopefully the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, we are going to have an Olympics extravaganza. Stay tuned for additional information about that. We have a lot of things, wonderful things planned. We're still in the planning stage, but there'll be lots more information about that. Our general sessions daily will be Monday through Friday. They will begin at 10.30 a.m. and run to 2 p.m. Except on Friday, we plan to run it a little bit longer till 4 p.m. Um, to facilitate our voting. We are going to have voting throughout the general sessions and you'll hear more about that from our voting task force. Some who will be speaking later today. We're balancing, making sure we can get all of our, as much of our programming in and also allow time for our accessible voting. So this is gonna be a balancing act that Dan and I are working on. Our talking book narrator who will join us on Wednesday is J.P. Linton. And J.P. Linton has done a lot of books, science fiction, The Martian, um, he read that. Also a lot of history, some young adult books. Um, I sent, I'll be sending out his information on a convention preview shortly so everybody can read about him. We are going to have a, some recorded programming as we did last year, our angels presentation, our scholarship presentations, our DKM and JP Morgan Chase will all be recorded prior to the convention. We will read the newspaper over ACB radio each morning, and we will have the pre and post um, convention shows with Tony and Debbie Hazelton. So that will be wonderful. Our afternoon sessions will start at 2.30 after general sessions. 
um, during the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday prior to general sessions. We will have some sessions earlier in the day. So we have a lot going on to make sure you stay up to date with what's going on to, with the convention. If you are not already a member of the convention list, you may <coughs> send an email to ACB convention plus sign subscribe at ACB lists, L I S T S dot O R G. And you can always reach out to me directly. My email is janet.dickelman at gmail.com. That's Janet, J A N E T dot Dickelman, D I C K E L M A N at gmail.com. And you can also reach me by phone at 651 428 5059. And just to let you know, for our future conventions, our dates for our convention in Omaha for 2022 is Friday, July 1st, 2022 through July 8th. And the room rate there is $96 a night at the Omaha at the Hilton. Uh, 2023, we will back, be back in Schaumburg, June 30th through, or we will be able to go to Schaumburg. I shouldn't say back in Schaumburg since we weren't able to be there. Um, and that is June 30th through July 7th. Room rates there are $98 a night. Um, oh, and finally, for those of you, as far as the 2021 convention is concerned, we were able to successfully negotiate our, our with the Hyatt in Phoenix to void our contract for 2021 with no penalty or no um, necessity to rebook with them. So we're looking at what we're going to do starting with 2024, where we're going to go starting with that time um, as of 2024. Mr. President, that concludes my report. And of course, I miss seeing everyone in person and uh, but look forward to being in touch with you virtually. Oh, thank you, Janet. Excellent report. And I know everybody is very much looking excited to uh, excitingly to our 2021 uh, virtual convention. So thank you. Uh, next, uh, hey, Dan, I think, yes, Dan, Rick? Uh, we've got the video ready to go, I think. I okay, believe. we will now hear the wonderful um, in memory video uh, from Sue Crawford and Pat Sheehan uh, on Charlie Crawford, our second executive Hello. director. I'm Susan Crawford, Silver Spring, Maryland, and Charlie Crawford and I were married for more than 34 years. Uh -oh. And it is just such an honor that ACB is um, honoring him with the leadership conference by naming mm -hmm. this after him this year. So um, to tell you a little bit about Charlie, those of you who may not know, he, he was one of the founders mm -hmm. of the Blind Leadership Club in Boston that became, later became the Bay State Council of the Blind. Um, mm. He had just such a, a generous spirit. Um, he wrote um, back in the 70s, he wrote um, a guide to self-advocacy because at his core, he believed in himself and he ex wanted to extend that to others. He, he became blind at age 22. Um, he, his idea of leadership was bottom up, not top down. That, and it was in bottom up by joining with others to form a community. That's what the Blind Leadership Club was all about. That's what Bay State Council was all mm -hmm. about. And then he, at the commission, uh, he became, he was appointed by uh, Governor Dukakis and later Governor Weld and worked under Governor Salucci as well as commissioner in Massachusetts. Um, when we, when we were leaving Massachusetts to come down to, to Maryland, when he was going to become executive director of ACB, uh, there was a farewell party for him. And at the party, uh, about 10 people stepped forward and said, Charlie, we, we discovered um, that you've been getting your shoe shined every week at Jimmy's. Uh, Jimmy 
was someone who lived at the Franciscan mm -hmm. Mission and had just a little, little shoe sign, shoe shine shop. And, and I said, well, yes. And they said, well, we noticed, someone noticed that you've been giving him $20 every week. And so there's 10 of us who step forward and we will make sure that Michael, Jimmy, you still that Jimmy does not lose any money by you moving to Boston. And that's Charlie's generosity of spirit. I didn't, I knew he was going to Jimmy's. Michael. I had no idea he was giving him $20 a week. What, he was just such a generous spirit and that generosity infected other people. And, and that is what, you know, that, that also combines with leadership because it's not just, it, it's leadership by nurturing others and supporting others and mobilizing others to achieve a common goal, a common mission. And that basically I think is the mission of ACB. ACB is bottom-up leadership. It's, it's building a community and it's, and it's being generous. Hello everybody, my name is Pat Sheehan. I am from Silver Spring, Maryland. And uh, right now I am the chapter president of the uh, National Capital Area Chapter of the Amer American Council of the Blind of Maryland. And one of the things that I remember about Charlie uh, is his advocacy. Uh, under Charlie's leadership with exec as executive director, he helped define and get the audio description project started, really started under Charlie's watch. Under transportation, under transportation and under pedestrian safety, he started the pedestrian safety, environmental access areas within ACB. <clears throat> he did a lot with helping to define um, uh, the truncated domes, um, in the subway system. Uh, I think it was Peggy McCarthy who was killed in Boston because she fell over the edge of a platform and he made sure that um, subway systems were safe. <clears throat> Intersection designs with auto audible pedestrian signals was part of what was done in Maryland and now it's done throughout the United States. But I think uh, aside from being able to articulate a vision, I think one of Charlie's enduring qualities, as some of you know, many of you know, was his ability to relate to people. He really did a good job, whether you were someone working at a national level, at a state level, or local level. He cared about what you thought. He cared about what you felt. He helped to empower people by respecting uh, their points of view, uh, listening to what they had to say, and he made you feel valuable. And that's one of the things that I think the leadership conference is all about. For ACB to hold this leadership conference and to call it the Charles Crawford Leadership Conference this year, uh, I consider it to be such an honor. And I know Ch Charlie would have been, Charlie would be delighted. Um, and, and I feel his presence and, um, and I'm sure many people do at ACB. Um, he cared for everyone and um, absolutely everyone. And I just want to say thank you. And, um, you know, I loved him so very much and I missed him as, as I know so many of you do too. And I thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much, Sue and uh, Patrick, for your wonderful remembrances of Charlie and this year's conference, Fostering Voice, Choice, and Community. I think nothing else would live to the spirit of Charlie. We miss him. We miss his advocacy. And Charlie, rest in peace. Um, next, I'm excited to introduce to you um, our Multicultural Affairs uh, Committee, uh, who will do a presentation this morning on fostering diversity and inclusion through a mentoring program. Uh, I'm uh, honored to welcome uh, Peggy Garrett, the chair of our Multicultural Affairs Committee from Missouri City, Texas, along with Michael Garrett, uh, member of the Multicultural Affairs Committee and also our ACBES chair from Missouri City, Texas. 
Sandra Sermons, a member of the Multicultural Affairs Committee and chair of our International Relations Committee from Rockville, Maryland, and Marie, Regina Marie Brink, member of the Multicultural Affairs Committee and also president of her local capital chapter of the California Council of the Blind and one of last year's J.P. Morgan Chase Fellow uh, Scholarship winners from Sacramento, California. Uh, Peggy, as I turn it over to you, I heard a quote this morning from Harriet Tugman that really resonated with me, uh, of paraphrasing, but she used the, used, the, used the statement, you cannot have dreams without dreamers. And I welcome Peggy, Michael, uh, Sandra, and Regina, because they are true dreamers for our organization. So welcome, Peggy. And by the way, Peggy, we're going to get you, you get your 10, you, we're not, we're not shortchanging you. So we'll, we'll make sure you get your full 45 minutes. So we'll be late going into the, to the Leadership Connect show. So you still have 45 minutes for your presentation. So thank you. Oh, and I, I hear Michael, but I don't hear Peggy yet. So she's muted. She's like, can can you hear me can, now? We can hear you now. And and Peggy, that is not the first time we'll the last time we'll hear that question this weekend. So <laughs> welcome, 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 Peggy. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you all this morning. Thank you for the opportunity for. MCAC to present to the president's group today. You know, ACB is an awesome organization. Um, and as President Spoon has said earlier in his opening statement, all of the challenges that we were met with last year and how ACB stepped up and met those challenges and just put us on the map and just in marvelous ways. And we are so appreciative of the opportunity to be a part of ACB. It is my honor to chair the Multicultural Affairs Committee. And as most of you know, our mission is to promote uh, inclusion and embracing of people of all ethnicities. Uh, ACB has just made such a difference in my life that it's made me want to make a difference for everybody else who is living with blindness or even low vision. We, as great as we are moving forward, we can move ahead and even be greater as we reach out to other uh, people of color, blacks, other people of color, uh, as we promote inclusion and embracing everyone there is a lot of talent in this organization that has yet to be tapped and included. And this is what we want to do. We want to make this organization from the top to the bottom representative of all of its members. So what we have looked at and decided that the way to do this is through a mentoring program. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. However, before I do that, I do want to introduce to you or make you aware of the other members of the Multicultural Affairs Committee. They are Regina Brink, Cheryl Cummings, Michael Garrett, Mary Haroyan, Pam Metz, Donna Pomerantz, Mitch Pomerantz, and Sandra Sermons. And I want to thank my committee for all of the hard work they do. We've been really busy trying to uh, just create programs and give people opportunities to know that we are, we are a very ethnic uh, organization and we just want to get everybody involved and included. So with that being said, we're going to start this morning with a presentation. Michael Garrett is going to talk to you about the importance of mentoring. And then Sandra Sermon is going to talk to you about ways in which the ACB can, some steps ACB can take to implement the program. And then Regina Brink is going to share with you the various types of mentoring uh, programs that we can implement. Then I'm gonna come back with just a few tips on uh, some of the things that we can do at the local level to start the mentoring process and how to move it up to the 
uh, leadership level of ACB. So I'll turn it over to Michael Garrett to get us started. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. I, hear you fine. Yeah, we hear yes, you. Yes, Michael, we can okay, hear you. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, I chose this first segment. I wanted to present this first segment of this presentation because of the uh, statistical significance and because of personal experience. And I want to preface my comments or this segment by saying, uh, the, the presentation is sort of, it, it focuses on uh, Black and African American uh, participation, but it can be uh, incre increased to include all people of color. So the, the very first thing that needs to be addressed is, is the obvious, why mentoring? Why the need for mentoring? According to an article in Forbes magazine, in response to the Black Lives Matter uprising following the death of George Floyd, many organizations have committed to increasing uh, Black representation at the leadership levels. Both Microsoft and Uber have pledged to double the number of Black employees in senior level positions. Google, Royal Bank Canada, Lloyd's Bank Group, and HSBC, another financial conglomerate, also are among companies who have publicly announced their plans to increase Black representation in their leadership teams. This focus on top positions is part of a growing trend. While efforts to increase diversity have typically been uh, pushed at the more junior levels, over the past few years, external think tanks have been closely analyzing diversity in the upper ranks. According to the Center for Talent Innovation, Black employees hold only 3.2% of leadership roles. This gap must be addressed. However, beyond increasing Black representation at senior level and promise and the promise of anti-racism training, many corporations have failed to outline support mechanism they plan to put in place for black employees early in their career. Now this feels like a crucial oversight because it could, could be argued argue that, that one reason there are so, so few, few top, top leaders is because companies do so little to help talented junior black employees thrive. Now, many black professionals join the work environment where they are in the racial minority, which can be isolating. They can be made to feel that they are merely a diversity participant and should be grateful just to be there. They endure racism and microaggressions, and they feel compelled to compress their feelings of hurt and frustration to avoid conforming to the stereotype of being angry. 
So with that in mind, here are four steps that organization leaders can take to foster a better environment. Sandra? Good morning. Thank you, Michael. Um, and thank you for allowing me to participate in this presentation. So what you can do is create a safe space. We need to feel comfortable. We need to feel that it is okay to have the meaningful conversations. Then things are not going well. I am not, uh, I don't feel as a valued employee or I don't feel as a valued ACB member. What can be done to engage and, and to not stereotype a person of color? Okay, you're just an angry black woman but rather to dig deeper, peel back the layers of the onion and, and try to ascertain what exactly is going on, what is being said, and more importantly, what isn't being said. Because we need to feel that conversation, it is okay to have the more painful conversations. It doesn't really matter whether it's a particular incident or race in general. Also, it's not just the black thing. Um, anytime there is, whether there's racial unrest, you have something like George Floyd, or you have some, you know, within the blind community, something happens. Um, people that are, are not people of color, so um, white ACB members should feel comfortable with having that conversation as well. Because keep in mind, we're people first. So nobody should be afraid to sort of enter into those conversations, which typically have been regarded as being taboo. But no, if, if you feel... Regardless of the color of your skin, if you feel like the conversation needs to be had, you need to be empowered enough um, to be in it and not feel like there are going to be some repercussions. So you can't, you know, always wait for the person of color to, to engage. Sometimes, um, you know, you have to take the bullet, bite the bullet, and, and go ahead and, and step up yourself because we, we're celebrating our diversity, we're celebrating, but that allows for inclusion. So we're all people that we're bringing to the table and therefore any kind of issue, um, racial issue, then that we need to really, it needs to no longer be taboo. We kind of have to um, strip that, that secrecy, that taboo mm -hmm. away from it. Um, and go ahead and convene the conversation. Um, we need to be encouraged to be authentic. Whatever is happening, we we need to be able to say the good, the bad, and the ugly without having to sugarcoat, without having to, oh, well, you know, tread lightly, walk on eggshells. If, if it is occurring, then we need to call it what it is, call it out, um, have a conversation, see what can be done, um, whether that's in the corporate world or in ACB, as, as we're discussing this morning. And quite often, um, you'll have instances where, let's say a person of color is just entering into the organization or just entering into um, the workplace, you know, you go along to get along. OK, but that is not necessarily good. That's not necessarily going to make for a good uh, corporate official, a corporate workplace. And it doesn't necessarily make for a good organization. You know, you're just towing the party line because you feel like you have to when if inside you're miserable and you, you know, that doesn't that does not bode well for longevity of membership. 
Um, people have to be comfortable. People have to feel valued. People have to uh, feel like whatever is going on, they can bring to the table without any kind of retaliation. Um, basically, a ACB traditionally is an organization that celebrates democracy. We go above and beyond. So we, we also have to celebrate diversity. We have to celebrate the differences because in celebrating differences, um, you are creating a stronger organization. Everybody has, an, has assets. They are, we are um, a wealth of opportunities. Uh, people of color have um, a bottomless pit with respect to talent, education level, life experiences. And we want those to be valued enough to bring to the table, enough to be tapped into when we have um, within our ACB and our organization, our chapters, our local state affiliates, special interest affiliates, and just chapters. We, we would like to bring the tapestry of our experiences to the table to help better the organization. So, and we need to be able to feel um, that the door is open for us to do that. And that holds true whether you're talking about ACB, which is what we're talking about now, or the corporate world. We, we need to be comfortable. We need to be able to be who we are and we need to be celebrated for our differences and our uniqueness. We all have, we all have um, something that we can teach people. We all can learn from one another and we have to be able to facilitate um, a situation wherein that can take place. There can't be this sort of, you know, um, one-sided thing. There can't be uh, fear and intimidation, retaliation, um, none of those things. There, there has to be open communication. There has to be a level of receptivity to what people are saying. People have to be made to feel comfortable and people have to be included. And one of the most, most important ways of doing that is to develop um, our, our mentoring program. That is a very direct way of engaging ACB in general because it is um, the top down, like what Charlie would want, you know, or bottom up, like what Charlie would want, you know. We're taking the grassroots folks who are just coming in and, and we're combining them with people who maybe know the ropes a little bit better. They can teach them, we can teach them the ways of ACB and then they can take that through a mentoring program, they can take that and do us one better. They can improve the organization. They can be innovative. They can share their ideas and help to take ACB to the next level. Um, I, I think that mentoring programs are critical uh, for any organization, but particularly with ACB, because it is a way of passing down our traditions while allowing um, new folks to pump in new blood and to um, stir things up a little, maybe not too much, but stir them up, you know, um, make, all, make sure that all of the flavors are tasted, right? Because we, we are different people. We are different. We have, um, we're celebrating our diversity. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Regina. Hello, and thank you, Sandra. Thank you, uh, Peggy, Garrett, and David, for this opportunity to present today. So I am talking about establishing. So. <laughs> Uh, mentoring is a relationship and I'm going to repeat that because I think this is the most important part. Mentoring is a relationship in which a more experienced or more knowledgeable person helps to guide a less experienced or less knowledgeable person. And the reason I said that relationship is so important is because that allows you 
to talk to someone in a way that you can't if you don't establish that relationship first. There are constructive things you can say to someone that will be received differently if you have a relationship with them than if you don't. And some of those things that need to be said to the newbie are important and they can't be transmitted without someone that develops that relationship. And that takes some time and some investment. The mentor may be older or younger than the person being mentored, but they must have a certain idea of expert, or a certain level of expertise. Mentoring is important, not only because of the knowledge and skills mentees learn from mentors, but also because mentoring provides professional socialization and personal support to facilitate success in the organization. Quality mentoring greatly enhances mentees' chances for success. And stages of mentoring, so there's stages just like in anything else in life, successful mentoring relationships go through four basic phases. There's preparation, and that's like getting everything, you know, establishing that relationship negotiating, getting to know that person, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and where do they envision themselves, then enabling growth, and then closure, which that may be a different thing. It may, those relationships may continue on past the mentoring stage. And these build on each other and vary in length. In each phase, there are specific steps and strategies that lead to mentoring excellence. So there's mentoring types. The traditional one we're all familiar with is one-on-one -on -one mentoring. A mentee and mentor are matched either through a program or on their own. But there's distance mentoring or e-mentoring, a mentoring relationship in which the two parties or groups or a group are in different locations. We've all become very familiar with this e-mentoring thing now. <laughs> and then there's group mentoring. A single mentor is matched with several mentees. There's a mentoring model and the most traditional mentoring model is where one senior person from the organization or more experienced because it may not have to do with uh, age, you know, maybe someone loses their sight way later on in life, and this is a brand new experience to them. So it, but someone senior in that organization mentors one junior person from the organization. For example, if you have an operation where there are many mentee candidates, but a limited number of potential mentors, that would have to happen. And you may have to do group mentoring, e-mentoring, because it might work best. So with that, I want to turn it back to Peggy Garrett. And thank you for uh, listening to that about mentoring. All right. So thank you, Michael and Sandra and Regina. And I am now on Michael's computer because I got kicked off of my phone. So, but thank you all for, for sharing that information. Um, mentoring is, is definitely something that we need to implement, but it does need to operate from the grassroots up because it is there that people potential and their contributions first are, are made available. So it is incumbent upon the president and other leadership at the chapter level to get to know their members, to find out, as, as, as Regina just said, what their strengths and weaknesses are, find out what their niche is, encourage them to get involved, starting with maybe serving on a local committee. If it's something as simple as welcoming, welcoming people uh, to meetings, making phone calls to remind people of their upcoming meetings or activities, getting them involved in that way gives them a sense of, of 
just being embraced and being included. And from there, you can help them to determine what their niche is, to move into uh, maybe chairing a committee for your chapter, then moving into maybe serving as your representative for your chapter to your state affiliate, chairing a, a committee at that state level. And then it becomes incumbent upon the, the affiliate president to help that person to move up into the leadership. Leadership in a lot of cases, now because of the, the, the last year, the events and the reaching out and includes, including people through community activities, uh, a lot of people who normally would not have been made known to some of the leadership, that, you know, that, that's been great. But on average, some of our members are never gonna be known to leadership unless they're introduced through the local chapter through the state and then to the national level. So these are some ways that we can really reach out, include people of all ethnicities. And, and this will strengthen the organization because as I said in the beginning, there is a wealth of talent out there that's untapped. But we as an organization need to make everybody feel welcome and encourage them to share of their talents because everybody has something to offer. We just have to figure out what it is and where they best fit. So with that, uh, Mr. President, if we have time for questions, we'll open it up for questions. Yes, Peggy, we do have about uh, 10 minutes here. We'll go uh, uh, go for four questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, I want to, and maybe while people are uh, waiting to raise their hands and we'll have uh, Cindy and Donna kind of recognize them here in just a moment. I first wanted to have just a brief conversation that as you all were speaking, I thought of two years ago at our DC leadership conference where we started kind of a similar mentoring program around uh, you know, younger people, getting them involved, kind of fostered by mm -hmm. our uh, Next Generation Committee. And that yeah. really, I think uh, that seed uh, kind of capital really, uh, really worked well in really inviting people to come, to meet leaders, to participate in the president's meeting and the legislative seminar. Uh, to, mm -hmm. to integrate them into, you know, the, the workings of ACB. And, and then we've seen uh, the fruits of that here two years later. And so I would really uh, welcome us to continue to have a conversation as part of the mentoring program that perhaps, uh, you know, we can, we can work to, you know, uh, to establish a program um, next year, maybe to bring some, uh, some, um, uh, you know, a team uh, from the, through the Multicultural Affairs Mentoring Program to the DC Leadership Conference. So that sounds really good. That sounds great. And Next Generation is just one example of mentoring. However, within this organization, we have people of all ages who are who need mentoring because uh, we at our local chapter level did a leadership training for new members or for people who've been around for a while, but just were not totally aware of how ACB or operates. Uh, they were not quite clear on the difference between the local chapter, the state affiliate, and then the national organization. So what I told them, and they kind of laughed, but what I said to them is think of it as, as us being the child at the chapter level, the state being the parent, and ACB being the grandparent. So you have the three levels of, you know, of, of, getting, of, of getting to know how the organization actually started, uh, knowing your chapter's history, knowing the affiliate's history, and then knowing the history of ACB. And it worked really well because of the 18 people that we took through that program, uh, only five of them have dropped out. Everybody else is either chairing a committee serving on committees, or some of them are even now active at the state level. So it can be done, um, you know, and, and like I said, the youth, we need the youth, we definitely need youth, 
But there are so many other people who are talented and have a lot to offer. And we don't want to leave anybody out. Oh, and, and I wasn't implying that it was only for the youth. I'm just saying that was a model that we, uh, yes. you know, deployed and it really worked mm -hmm. well. So I think we could do the same thing uh, for our, uh, you know, uh, of folks of color and, and really looking to see how we promote and give those people an opportunity to engage. Uh, so, so thank you. And uh, let's maybe see uh, Cindy or Donna, do we have any hands raised uh, for questions? We do. Uh, Robert, you may speak. Just need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of, a couple of questions. One, do you understand this concept uh, to be maybe a function of the membership committee since they are responsible for recruitment and retention? And second, do you have uh, perhaps a, a program that would allow training for the mentors, maybe bring in other organizations that do in fact mentor and uh, provide maybe even a Zoom meeting or some sort of training for people who are willing to be mentors? Thank you. Thank you, Robert, for, for your question. Um, yes, we, we are currently working with other organizations. We are working with people outside of the organization to put together a mentoring program that will work. And thus the information that we shared with you today. You know, I'd like to, um, I think I'd be remiss if I did not take a moment to thank uh, Jane Dunham who did the board training, who also did a couple of trainings for us earlier in the year, and who actually contributed to our presentation this morning. So I want to take a moment to thank her for, for, uh, for, you know, for assisting us with that. I'm sure she's listening, so thank you, Jane. But yes, we, we are definitely working on that. Now, we have worked with the membership committee. As a matter of fact, we did a uh, presentation with the membership committee last month where we talked about outreach and inclusion. Uh, there were some questions about how to do outreach to, to Blacks and other people of color. Uh, we did a whole presentation on that and that is available, that information is available on the MCAC website. So we are always looking for opportunities. If people have suggestions, we're more than welcome to incorporate those as much as we can into the uh, programs that, that we will we'll be presenting in the future. Next, we have Deanna. Deanna. One Good of afternoon. our former MCAC members. <laughs> yes, before I got so bogged down in family responsibilities and had to cut back on what I was doing. One of the tricky things I think is knowing that you're not there to provide all the answers when you're a mentor. A lot of what you do is listen mm -hmm. because if you keep overriding what the person is telling you, then you can't really help them because your answers on how to handle a situation may not work for them. I'm a very shy person, which people laugh when I say that, but um, I am. And it often makes me very uncomfortable to be pulled forward and forced into the limelight because I'm a representative of my people. However, I understand the necessity for it. So in the people that have mentored me, I think of people like Kim Charlson, who met me when I came to my first state convention as a young mother, left my husband at home with a year old, three year old and a 13 year old, grabbed the Greyhound bus <clears throat> and went to Portland on behalf of my church who wanted to know more about the Oregon Council of the Blind. And they gave me a hundred bucks and said, go, go find out what it's about. Kim sat down with me and asked me a lot of questions. And before I knew it, she had me writing for the stylist because writing was what I did with the things that are running around in circles in my head. And I think that's key. Um, not everybody is at the same place and not every answer works the same way for sure. each individual. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much, Deanne. It's good to hear your voice, take care. You too. And next we have Alan. Alan, you may unmute. Hold 
Zoom it up and out. Oh, you were unmuted. Try again, Alan. Oh, no. There my you go. Oh, no, now I'm muted. Okay, very good. Uh, yes, my question is about uh, his, the Hispanic community. And we have, um, they're, they're um, thought to be, or they are going to be the largest community of color in the future. Uh, and a lot of those people do not speak English well. And I think we, we should um, have a, a program or, or an outreach to that community because of course there are a lot of people who are blind and visually impaired in that community as well. But um, that's, I, I believe that we are, we're probably um, could could do well by reaching out to Hispanic, the Hispanic community uh, uh, because there are a lot of people there as well. Thank you for that, Alan. And I totally agree with you. As a matter of fact, when we did the uh, membership, did the session with membership, that was one of the things that we addressed, which is how to do outreach to minority groups. Sometimes they have festivals. Uh, getting to know just one person who's visually impaired within that group, having them to introduce you to others, other people, help you disseminate information into their group is usually one way of, of getting started. If you have someone in your uh, immediate uh, chapter who speaks Spanish, that's always a help as well. But there are a lot of ways that we can do outreach. We just have to start to think outside of the box not to do things in a way that we're already familiar with, the things doing it the way we've always done it. Uh, we just have to look for new ways of, of getting to know people and being willing to step out and make the, and take those chances to get to know folks. Well, Peggy and team, thank you all so much for this presentation. So Peggy, if people want to get in touch with you or learn more about the Multicultural Affairs Committee and the uh, mentoring program, how, how is best to get in touch with you? Uh, I'll give you my both my email and phone because it's all over the world already anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> but my email is prcgarrett, and that's G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, prcgarrett at sbcglobal.net, and you may reach me by phone at 281 Four three eight nine six six five. And again, I'd like to thank you, uh, President Spoon and committee for the opportunity to present this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pecky. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Sandra. And thank you, Regina. We really, and, and all the members of the Multicultural Affairs Committee, thank you for all that you're doing. And uh, thank you for continuing to shepherd us through uh, hopefully what is a uh, large growth area for the American Council of Blind, both in membership and leadership. So thank you, Peggy. Thank you. Uh, uh, next, uh, we're gonna have, uh, kind of wanna make people aware that we are now going to uh, have a, a little bit of a uh, shortened uh, uh, leadership connection show with Tony and Debbie. So that uh, will run until uh, 11, uh, 1135, I believe, if I've got my math right. Uh, so right now, uh, I want to give everybody just a rundown. We're going to have the connection show, an opportunity to stretch your legs, take a break, listen to some conversation with uh, Tony Stevens, our development director from Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, Debbie Hazelton, our program director of ACB Radio from Dothan, Alabama. After the connection show, we will have three concurrent breakout sessions. So in room A, which is right here on mainstream. So if you wanna to listen to the presentation in room A, you don't have to change Zoom links or change uh, your channel on your Echo. You will be on ACB Radio mainstream right here. And that will be a conversation on ACB radio transitioning to ACB uh, media network. And that will be hosted by Tony Stevens, along with Debbie Hazelton, Rick Morin, 
and Jeff Bishop. On Room B, which is broadcast on ACB Radio Live Event. So again, Room B, broadcast on ACB Radio Live Event. Also can get there through your Echo device. And that uh, will be a session on communication and marketing toolkit for affiliates. Uh, that's going to be presented by our co-chairs of our Public uh, Awareness Steering Committee, uh, Kelly Gask and Katie Frederick, along with our consultant that has been helping us so much with our putting together our communications plan and has some exciting uh, new information to share with our affiliates on a marketing and communications toolkit for the affiliates, Kate Vendemio from Mount Vernon Consulting. And then our third breakout session, which will be in room C, which will be broadcast on ACB radio special event. So ACB radio special event for your echo call. And that session will be on membership and membership services, recruiting members, how you really use your, your member uh, database and we really are looking for affiliate uh, information buy-in and an excellent discussion in this particular area uh, because we are really working to better integrate our ACB uh, AMS membership system with the local uh, and state affiliates and chapter membership certification process. We believe there's a lot of opportunities to improve our membership flow of information and how our certification process takes place. So please join Cindy Hollis, uh, Nancy Marks Becker, uh, Carla Rushable, and Jane Corona for a very good discussion on membership. And that's in Room C special event, ACB Radio special event. So those will be our three breakout sessions. And now I would like to turn it over to uh, Tony Stevens and Debbie Hazelton for our first Leadership Connection show. So welcome, Tony and Debbie. The applause goes wild. Woo! All right. <laughs> Thank you yes, so much, indeed. Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Good morning. Good to hear your shining and excited voices. Yes. Oh, they're they're, <laughs> they're very shining and excited. Good morning, Debbie. Have to break out in choir. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're back. Yeah, we are. It's great to be with you. Chat. Yeah. It All was right. Well. It's very exciting. I saw it 118 listening on ACB Radio Mainstream this morning. Welcome to everybody on ACB Radio. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before we get going, I know we have a guest, but I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege and say that uh, you guys, I want you to feed the fundraiser for ACB Radio. Wait, wait, that's my job. Hold on. Jason. Now. Well, but it's Jason's <laughs> concert. I it, know. Go it's ahead. Our... It's your it's your glory. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, you feed it too. I want you to as well. Uh, but it's sitting at three thousand nine hundred. Come on, you guys. We want to get to five thousand, and if we can, we'll get even further. But definitely, come on. That's eleven hundred to go, and this and, helps. And, and go ahead. It now you're, you're referencing the ACB fundraiser for ACB yes. Radio that was last over Valentine's yes, Day. Yes, that a was on Valentine's Jason Castingway. Yeah, and for twenty five dollars, you get the MP three. But you can even give more if you feel so um, generous, and we know many of you are. Thanks to everyone who's given. And we want to say thanks to everybody that was given and has given and, and will continue to give. It has been such an, a wonderful year of outpouring. As a director of development, I've been very humbled by the amount of support people have been throwing their way to ACB and ACB radio. So to uh, give to that, go to tinyurl.com slash ACB radio. And okay, Tony, I need to not interrupt you now. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> We're back again. This is wonderful. Those that don't know why we keep saying we're back, we uh, Debbie and I had the Convention Connect show uh, during our, our live convention last year. But this year, you came up with a wonderful new title. So what are we called this year for the Leadership Conference, Debbie? Leadership Live. I love it. Leadership Live. So welcome, everybody, to Leadership Live. Uh, I think we've got, if our first guest is already on, it's time for that it's... mini mall minute. Yeah. Carla, Carla Patty, you there? Carla, Carla. So let's see if they're there. If they're there, say hi. 
She and in the meantime, me. we will, we will do some, some banter in the meantime. Uh, yeah. This is going to be a shorter Leadership Live, so we can catch up some time. We apologize for the technical difficulties that we had earlier in the day trying to get the audio to play through on the Zoom. Uh, thanks to Rick Morin, who's, who's housing our, our Boston Rick. Contingency Control Room up in Boston. So Rick was able to, to step in for us and play that video. So Rick, thank you so much. Uh, folks don't know, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes for these things. And, uh, and we want to thank all the volunteers and everybody, Debbie, you and your streamers and folks for ACB Radio. We're also streaming this live. You can go to acb.org slash live now and tune in to all the main general sessions. We try to make it as Actually, easy for people to remember. acb.org slash live. And we're on well, mainstream as well right now for the radio. Well, live will be the concurrent events. We're actually streaming on on um, mainstream only. But when we have our breakouts, no, that's right. Yeah, but when we have our, our, our main sessions, special. it'll be on live. Well, um, no. folks can stick in on this channel, uh, stay on this channel, and you'll be listening to more ACB Radio coming up in a couple of minutes as well. So we'll yeah, be having uh, Jeff Bishop and Rick Moore and join us on this channel. We're so. streaming on mainstream for our, all of our general sessions and for our breakouts, we'll be on live event and on special event as well as on mainstream. Uh, Donna, do you see anyone, uh, Carla or Patty for mini mall raising? Are a hand? Unmuted? Yeah. Ah, let's see. So Carla or Patty are out text. there because I had some raised hands earlier, but. Yeah, uh, let's see who this is. I think they should have had a panelist invite, but well, we have Patty. Yes, okay. me... Patty. There we go. Great. Let's have Patty. Yeah. You want me to promote for her for the mini yes. wall minute? Well, yeah, that or just yeah, sure. I mute her. Hello, can y'all hear me? There, there we are. Yes, I me. promoted her to panelist. Patty Cox with CCLVI, living in, out in Kentucky. Are you all surviving Kentucky? Hey. Is it snowing out there right now? What's the weather like, Patty? Are you still there, Patty? Oh, we heard you, you get for muted again. <laughs> Okay. Nope. I pat she should be able to unmute. She was. Because I promoted her. Well, then. Did, can you all hear me now? Yep, yep we, we hear you now, Patty. Hey, good you. morning. Good morning. We had about six inches of snow here throughout a couple of days, and now it's melting away. Oh, hopefully not too icy. Temperatures are Welcome. rising. So Thank we got you. our first mini mall minute. Uh, so so folks can can warm themselves with some ACB swag. What do we got going on, Patty, for the mini mall minute? Well, first of all, I want to say that this week we're calling it a DC celebration all week. All right. You can listen to the mini mall minute. You can watch the email list for updates and specials throughout the whole week. And um, if you're not on the list, then you need to send an email to mail plus subscribe at acblist.org. And in honor of this celebration we're doing 10 percent off any um any orders over 75 dollars or more you can reach us at 877-630-7190 or 877-969-MALL and that's 877-969-6255 and uh, what I want to show y'all is we have one product right now, um, and hopefully you all can see this. Uh, it's an ACB jacket. It's very warm. It's extremely warm in my house. It will keep you warm outside in the cold. It's got the ACB logo on the left chest. It does zip completely up. There's two pockets on the outside and on either side of the zipper on the inside, there are some big pockets. So you can put a lot in this jacket to carry it with you and even a fiddle cane all the way down in that pocket right. on the inside. And these are $55. Um, they're on special. And um, give us a call. We will have more uh, products for, for me to demo for you, tell you about later on. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Patty. And just real quick, one more time. What's that number again? It is 877-969-MALL. It's 877-969-6255 or 877-630-7190. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thanks for our mini mall minutes back again, just like convention. So it's nice to have you Thank back. Thank you. Stay, stay warm in that, that yes. ACB coat. 
All right, Debbie. So we're, yeah. we're going to be hanging out here on this channel. That's great. So, and I know you're planning um, more sponsors this week and others to come in and join us. Wanna- yeah, we'll be having, um, I think, uh, uh, Vanda and Vespero are both sponsors. Thanks. Thanks to our main sponsors, JP Morgan Chase. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, Matt Ader for Vanda's, uh, no, Matt Ader with Vespero and Jennifer Lineman with Vanda. I just gave them job changes. Uh, they'll be joining <laughs> us as well. Um, uh, you know, over the, over the course, I think, I think, uh, we'll be with us on Tuesday cause it's health and wellness Tuesday and digital inclusion on Tuesday as well. Cool. So, uh, but yeah, we've got, uh, some more folks coming in. Uh, we're going to have some folks from California joining us at the four o'clock, uh, uh, leadership live for a few minutes. Great. Um, and another mini mall minute. So, yeah. So what's I, I think the, what would well, go ahead, Debbie, what's the weather like where you are? It's icy. It's cold Ooh. and icy. Yeah, I kind of ice skated my way from the hotel down the street from the office today. Oh, so, um, man. but it's good. It's starting to melt hopefully today. Some, so we got, we, we were not nearly as bad as other parts of the country. So and, uh, we're thinking of everybody in Texas right now. Uh, you're on our, on our thoughts and, and prayers and, and, you know, Peggy and, and Michael are in Houston and we know everybody down in Texas was hit really hard because uh, they're not used to cold weather like we are up in the North. So you're, you're down in Dothan, aren't you? Did it come through your way, Debbie? Oh yeah. We got into the twenties again. We've had, we've been in the twenties yeah. several times. I mean, I know that's, that's probably warm for where many yeah. of you are. <laughs> that can be cold down South. I know. So uh, just real quick for folks that are wanting to listen in on our other channels, we'll do a quick rundown on what's coming up on ACB radio live events is going to be having our communications uh, conversation. Uh, we'll be having affiliate communications toolkit that's going to be being released. You can tune in to some comms consultants and find out what's going on. That's on ACB radio live events. You can ask you that shall not be named or go through the ACB link Just app or go to ACB the website. ACB radio live to Miss A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, perfect. And then on special events, we've got uh, about uh, certification and the future direction for um, for doing our member certification with Cindy Hollis and a team on her end. So she'll be doing that. And that's on our, our other, uh, what we're calling room C. So room B was communications. You're right now listening in room A, which is going to be uh, ACB Media Network and the next generation, sort of our next uh, future of, of ACB radio and every, everything in that sense. But yeah, so uh, uh, in C, you've got Cindy Hollis, and you can listen to that on where? Is that special events, I think? That's special Maybe. event, and you can say to Miss A, open ACB radio special. Excellent. Thank you so yep. much. And, and for so, the media network, uh, we're on you know, mainstream. Mm-hmm. And we'll be hanging out on this channel right now. So everybody yeah. listening in now, uh, if you're on ACB radio mainstream, you're loving ACB mm-hmm. radio, and you're going to get more of it coming up in That's just right. a minute. So. Right. We will be uh, giving folks that time. So, uh, you know, go uh, make sure you you wash your hands. Maybe if you haven't washed your hands yet today, we're still trying to keep that in practice. Go to tinyurl.com. To... <laughs> go to tinyurl.com. Slash ACB radio. <laughs> All right. Don't make this an NPR show, please. So it's not Pledge Week yet. But operators no, are you know, standing by. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't think they are. So that's why we're, all the operators are here trying to run the Zoom. <laughs> that's meetings. right. I know. So uh, we're going to be moving into our session. Um, it's 11.37 now. So yeah, uh, hopefully everybody's gotten to their respective rooms they want to go to now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so remember, it's group. Uh, the room B is going to be, uh, you You should have gotten uh, invite links as well for those that, that uh, registered. Thanks to everybody that registered for this year's conference. We had over 340 at the last count I had. Oh, so great. Which is triple the amount of people we get. Mm. Um, but we're so excited to be having this streamed over ACB radio and this will be the transition, uh, just to do a quick mic check, Mr. Jeff Bishop. Are you there, sir? Oh, I know he's there. Cause and he's then Mr. Rick Morin. Rick's there. Yep. Uh, we've all been on mics. I heard Rick morning. on there. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're there. I think. I so, um, do we want to our host, if we can make sure that, that, uh, they're not muted by accident on our end. Um, but yeah, Rick Morin. Uh, and Jeff Bishop will be welcoming up here in just a second. So as we get our own stage cleared up and ready. I, I am here, guys. Yes. There yes, you are, Rick. Rick. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're doing well. Thanks again for holding down the Boston. The Boston. Uh, I'm trying to think of something tied to tea party that would be, I don't know. I can't think of anything. No, it, well, it kept me warm. It's keeping me kept warm. Kept you warm. Keeping good, me good, warm. Good. Yeah. <laughs> we could say Rick's the Boston cream pie. Yeah. How about that? Oh, geez. <laughs> and it's it's oh. bright and early in outside oh. Seattle. Oh. Jeff, are you with us now? 
my friend. Jeff. We'll give another yes, second. To see you. Here. There you there are. He he is. Is there he <laughs> is. The dulcet yeah. rich tones of Jeff Bishop. That's right. Bright and early. What do we have? It's 1140 here. So it's 10, 9, 840. Are we at 840 Seattle time? Yeah, Jeff's, Eight, Jeff's nine, been 11, on yeah, here. So yeah. bright and early. Mm-hmm. So um, greetings, friends. Um, yeah. my, my, my fearless leaders of all things ACB. Uh, <laughs> what I'd like to do is welcome everybody to the panel conversation on ACB Media Network. And thank you for taking time out of your Sunday uh, to join us if you're listening in or also if you're tuning in on the podcast, welcome again. Uh, we're very excited to be having, I'm as the Director of Development, Tony Stevens for the American Council of the Blind. And I'm joined with three extraordinary guests today that are the, the, the blood and, and, and bones of ACB radio. And, uh, you know, we have uh, the, the, basically the, the triad of people that really work behind the scenes, that, that get to wear the hats in the organization, that really, really steer it from the steering committee perspective, which is Mr. Jeff Bishop, who leads our steering committee. He's also a member of our board and works for Microsoft uh, based out just outside Seattle. Uh, Mr. Rick Morin, who is our new technical director uh, for ACB Radio, as well as helping out with all things sort of IT tech related here uh, for the American Council of the Blind. Rick's based just outside of Boston. And last but not least, the fearless program director who uh, keeps ACB Radio, the Helms woman of ACB Radio, Debbie Hazelton. So welcome all three of you. I'll let you get a chance just to say hello and hopefully people are doing well today. Yeah. Hey, Tony, we call ourselves the blood, sweat, and tears. Do we? You I said we you have the same soul mice. of uh... I was going to say, I, who, we don't who call ourselves that? that. What are you talking no. about? <laughs> no, he you said, you said we're the blood. So anyways. No. Oh, I see. Oh, come Life on, guys. Radio. Lighten up, guys. Come on. It's, early on too, it's too early to do that. Lighten up. Lighten up. Wine mice? We are. That's what I love about ACB Radio. You all, it's, exactly. it's a very fun light play. So Good morning, uh, Jeff. How you doing? I'm I'm great. I uh, had a hard time getting up this morning, but other than that, I'm fine. I'm doing okay. It was okay. a long board meeting yesterday. Well, yeah, done it was board pretty meeting. good. Work through a lot of things, Rick. Yeah, how are we, you? we did some good work. Yeah, you you doing well, Rick? Yeah, I'm doing great. I got a mouthful of, of, of <laughs> chocolate. So I'm sorry. You into that and coffee? Debbie? Oh, I'm doing great. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, we are a jovial group, as folks can say. Uh, but that's because we have a lot to share with everybody about ACB Radio and what's going on. Um, you know, a, a, as my hat I get to wear as a director of development is, is sort of all things marketing communications for the organization. And ACB Radio has done a really excellent job this past year, really uh, stepping up to the plate and really becoming a, a, a dominant communications channel for the organization. You know, on behalf of, of all the staff and leadership for ACB, I have to say thank you to you all three because you are, you are critical in helping that happen, along with folks like Deb Cook-Lewis and um, you know uh, the, the whole ACB radio team. But I single out Deb specifically as well. She's not here now, but she works so hard with the Zoom meetings and is, is a dominant force on ACB radio as well. But she just finished the uni description project the other week, which was a major lift and really great visibility for ACB. So the amount of time you all have for volunteers, how, how many volunteers are there now for, for ACB radio, do you think? Just guessing. I know people kind of come and go depending on how busy they are. I think it's over 20, isn't it? I think, oh, definitely. Because we also have some that are involved with other stations and, but started on ACB radio, many of them. I I did not. Jeff, what do you think? I think 30. 30 to 40, probably. If you consider all the production people, Mm -hmm. um, it's not just about people who are broadcasting necessarily, because there's a lot of people who are doing things behind the scenes that you never Mm -hmm. hear from. And yeah some who have other stations but still have a show that they simulcast with us and oh my gosh yeah and yeah we, we well and that leads us into to, to basically just a real quick snapshot of 2020 to bring folks up to speed to really how critical acb radio was um you know there's there's three main areas that you all have really been focusing on in our communications in general that's really been exploding the past year. ACB Radio, um, our podcasts, and then as well, uh, just transitioned over a couple of weeks ago, one of Rick's first things in as the technical director was the group's IO 
uh, migration, uh, working with Jason Castingway, who is, is still a huge volunteer for the or organization. We're thankful for Jason's support. But, you know, Rick was sort of thrown into getting the groups IO, which is the, a huge number of email lists as well for our, you know, our email communications. But Debbie, talk a little bit about the, the huge growth that ACB Radio saw last year and give us a little bit of a snapshot of just how we went from zero to 60 when the pandemic started and really you all started doing so much wonderful work for the state affiliates by providing a huge service that's been free of cost for the affiliates. Well, you know, we actually did start with some Zoomed events and where we would Zoom and stream, but we didn't know at that time, I mean, we've started with that even a couple of years ago, having some things that would be streamed and be through Zoom, but then, uh, I remember seeing that there were some community calls happening through the other competitor organization. <laughs> and I said, hey, Cindy, I'm seeing this. And, and she said, oh, I want to see that list. And they had a lot of stuff going on with exercise and crafts and different things. Well, no sooner did we start talking about that and the community calls were born here on ACB and, and on ACB radio. And we actually, even before that, we started streaming or right along with that, we started streaming community uh, board meetings. We streamed our first board meeting at the end of March. Uh, and no, actually we, far we streamed our first board meeting in February as part of the leadership conference. And we mm -hmm. had probably a couple hundred listening then. Uh, and in the end of March, we had over 300 listening to that one because it was pivotal, pivotal to see where we were going to go with national convention. And then the community calls took off and really many of them remain on Zoom. And then a percentage of them are on ACB radio. Um, but what we found was that more people wanted replays and podcasts. It used to be that people wanted the early days of main menu. That was all we heard about people wanting in archives or convention archives going back. But now it's podcasts and replays of community calls. We do have a community podcast. Uh, and, and we do have, we have more people on our production team that we've, I think it will be four people to hear that we will have added uh, very shortly, one new one to add. Um, when we have our meetings, it's a robust group. It's a lively group. People saying, I wanna come back. I wanna get involved. Um, I wanna bring my show from this station over here. You know, it's, it's, it's lively. Yeah. Well, let, let's, cause you mentioned podcasts. I wanna jump over to Jeff. Cause Jeff, you, you helped shepherd over a huge thing for the podcast this year. And I want you to talk a little bit about that and what it means. Um, but also too, I mean, your host of, of main, your co-host, one of the co-hosts, you and and your, your crew, Larry and, and uh, John and them, uh, yep. and, and the whole IAC with, with Main Menu, which is one uh -huh. of our flagship podcasts at ACB. Mm -hmm. But can you talk a little bit about that growth? Because And then what we did this year to help manage that growth and, and make it even uh, more exciting? Because these community events are also, like you said, available as a podcast. And that is like a, a huge treasure trove of all things blindness and tech and health and wellness. For folks that don't subscribe to that, my hope is what you'll do in this meeting is go and subscribe to all of our podcasts, if you're not already. Um, but talk a little bit about um, the, the, what we did this past year with the podcast and some of the growth and your own sure. thoughts on that. Yeah, you bet. Uh, well, you know, we, we recognized that um, we, we needed to do something about um, our IT infrastructure. We've been working on it for a really long time. And one of the things that I, that I really wanted to do was uh, be able to uh, not only put us on a platform for our uh, podcasting space for growth, but also for metrics and data and gathering uh, information. Uh, and by the way, this is a, a team effort. It's not uh, just me doing this. In fact, there's, there's lots and lots of people involved in this. Um, so we did a bunch of research and we, and we moved all of our uh, currently 24 podcasts onto uh, the Pinecast platform. And uh, so the, all of the podcasts are, are linked and available for you to subscribe to. They're uh, in ACB Link and they're on the acbradio.org website. So you can find all of the links to be able to add to your uh, Victor Reader stream or to your uh, podcasting client of choice, your podcatcher. Um, 
but we have we have some some really significant things happening that will roll out later this year um, as part of uh, this work where we want to try to bring all of our media uh, work together in one place. And the ACB radio website is, is, is pretty legacy. You know, it's been around a really long time and, and it really needed a, a major facelift. And uh, when we started talking about branding and, and looking at all of that, one of the people that's on our, our steering committee, uh, Tyson, said, hey, you know, why don't we call it the ACB Media Network? Mm -hmm. And man, that was awesome. We you know, That was brilliant. So um, that's what we're doing. So we're, we're spinning up a, a new site. Um, it's in, in process now. We're working through some, we actually have uh, the ability to, to play podcasts and things on the site now, but we want to add some additional features so people can download episodes and things like that from it because that's, that's important too. So we're working on that. But uh, we, we want to bring podcasts, streams, um, video content, and of course, the, the Braille Forum and eForum all in one place. In other words, if it's media, if we're publishing something, uh, then we want it represented there. So we'll be rolling out a new uh, website later this year. And um, don't worry, it will get lots and lots of visibility. It will definitely be up before uh, the convention, if not you know sooner, probably much sooner. So we're, uh, we're pretty excited about, about that. We're working with uh, quite a number of people to, to add you know, some, some pretty significant features to, um, to the site. The, the, the podcasts and everything will maintain themselves on Pinecast, but you'll be able to search and locate any specific podcast episode uh, or um, an, an even uh, event. There'll be a, a calendar so you can subscribe to uh, the schedule uh, on the ACB Media Network so you'll know what's going on, which is, is going to be interesting to see how we keep that updated. But that's a, a just <laughs> something we're gonna, just going to have to work through and figure out you know, how, to, how to do that and, and keep it nimble in a way that uh, is, is not too burdensome for, for people to maintain. So, but uh, yeah, no, um, and, and we're getting great metrics. Uh, which is good because, you know, if you have data, you can do a lot with it. It helps with grant writing and all kinds of fundraising activities. So it, it, it's really, really important. It, it helps us from any marketing perspective to really mm -hmm. know where our listeners are and what they're liking. Cause that Absolutely. helps us, you know, as a membership organization where we, we are, you know, we, we try and want to listen more to what the listeners, to what our audience and what our members and people that aren't even members yet want. So you know, uh, it, Go ahead, Just Debbie. Highlight I wanted to ask Rick a question too, but go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I'm hoping Rick will chime in on this. I would like to highlight um, two things. The main menu live is is Jeff's baby uh, with uh, IAC. And um, I think- and That's the finding... Information Access Committee, which yes. for folks who don't know, <laughs> right. which is our sort of thought brain leaders on all things accessibility for the- I had asked IAC to take main menu live. Um, we still hope that bits will do more with main menu, but in the meantime, main menu um, is not doing as much right now, but main menu live is, is really big. I mean, there you've had some big shows and the other real big one that I hope Rick will talk about is Tuesday's topics. Um, I wanted Paul to bring that back and that was back when way back when Mitch was president, uh, Paul was doing Tuesday topics, Paul Edwards, and then it kind of went on hold for a while and it's back and it's booming along with his Braille buzz show. And I mean, we had 70 people you're, on Zoom. And you're kind of the producer for that, aren't you, Rick? Uh, Rick is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. am. Yeah. Yeah. We're very proud of that show. Paul does a great job and and uh, get some great guests in there. And in fact, um, you know, we had a voting session last night, uh, Tuesday topics. I forget which one. I think it's the first week in March is going to have voting. Uh, re the uh, voting for the convention is one of the topics that he's going to be discussing. And so it, it's been a lot of fun. We're up to, um, you know, people were wondering if we could keep it going. And um, we've done 42 shows. So already. 42 weekly shows so we're pretty proud of that and, and and it's pretty cool because we put them up as podcasts and we get about three times as many people listening to the podcast as listen to the show on acb radio so um 
you know, there, there's a multiplier effect with podcasts in, in terms of number of people that have access to, to the information, which is really, really cool. As Jeff said, you know, we've got all these metrics now to, to measure ourselves with. And, uh, you know, we're just reaching tens of thousands of people all the time. So good well, stuff. That, that's, a, that's a big thing to, to I want to focus in on, if you all don't mind, because, you know, one of the things we want to talk about is what's in the future, right? As we're moving forward, Jeff, you shared about the ACB Media Network, which is wonderful because it's going to give, uh, you know, I think affiliate leaders, this being the president's conference, president's meeting, um, you know, how can, how can these uh, resources, not just be information and entertaining for people, but as our members of the organization, what are the ways they can get involved if it's, if it's emailing Paul and say, Hey, I'd like to maybe have this issue talked about, or if it's, you know, a podcast idea, or if it's wanting to even get involved with, you know, I know they reach out already on like, you know, for ACB radio being a rock during the times of virtual conventions and streaming all the conventions and helping with all that. But what are, what are some of the ways that people can leverage this as a tool, the affiliate leaders themselves, do you all think? Well, when I started years ago, a, um, Affiliates in Action, I was really hoping that was what was going to happen with that show, that an affiliate would take it for a month and they would get um, more of their affiliate on there throughout that month. And it would become kind of like a, a training building ground. And then the affiliate would begin to have shows. I think um, Next Gen is working on getting on the air more often. They would like, I think, to be on every month. Um, I think more affiliates are, and I know Missouri wants their board meeting on there. I just said, hey, give us, give us more notice and you know, we, can, we can do stuff like that. I think that as more people begin to stream and um, you know, we do have many more capable people constantly, you know, getting, wanting to get equipment, wanting to get Tyson as a streamer. Now, Anthony Corona can stream. There are more people that can stream. Um, and now with Cindy's ACB in action, she's showing ACB at its best with leadership. But I think back to that, that original a affiliates in action, I would love to see affiliates start shows and we are going to bring uh, affiliate level sponsorship back. Bits has started with it. We're going to um, have where you can have underwriting. You as affiliates can have underwriting and we'll get that produced for you. And more people will hear about your affiliate because we want ACB to bring, we want ACB radio to help bring members to you. Uh, and for more people out there who are listening across the world, really, to know about your affiliate, about ACB and all of what we're doing. Je Jeff and Rick as well, because Rick, too, uh, I'm thinking about the email list, too, and how, you know, those are much more efficient and cleaner. And, uh, you know, uh, now that we're on Groups IO, uh, to you two both as well, what are ways you think that affiliates can leverage uh, the ACB media network as it's being rebranded and re sort of built? Uh, in ways that can assist affiliates. I'll let either of you jump in well, first. Whoever wants to jump in first. Go ahead, I, Jeff. Oh, are, am I there? Yeah, yeah you're here. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that we're doing is is we're putting up podcasts for uh, state affiliates um, and allowing them to be able to host content about their specific affiliate. Washington's done it. Oregon is about to. Um, so that, that's one thing that we're offering and, and, uh, it doesn't cost them anything, you know, to be able to do it. So if, if you are in a sense, uh, interested in your own affiliate, you know, like if I'm in Maryland here and I want to start a podcast, maybe even for my mm -hmm. own chapter or my own affiliate, uh, I could do that. And, and, and ACB, we could help put it on board with the Pinecast. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It, you know, it, it, Tony, let me uh, kind of play off a little bit of what happened in the previous session with Peggy and stuff. You know, they're talking about mentoring. Mm -hmm. And one of the points they were making is very important um, that, you know, some of the talent that's out there gets introduced to, you know, some of the leaders in ACB so that um, so that they're able to progress throughout leadership and stuff. One of the really unbelievable things that I think is happening with all of these affiliate conventions that we're doing that um, 
uh, is that uh, we're surfacing incredible talent at the affiliate level that was pretty much uh, not visible at the national level. And one of the cool dynamics that's happening here is that people from different affiliates and from national are listening to these affiliate conventions and getting to, to know and learn about some of these people and some of the expertise that resides in the affiliates. So I, 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 I think that is very, very valuable. And the community does a similar thing. And it's, it's, it, 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 it's you know, kind of, create, of changing the dynamics in ACB a little bit where, um, you know, people uh, whose voices may not have been heard uh, in the past are having outlets now, you know, via the affiliate conventions and via community to make to make themselves heard and known and, and understood and and surface as leaders throughout ACB. And I think that's that's a very, very important thing. One um, of the things that, that oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, go ahead, Debbie. One of the things that we find is that many register for other people's affiliate conventions. And sometimes an affiliate will say, oh, nobody's going to want to hear how we do our business. But on the contrary, many are learning from other affiliates about how you're voting, how you're handling all kinds of things, the order of what you do in your conventions. Other people are learning and listening and learning. So I think that's great. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, my reaction every time I do a convention uh, is to say, God, where have these people been hiding? You know, a, a lot of these local folks. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just so cool that, that you know, th- these things are giving them the opportunity to, to, uh, to have a voice um, in the broader ACB. And, and people are noticing. People are taking notice. I, I think we're bringing a lot of value with that. So. No, that's, that's a wonderful thing to sort of chew on for a few minutes in the sense of that, that voice, because we've experienced that just with our conferences and convention, you know, we're, we're three times as many people registered for the leadership conference here today mm-hmm. than, than we would typically have in Washington. I know we were double just in the registrations for the convention. Um, Cause usually we would interact with people in person. That's not in our own affiliate, like our own local chapter uh, at a convention. Right. But now it's all virtual and through the ACB community that Cindy Hollis has also lifted up. Um, you know, it is an interesting sort of thing to, to think about, Rick, about how many people, in a sense, didn't have a voice. And, you know, one of the things we did this past year, I think, in, in realizing that we started the ACB Voices blog. So at acbvoices.org, uh, which is a blog that's, you know, our goal with that blog as well is to be a voice of the organization, a place where people can, can post their stories and their experiences and, you know, things like that. And so, you know, we're wanting to really uh, you know, have that be a part of the media network as well. Uh, but I think all in all, the media network is, is a voice of the organization where people have access. There are ways people can have their voice heard and if Tony, it's through community and all those things. Go ahead. Desiree Christian wrote me this morning, just giving feedback right away when we couldn't hear um, mm-hmm. something earlier. And she said she is listening from YouTube. So, you know, we have YouTube and Facebook and all these different avenues happening at once, which is really, and then we know many of you are listening on the phone. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, there's ways to hear voices, but there's also ways to have your voice heard. So, so on the horizon for this year coming up then, uh, Mr. Bishop, Jeff, you were talking about the website uh, and, and, you know, building up the the actual network. When do you foresee that sort of being uh, a launch date at all, or is it still sort of a gray area in the horizon? Well, I'm I'm hoping by May first we'll have uh we'll have that up. Um, it, it will be a a constant uh, moving target because we're going to continue to enhance it and and um, add more to it. the The podcasts and streams will definitely uh, be up. YouTube that may take a little bit longer just to figure out exactly how we want to do that. I'll have to work with Kelly on 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 that. But um, I think you know that that is definitely uh, you know up by convention for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, The calendaring piece, I think we as a team have to sort of work through that and figure out exactly how we want to do that. I know how we can, can make the technology side of it happen. There's some people side of it that we got to figure out. So, uh, but uh, yeah, no, we're, uh, it it, it actually would have been up a little sooner, except we're we're trying to get, um, we, again, we can play, you know, content with uh, a fully accessible player now, 
on the website. Um, the, the, the only problem that we're running into right now is that you cannot download episodes from there. You, you know, there's no download links because of the way that we're the technology that we're using. So we don't so have to worry I'm about winning with, up anymore. Uh, some people to try to overcome that. It's a, uh, and I spent some time working on code to try to solve that yesterday. And we're still trying to work through the work through that. <laughs> I love so, when uh, not going but away, but... <laughs> once, once that's done, uh, I, I actually expect that the podcast part of that should be up, you know, uh, actually probably in March sometime, but again, the website itself, uh, will continue to evolve and, um, you know, a, a new tab will be added as, uh, as we get new, th new features rolled out. So, oh, um, so Jeff, that's be, also, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a podcast tab and a streams tab and a videos tab and, um, you know, uh, and, and much more. So, and the excellent. tuner um, is going we're away. Excited about right? that. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a good landing landing page for everybody. Uh, one of the big things that it's going to really help with is, you know, especially during conventions and and events such as this, um, people won't need to download you know a media player to be able to listen to the streams. They can simply just go to the page, click the play button, and they're listening. Um, excellent. You know, I, I if if they're using their computer. Which Makes is, it easy. is really going yep. to help out a lot of people. Yeah. So we're we're pretty excited about that. And we are going to be able to do things like fast forward and rewind and speed up the audio and all of that. So uh, at least that's that that's the end goal. Uh, right now you can play and and uh, and mute and all of that. But uh, we're 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 working on all of that. So Jeff, it's, uh, it's fun times. It's uh yeah. It, it's this kind of work times. is fun. It. Uh, Reminds me of, you know, program, programming back in the, in the old days. <laughs> Jeff, people now and then still write about that tuner. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that still comes up. Um, the, the ACB radio tuner is, uh, is, it was something that was written in uh, Visual Basic many, many, many years ago. And the, the versions of Visual, uh, Visual Studio that uh, would even compile that are no longer supported on on windows I feel like is that um, so is that like windows 3.21 you know, or something like it's made to that early 90s somewhat yeah. difficult so that's why it's wow. not really supported uh, yeah anymore. it's back in the vista uh, days what was oh before what was before vista uh, 97 i don't know yeah just <laughs> <laughs> that's when i remember winning it first coming around uh, yeah. so a couple of things, and as we're wrapping up, we want to see if folks have any questions about sort of the future, maybe ways they can get involved with ACB Radio. But before, you know, we, we want to really push the idea of subscribing. I mean, this this helps uh, our, our own affiliates. If you're able to get you and your members to subscribe, it's promoting things you're working on. Um, it's helping us by getting our algorithm up more. So everyone loves that word algorithm. But, you know, the more people subscribe, uh, the more we have a chance of other people finding us, Right. So we want to try to get more ears that'll listen to us and more people that can engage and eyes for the videos and, uh, you know, all the things uh, that, that come with that. Uh, we're excited to be on Live 365 right now, which you can follow. It's an app you can download, um, but it, it, it gives us much greater visibility in a sense of being out there in the radio streaming world. And that's, that's on uh, which channel, Debbie, is that on? Just talk real quick about Live 365. Did I lose y'all? No, I threw that to Debbie. You there, Debbie? Yeah, you still I'm there, sorry. Debbie? Catching up on no, text. Okay. What did you ask me? <laughs> well, it, it, we can just talk real quick. And, and Jeff as well. So we're on Live 365 now, which is exciting we for radio. We are. And that's on ACB Radio Cafe. Yes. So not only can you subscribe to our podcast, which I want everybody listening, you know, go find a podcast you like. The community one has a huge amount of things to do. Really advocacy, good. if you're interested in policy issues or ACB advocacy update. Um, you know, uh, Tuesday topics, Sunday edition with Anthony Crone, all these different podcasts we have. Uh, but then Live 365, you can also subscribe to ACB Radio Cafe on that and follow Live 3. And it's just an easy way to hop on your smartphone. Indeed. And you and, can get it in your smartphone. You can get it on your Miss A device. Yeah, you can listen through as an enabled skill on, on Alexa. And you can also, uh, in a sense, um, you know, help in that sense uh, because... We, we want to be able to know and that feedback, you can leave remarks, leave, you know, give us five stars. Of course, we'd love you if you give us five stars and all the ratings that we can right. get. But uh, in that sense, um, you know, with Live365, our goal is, is as we identify some funding opportunities, 
Uh, part of that is the fundraiser Debbie kept pitching earlier. <laughs> but as, as we identify some funding opportunities to build out our stream. So what Live 365 means is we can play commercial music, right, guys? Yeah. So and then and then it lets us build out. So our hope is eventually to get other streams on this because uh, it's a much more stable platform as well. So and we get in their directory, their database. So there are so many ways that people can find us. We get more visibility. And um, so this is really good. I mean, this this is a good marketing piece. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Live 365 is awesome. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So I think we're slated. Are we slated for 3, uh, 12, 15 Eastern time or 1230 Eastern time? I think uh, so. It's an, I thought it was for an hour, but there was, I thought there was another yeah. piece, but um, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing um, the Pomerances are listening and yeah. um Haley is listening and uh, I'm hearing from many. Well, let's, should... let's find out if we've got some questions from anybody. Yeah. Any yeah. raised Zoom yes. audience right now. Any raised hands host? Marsha Moses' hand is raised. Hi, thanks for, thanks for participating in our panel session. Who do we have here? Marsha, you can Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, Hello. whatever it is. Um, just a couple questions. What is the status of ACBRI? Is that gone bye-bye? Yes. Well, ACB Radio Interactive got merged with the cafe. So we're, we're not using that interactive stream anymore. Um, okay. It's merged with cafe. And I know some of you want to know more about how ACB Link works. I think on the next roundtable, I think we'll do a run through. But I also know that it's we're working on getting it upgraded. And you're still doing live shows on Cafe, correct? Uh huh. Yep. Great. We want to do some replays too because some have. I know I have a show, Jason's show, Darrow's shows. I know we want to do some replays while we're also updating, uh, upgrading that cafe, and we want to get Rick on there more often and Jeff. They just like to play Christmas music. But, you know. I know yeah, you can play I, big commercial play Christmas hit music Christmas. all year. I, I all year. Every day. Oh, yeah. Boy. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I one, played... la one last thing. I can. I haven't used the tuner in years, but it's on my PC and it's on my laptop. So now I can take it off. You can take it off. <laughs> yes, indeed. Make some extra Thank disk indeed. space for this well-needed. Maybe we get there. You go, Tony. Maybe we'll get you to do a music show. Now, come on. You could do a really good. I, show, I used to have a, a a show. I dabbled. I. I in my old radio days that was decades ago though i'd be rusty i'd have to find an adapter for my turntable you could do a so. great 70s show <laughs> yeah i could I, I i could i could i could play 10 cc day and night and yeah man oh, God. bring it i love it my yeah. favorite so we do 70s i'll do 80s my you know, favorite 10 cc song is uh, dear donna <laughs> rick will do <laughs> rick, rick is old enough to do 40s right rick oh come on guys yes. no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, tease because no, no. we love. So, uh, uh, host, do we have anybody else? Have Any coffee. Questions? Hello, welcome to our to our panel. It's so exciting to be able to say that. Hello, yeah. I hope you can hear me. We yeah. do just fine. Yeah, Go ahead. Absolutely. What's, your, what's your question? Great. Well, I have actually two very quick questions. Uh, one is uh, <laughs> the. Uh, well, really, I have three. One is I hope that the new website, ACB radio website, is going to be a little bit easier to navigate for those who are newcomers. Uh, right now, people go on acbradio.org and there are menus upon menus upon menus and it's like navigating a spider web <laughs> that, you know, they're, they're very confused. Oh, they do um, call it the World Wide Web. <laughs> to what? They do call it the World Wide Web for a reason, yes, I guess. No, do. that's really good and, feedback, though. Yeah. Yes. Let, me, let me assure and, you, uh, it can't get any simpler than what we've designed. Uh, okay. Lots of headings, yeah. lots of, uh, lot, you know, very, very, very easy to, to navigate. Um, you're, gotcha. you're going to be able to navigate by button in your screen reader and jump directly to the play button with two key presses because um, there's a search button up at the top and then, then okay. the button for play is right okay. there. So gotcha. uh, I, I, I think you're going to find that it's going to be uh, 
really, really nice and easy to be able to, to get around. And we're, we're, we're well, wanting to do that, make it really clean, efficient, uh -huh. and, and not a lot of clutter. Okay. Even the calendar, I'm, I'm even not... the calendar uh, that we're going to implement is fully, yeah. uh, fully accessible. Okay. Good, wonderful. And you yeah. had another question. I'm, I'm not, I'm not the newcomer, but I have friends who are, and they just like, how do you navigate this website? <laughs> you know, the current one. Okay. Next question is, uh, when one of the, the previous callers said the tuner is going away, so. How will people play ACB radio now on their computers? We'll Once do it through the, the website. The, site is they'll do up. it through the, yeah, they're going to do it through the website. Okay. So but, it'll, it's all uh, built in now. One nice little clean website page where you'll go yep. and it'll be able to jump you right into the sound. So, okay. Without having to deal with tuning. So regardless apps. of whether you're on Windows or Mac, you will just hit the same that's play correct. button. That, yeah, it'll, that's, it'll, that's correct. It'll, it'll be basically be a listen now button. It okay. will it will work on uh, Mac, Windows, iPhone, Android, uh, whatever platform you wish to use. Carrier pigeon. Wonderful, wonderful. Yep. Okay. La final question, um, and I'm probably not alone in this. I subscribe some time back to the ACB radio announce list. And for a little while, I was getting all the announcements. But the last one I got was January the 20th. I just went back and looked a few minutes ago. And evidently, there has been a problem ever since it went to the groups I.O whatever that thing is called. Yeah. So I resubscribed a few days ago because I figured, okay, I have not been receiving the announce, announcements for a month and I hope it's going to get all straightened out. But even since I resubscribed to the announce list, I have received no announcements. Pam, can you do us a favor and shoot an email to support at acb.org? Um, yes. So I, so I have your email address and I'll go into groups.io. I'll, I'll take a look and see if I can see what's going on. Support um, at acb.org? At, at acb.org, yeah, please. Yes. Do yeah. remember that do the that. list, do remember that the list moved from acbradio.org to acb lists. Yeah. So if you, if so so if I you're had, Go I'm ahead. getting the ones for community. I'm I'm getting those okay. announcements right. every yeah. day. Yeah, just just but shoot, I am not yeah. getting the just shoot us an email. We'll take care yeah, of it. Yeah, we'll take it up individually. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. And and where where are you where are you listening from today, Pam? I am from a place no one has heard of unless they live here. I am I live in Vestavia, Alabama. All right. Well, hopefully you're doing well and trying to stay warm down there during this cold spell. So oh, thanks so much for being yeah, a part of our panel today. We're warming up a little bit now. Well, good. Thank thanks for being so part much. of our panel. Yeah, be Thank safe. You. Stay warm. Oh, you too. Uh, host, any other, any other uh, folks we got? Host? Donna, any other? And Byington, you can oh, unmute. Yeah. Ann, hey. Ann? Good morning. We Anne. know you're there. Hey, Anne. Might need to unmute. Are you there? Let me try again here. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Hey, we got you. We hear you. I have a very uh, basic question. I'm. Uh, how do you subscribe to podcasts? That's a good question. That's a good question. Jeff or Rick? So... Or yeah, Jeff, you want to you want to take a stab, or I can't. Yeah, there, well, uh, I, there's a number of questions here. Um, I do you use a podcasting client, or are you using your Victor Reader stream? I don't know anything about podcasts. Okay, I don't, I don't use the stream. My husband does, but he doesn't listen to okay. podcasts. Okay, so and I'm a you, very newbie. Sure, and do you have an iPhone? No, you do not. And, okay, and the link doesn't work on Smart Vision too. I've discovered. Okay. I do have a computer. <gasps> okay. 
Well, you can get um, you can you can get a uh, podcasting client that are you a screen reader user? You are right. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So you can go to getaccessibleapps.com and download. I believe it's called QCast, and it's a, an accessible uh, podcatcher. Um, you can. It, I think it's ten dollars or something like that for for uh, for that software. You can then uh, install that, and you can then search for or actually go to the ACB Radio website to get the links for each of the podcast feeds that you're interested in. You can also search for them in the actual QCast client. It searches the iTunes podcast directory and it will allow you to subscribe directly to them. Then you can listen to all the episodes on your computer. Okay, my so much, screen Jeff. reader interrupted you, but I I think I got it. I'll try. Okay. Thank you. Right. Reach out to us if you have any further right. uh, questions. We're happy to help you. Okay. We Thank should, you. We should the- do this on Roundtable, all about the different ways to get podcast but don't you also have an amazon device and uh, i've got four of them actually okay so jeff can you give some syntax for how to just even without subscribing how to play some of our podcasts would that work yeah you can use um there's a there's the any pod skill um that you can add to your uh a lady device. In fact, I got one right over here. But what are you saying? What's the first part of that word? A- any A N Y P O D. Any pod skill. Okay. So you would enable it first. Right. Uh-huh. Enable any pod. Okay. And then, and then you, but you, but you can just uh, ask your A lady to actually play a specific podcast, and it knows about the iTunes podcasts, and it will, and it should. Uh, assuming all the stars are aligned, <laughs> um, f- locate the most recent episode of whichever podcast you're trying to listen to and play it. So you can do that on your, your A-Lady device as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, and if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to okay. help you. All righty. By the way, I thought your last main menu show was outstanding. Oh, really, thank you. Really by, good. Very yeah, by good. The, by the way, next week we're going to have on the team from Super Sense, and we're going to talk uh, Super Sense and Super LiDAR. And then in the second hour, we're going to reveal what the Information Access Committee is going to be doing at the convention, at least at a high level. We're going to talk some uh, technology talk, get all of you up to date on some um, things happening in the assistive technology industry, and take your questions. So we're really excited about that. I just wish that, that Android phones were more... Uh, in the mainstream and I guess there's nothing I can do about that, but I yeah. just can't do Apple stuff. I, I'm too yeah, you old. know what we're, we're going to try to get, uh, there's a, there's a great team doing a, a really, really great podcast um, all about uh, Android from a blindness perspective. And we're going to try to get them on uh, main menu live here, come up in the next month or two. Okay, good. Um, they're, uh, they're really, really great. And I think they'll, uh, be able to provide some some insight. We talk Apple all the time, and it would be good to get yep. some Android focus. And Android 12 was just released in beta for those that are in wanting to know. And so the, that's kind of timely to talk about that. There's all kinds of new gestures and hmm. things that make it easier to to uh, actually use an Android device from a blindness perspective. You don't have to use a lot of these angle gestures, and you know it's more iOS or Apple like, which. Uh, you know, multi-finger gestures and all of that. So it's just going to make things a lot easier for everybody. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ann. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's 1220 East Coast time, 920 and Pacific time. Uh, I haven't heard President Spoon jump in and tell me to quit yammering. So I'm guessing we do go to 1230. So uh, host, do we have any more questions at all? We do. We started late too. So Um, Debbie, you can talk. Hi, Debbie. Another Debbie. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, Debbie. Where are you uh, listening in from, Debbie? Oh, Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, wonderful. Y'all are doing a great job, by the way. Well, thank you very Um, much. My question has to do with the Victor Stream and podcast. I haven't been able to get recent uh, issues of like main menu, and I didn't know if there was a Ah. breakage. and. Right. So um, what you need to do is you need to remove the, the current uh, subscribed main menu podcast from your um, stream and re-add it. Um, <clears throat> we have done our best to make sure that if people were subscribed to the old main menu feed, 
when we when we redirected everything over to Pinecast that it would auto forward. Some clients either on uh, Windows, Mac, or iPhone or Android do not honor that either, and that includes the Victor Reader Stream. So to, to solve that, simply remove the main menu uh, podcast from your stream, re-add it, and that should resolve your problem. Great. Okay. Because I really like the show. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Kathy Simi, you can un unmute. Hi, Kathy. Hey, you guys. Um, I'm Kathy from Louisville. Welcome. Can you all hear me? Yeah, just fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, I hate to ask no, don't that. Don't be sorry. I just never know. Um, and I'm from Louisville also. And um, I have admired Jeff, you and Rick tremendously for many years. Just what you all do just always amazes me. And thank you. Sorry, I sweet. would like to know if there are um, more tutor tutorials out there um, to learn some of these skills like streaming or uh, I know there are a lot of tutorials on how to, how to put together podcasts. I've seen plenty of those. Um, but learning those skills or do you just grab an app and jump in and... Uh, <laughs> Um, I've, I've seen things from Hadley, you know, that are more about how to use a computer, say, but not not so much on, you know, just I'm, the nuts and bolts of technically doing this stuff. I mean, I'm kind of thinking extemporaneously here, Debbie and Jeff and Rick. But what if we did like a community meeting on how to do a podcast, like a real simple, like you know, even just here's your iPhone and it's got the voice memos, which saves as an MP3. And I mean, you know, as simple as, uh, you know, just people knowing how to record their voice and good, good ideas and, you know, find a quiet place and stuff like that. Like some even most modest basics, even. Yeah. The, yeah. Point's, the point's very well taken. You know, it, it, most of us are self-taught, right. You know, we just, you know, and, and we've learned by making a whole lot of mistakes and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. But, but, uh, you know, I've come to uh, like to write stuff down is as I get older, I tend to forget stuff, you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, more and more, I, I, I'm seeing um, a lot of value in, in, in making that kind of stuff available. I think we could do a better job with things like FAQs and, 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 and that kind of stuff. And I, I, I think we need to, you know, put some, priority on, on doing that kind of stuff. But it's amazing uh, what I find, if you go to YouTube and just type in something you're interested in, uh, you know, there's just an incredible amount of information on YouTube. Now, not all of it is directly related to accessibility or, or talks about things from an accessibility uh, standpoint, but certainly conceptually, you can learn about uh, just about anything to do uh, with a lot of the stuff we do uh, by going to YouTube. Um, and, and there's something in YouTube that I didn't realize was there called YouTube Academy, which, uh, uh, which helps you uh, understand how to produce YouTube videos. And, and, um, and, and a lot of it is just, you know, kind of a, a set of tutorials on social media, you know, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, we should yeah, yeah. think about go ahead rick no go ahead tony please i mean we should think about I'm, I'm just thinking here with kelly we're always trying to think of content maybe we could put up on our youtube page and when we bring in a new communications manager which is someone that we're going to be onboarding for a new position this spring uh, maybe we could do a, a couple of youtube videos for everybody just on you know accessibility uh, i know a lot of folks are learning a program called reaper there's a reaper training class right now which teaches yeah. auto editing mm. yeah but that's really the core of of podcasting in a sense yeah. And there's a whole comp podcast component and Jason is out there. He's with us. He's streaming in another room and he's with us, but he's integral to that Reaper class. Yeah. Um, and there is a way that you can um, do YouTube videos. Cause I have done this and uh, Lulu Hartchen told me about this tunes to tube uh, T U N E S T O T U B E dot com. You can upload a picture and then you can upload MP3s to YouTube if you don't want to have a video. Um, so that's a way you can produce and put things up on YouTube. Yeah, interesting stuff for sure. Cool. Wow. All right. Thanks for the question and, and, and being part of our, uh, 
of our conversation this morning. Any host, any other people? Jamaica, you should be able to unmute. Hey, Jamaica. Jamaica. What's the weather like in Athens, Georgia, Jamaica? Are you unmuted? Um, there we there go. go. Yes, uh, this is Jamaica. It's kind of, I think it's kind of cold outside today. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what, I don't know exactly all the weather, but it's it's sunshiny, but it's cold, Good. I think. Yeah. Um, but um, my question is, are we going to have a community call or... Or, or, or can someone communicate with me one on one as to how to delete the, the, um, the, the tuner from my, from my computer? We can work with you on that. Just email us. We'll, sure. we'll uh, work with you on that. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm so excited with the ACB, the media network coming up where it's going to be so much e- easier to be able to listen to our streams. Proud. Um, I'm so proud. Yeah. And then Thank we've got you, Live 365 mm-hmm. and we'll be yeah. adding some additional of our streams on there so people can follow those and listen on the A-Lady or on other ways. Tony, why don't you talk a little bit about what we're doing with YouTube and, and Facebook and all that kind of stuff too. Well, this has been exciting as well. So this time we, we have been integrating a new technology within our national office to be able to stream all of our content out at one time through multiple channels online, social media channels. So, I mean, we have, you know, several thousand on our Facebook and through Twitter, uh, over 1600 on our, on, our, on our Facebook community page, but also our YouTube page, which is where we're really wanting to grow because most people now sighted or, or, or blind or visually impaired still rely a lot on YouTube for just information, finding stuff out easily. It comes up first when you search for things on Google, they put the videos right up at the top. So, you know, our ability now with the, literally the push of a button has a really much more professional platform through a service called Restream, which for those that are an affiliate wondering, it's very accessible. I've been so impressed with the accessibility of Restream. There's a button or two that doesn't read, but it's kind of, you can kind of figure it out. Um, but it's, it's a very simple way to create a broadcast quality of a Zoom meeting. You can go into Zoom and just push out through Restream and choose what you want to do. So you could do YouTube today or any of your other ones. So we're now fortunately able as well to do a lot more YouTube live capabilities, but just all social media. So just, you know, virtual blast, if you will, of our content. So be checking out more of that, you know, again, as we bring in a communications manager and then uh, Kelly will be able to dedicate some more time as well towards some video and other social media projects, which is on her plate. Uh, you know, be expecting to, to enjoy uh, more content and perhaps we can do things like educational tutorials and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the community meeting type settings, but then push them out as well on social media. Yeah, we're going to be ubiquitous across a whole bunch of channels. We are. And you can also now go to acb.org slash live acb.org slash live whenever we do do a live event any of these live events it'll come right on that web page as well so if you have trouble finding a search bar in any of the facebook's or you know youtube's to try to find our channel if you don't have a bookmark you can always just rely on acb.org slash live and and boom uh, yeah. you have a media player right in that window as well and we should hopefully get that integrated uh, on our other uh, you know sites as well so uh, but yeah this has been a fantastic opportunity uh, any any closing words on what you're most looking forward to for ACB Media in the coming year? We'll leave it at that. I just think um, for us to be everywhere and and you know anywhere and everywhere for for people who already are listening and to know that they're never isolated, never alone, and that um, that ACB Media is here in a friendly accessible way and that even people who want to listen by phone find ways to be able to do that if they don't have long distance to get that easily and Mm -hmm. you know for anybody that wants to know where we are to find us and at the same time for many more people to find us who who haven't known for doctors to know for all kinds of professionals to know for parents to know that we're here for all kinds of people at all ages and with all lifestyles. Yeah. Yeah, What's got, or Rick, no, what's got me jazzed about ACB uh, media network is that we're, it's all about reaching new audiences Mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, video is going to be a major piece of that or a piece of that, not necessarily a major or the major piece of that. And I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. And, Mm -hmm. And, um, 
you know, the, uh, what, what's cool, what's really cool about ACB Media Network, and we're seeing this more and more, is not only are we engaging people with an ACB and people, you know, within the blindness community, we're engaging allies and friends and family and donors and all these other folks that, you know, are our support system, basically, or, you know, uh, or society. And, and the more we can do that, the better. And uh, um, we saw that a lot in spades um, mm -hmm. at our convention this last year. So that's really exciting. And Jeff, final words from you. Looking forward to the most this year. Yeah, well, I think we're, uh, we're definitely moving forward. I'm excited about the future and about where we're going to be able to take things for people. And um, I'm, I'm excited about the feedback that we're going to get about it. So uh, everybody jump on board and come for the ride. It's going to be fun. Subscribe now and you'll, you'll be riding along with us. I want to thank the three of you for being part of this panel this afternoon or this morning, wherever you're listening to in the world right now or on a podcast. This will be saved as well for podcasting. So you can listen to some of these notes and comments as well. I want to thank everybody as well for joining us in the Zoom meeting, everybody listening over all of our streams, various around the world right now. Uh, and, and to that, uh, I will bid you all a wonderful next few days for your conference and be sure to check out the other sessions that are coming out. And I think, what are we transitioning into right now? Is uh, Mr. President, am I going back in or we don't, I don't think we have a leadership live right now. Do we, Debbie? Not right now. No, yeah. but probably do. an hour. Leadership oh, live right now? We do. We have a leadership live uh, oh. until 1245. Well, there you oh, go. Okay. So we get more of, of, uh, wow. of Tony and Debbie just when you thought it was safe to get back into the water, they say. Well, as Thank we you, say, President. as we say, stay tuned. Exactly. <laughs> stay tuned. So we will be jumping in. Uh, you've got leadership live now um, until we're going to be having sponsors at 1245 join us, which is exciting. That's and, right. Uh, and I got to tell you, Tony and Debbie, I'm so, so jazzed. I have spent the last hour wearing my feet out. I have, I've had the Zoom going uh, here with the computer in one room. I've had the uh, room B with the community <laughs> communications toolkit going on in the, in the den. And then uh, Leslie's been back in the, uh, in the bedroom with the membership, uh, the membership certification uh, panel. So I've, I, I haven't been changing devices. I've just been wandering the house going from you know, session to session to session. It's so cool. You know, our we one listener in the last session said how they have four devices. I mean, you could listen to all three of these events at one time. Yo, we you learned really how do. Santa does it in one night. Uh, the trick, you know, Santa thought that he had us fooled. If I assume Santa's still a, a male, um, <laughs> but, but we know how Santa had us fooled because we have been Rick and Tyson and Deb Lewis and several of us have been into three states in one night. We know how Santa got around the world. The new no. definition of multitasking. Yeah, no, exactly. no doubt about it. And Leslie was listening to the welcome on uh, Facebook Live. She said mm -hmm. it just came through great, crystal clear, was really yeah. Really Beautiful. good. Well, so you're sounding really good this morning, Dan. Yeah. So all those different yeah. venues and to, to, to hear the energy and the questions and, uh, you know, just how in, engaged everyone is. It just, Zoom has been such a wonderful platform to allow two-way communications, which I mm -hmm. think is... As you know, uh, Debbie and Rick from uh, mm -hmm. and Tony from your radio days, that mm -hmm. that just adds a whole new element when you have interaction back and forth with your audience. You can have a whole group of people talking like they're all just hanging out in a living room somewhere. Uh, Rick and I have done that on the cafe and uh, and had you know just just a group of people, pe different people just coming in and hanging out. It doesn't even have to be a community call. Listening to music and and everybody's got a place to go. It's very cool. It is. I was checking is. our stats and um, even on our streams over the last hour, we we had as many as 102 in here on mainstream, Tony. Mm -hmm. And we had, I saw 36 on live and 26 on special. So I think those are good. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't count the people on Zoom, right? Those are just the people. Right. On, no, on, that doesn't on count the, the people on, the on Zoom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All wow. those Zoom links have more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw 118 this morning in general session before we went to uh, when before we went to uh, concurrent sessions. Yeah. So great stuff. Oh, yeah. Really good. Yeah. 
And again, I want to uh, just uh, again to encourage people to consider participating in the monthly monetary support program. I think we'll probably have George and Jean on a little bit later. Uh, but anybody that signs up today, uh, I think they're doing a $50 uh, drawing uh, each day for people who sign up for the program. So again, yeah. if you're interested at all, uh, not to be too much of a telethon here, but if you're interested no. at all in joining MMS uh, and learning more about it, uh, you can uh, through email get there through askacbmms at gmail.com. So that's a S K A C B M M S at gmail.com, or you can call and leave your information and they will call you right back. It's, it's really a mailbox where you leave your information and that's at 202-743-0755. Again, 202-743-0755. So join today and get in for that $50 uh, prize. And then uh, at the end of the sessions, we're going to be drawing a winner for a new smart television. So, yeah. It's very exciting. And, yeah. and that's, for those that don't know about MMS, it's a way that you can just a little bit each month can go a long, long way. We were able to raise $104,000 last year through MMS. So thanks to everybody that's a member now. And we're so thankful for all the participation in MMS. And they have a goal this year. They're going to be talking about later today for 21 for 21. So 421 subscribers to MMS. We're now in the 330s. So we've got some, some big goals ahead of us, but we know we can reach it and you can get a chance to win that television. So if you sign up now, again, that's askacbmms at gmail.com. Thanks, Dan, for sharing that. And 202-734-0755. George, if you're listening, we're still trying to get that number. So you'll be able to hear George's wonderful voice who George is our, our chair for the committee that otherwise would be answering that number, but you can leave a voicemail there. Uh, let them know you're interested uh, and leave your contact information and they'll be back in touch with you to help you get set up on MMS. We can give a little bit goes a long way. So thank you. T Tony, I hate to correct you. That number is seven, four, three, zero, seven. Did I say seven, three, four? Yes, you did. Oh sir. my goodness. I'm this so sorry. Seven, four, three. <laughs> Translate. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what would happen if all would be fun to see what happens if you call that number? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Ray. Seven four three zero seven five five two zero two seven four three zero seven five five. And I think so, I heard a couple of guests come in. Yeah, I think I heard a couple of your guests yeah. come in from mm -hmm. the mini mall, and and we, maybe even somebody from Vanda. Yeah. Yeah. I All right, we're, we're going to be welcoming Vanda in a minute with Jennifer Lyman. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, at twelve forty-five, um, we're going to be welcoming uh, one of our sponsors, and Matt Ader is also going to be joining us with Vespero. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to there on the Leadership Live Show, where we're at right now. Uh, let's have a chance to have uh, Patty or Carla come back on with the mini mall minute and tell us what's going on. Patty come in. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you just fine, Patty. Mm -hmm. Hello again. All right. Well, I've got two items to show you. We have the ACB blanket. It is 80% cotton, 20% uh, polyester. It is 53 inches. Yeah, absolutely. It's 53 um, by 84 inches. And you can curl up with this and listen to all the ACB events and get on all your Zoom calls with it. You can stay warm <laughs> in your air conditioning, but I got something else goes along with it. We have a new tumbler. It is a double wall stainless steel tumbler. It either has a blue trans, uh, translucent lid. It also has a, it locks. There is a small pinhole for easier sipping. So that lets air go in as you're drinking out um, and it has the ACB logo. If you get a blue lid, the logo's in blue. It is stainless steel colored, but at the bottom, it's like geometric shaped. And to me, it's like if, you know, say uh, the rock or the Hulk or somebody just grabbed a hold of that stainless <laughs> steel and gave it a little crinkle, that's exactly what it looks like. So you can have your blanket and you can have your favorite drink with you to listen to all the ACB uh, events that are going on, you can get a hold of us at 877-969-MALL. That's 877-969-6255. Or you can call 877-630-7190. Remember, it's 10% off anything over $75. Thank you so much, Patty. And I'm not going to say thank the you. numbers anymore. So thank you for sharing those numbers and I'll get the numbers wrong again. So... Thank you, Ray, for correcting me on that one. 
Thank you. We got a few more minutes left in our leadership line before we have a chance to hear from our wonderful sponsors for this year's conference. Debbie, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm excited. I'm um, I'm just a little, I'm a, I'm, I don't want to say disappointed, but I have been given out this URL about um, this concert and I'm not seeing people go and milk it. And um, with all the ones that listened, I'm, we've, I think we've seen 86, I think I've seen 86 um, people go and contribute. So if you love good music, good piano, good music, good vocals, please go to tinyurl.com slash ACB radio. I don't want to keep being a broken record, but that is what I've turned into this week. Cause no, oh, no. Man. It, it, it's, it is either way, it was such a successful fundraiser for yes. those who don't know the Valentine's day concert that Jason Castingway, our formal technical director for ACB radio, uh, who's an outstanding musician as well. I felt like I was at a, a fifth Avenue fancy lounge, uh, you know, the oh. Waldorf or somewhere like that. Uh, listening to, listening to old, mm old, old hits from, from olden days, uh, love songs from the past. And it was a wonderful concert. So well done again, Jason. Uh, we've got just another minute or two left in our leadership live. Uh, we got a full slate of opportunities Ooh, here. We're going to be bre doing breakout again sessions at 3 p.m. So for those coming back in right now, make sure that at 3 p.m. you're going to be able to join into one of our other breakout opportunities. Uh, again, those are in rooms A, B, and C. This is always going to be room A if you're on the main session channel here or listening on ACB radio mainstream uh, and then we've got acb radio live events is that right Deb debbie for room b yes we do mm -hmm. and room c is uh is it the audio special i think special, special. yeah it is special it is it yeah. is it the audio description and that's going to be audio description so yeah mm -hmm. so we will have mm -hmm. i think like a next generation membership in this room uh, room b will be myself interviewing bill reader an outstanding fundraiser and and uh, teaches a professor of nonprofits uh, at George Mason University. And Joe Lynn uh, Bailey Page, our grant writer uh, extraordinaire, is also going to join us. We'll be talking fundraiser in room B. And in room C, you can find out all things audio description related. So exciting stuff going on in the audio description space as well. So, Debbie, are you exhausted yet? Oh, I yeah. thank you all yeah. so, so <laughs> much. Our pleasure, Dan, and uh, and we'll we'll throw it back to you if you want to make introductions for our sponsors. And I would it's been a pleasure I would, to be with everybody today. So I would love to. And Tony and Debbie, thank you so much for your leadership live connect shows and a wonderful panel discussion on ACB Radio transitioning to ACB Media Network. So thank you all so so much, and we'll hear from you soon. I know. Go get a, a break, a cup of coffee, a, a, a replacement shake, Debbie, and get ready for the afternoon. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dan. All right. Goodbye. All right. Uh, again, thanks to Debbie and Tony for just doing such an outstanding job, uh, kind of keeping us uh, moving here throughout our day. And it's now time. I want to welcome everybody back uh, for our we'll call it a kind of our lunchtime general session. Uh, it's going to run from 1245 until uh, 245. And so uh, the first part of our uh, general session today is really an opportunity for us, us to reach out and thank our sponsors uh, who have uh, given so generously to make this DC Leadership Conference a reality today. Uh, I first want to recognize J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, who this year was a presidential sponsor at $10,000. And then I would like to recognize Vanda Pharmaceutical, which was a congressional sponsor at $5,000, and also giving very much thanks to Vespero, who was a Beltway sponsor this year. And I want to, we've got a couple of uh, folks who want to come and talk to us. Uh, and we would love to hear from them. And I would first like to introduce Matt Aders, uh, who is a VP with Vespiro. And he is also a member of our ACB advisory board and has just been a wonderful asset to our organization. So Matt, welcome. And we'd love to hear about what's new at Vespiro. Thanks, Dan. And um, it's great to be here and, and uh, look forward to future events like this. I know it's great because we do get to reach m new people this year with it being uh, virtual, but I figured uh, it's it's at the same time, we always love the connection when we get to do this in person. 
So a uh, couple of quick items. I'll just I'll kind of crank through this because it's a, I know it's a quick um, uh, touch base. But uh, Vespero, obviously, most of you know us in the four brands, whether it's Freedom Scientific, Optelec, Enhanced Vision, or the Passiello Group. Uh, three of those brands um, more recognizable to the blindness and low vision community, which are Freedom Scientific, Optelec, and Enhanced Vision. Um, you know, some of the new hardware that came out from those organizations this year or uh, companies this year is Merlin Mini from Enhanced Vision. Optelic came out with the Clearview Go, um, uh, Topaz Ultra from Freedom Scientific, and Optelic also came out with the Compact 10. Those are some of the hardware things. And then I kind of wanted to share some of the um, content stuff we've been doing. Um, webinars galore, as we all have been doing. Uh, whether they're on Zoom or whatever platform, but um, we've all been living in webinar webinar uh, worlds today. And there's been quite a bit um, hosted by Freedom Scientific. We've done two webinars a month uh, for JAW, Zoom, Text, and Fusion. Uh, we do once weekly with ACB communities and, and have enjoyed doing those on Thursdays. Uh, we do once a month with APH where they're People can go uh, learn specific things for teaching and education. Um, and then we also do the Vespero hardware one once a month. So there's quite a bit of, of webinar content that's happening. Um, on the podcast side, last summer uh, in August, um, right after the convention or during the convention, I guess that would be in July, uh, we launched the uh, Freedom Scientific Training Podcast. So you can ask any of your smart speakers uh, to play the latest training podcast. And there's been a new uh, release of training material once a month, or excuse me, once a week. Um, so there's a lot of content out there now and, and that kind of stuff will continue there. And some of it's going to be um, old webinars repeated in podcast form because people prefer to listen to it on uh, their mobile and portable speakers. Um, you can obviously subscribe to that channel as well. Um, and then YouTube training videos, Oh my goodness, it's crazy the amount of content that's been up there. And one of the things that we did this year is, is try to make all of that content that was like an hour long webinar before, we sliced and diced that into smaller chunks. So you could actually go up there and get a tip that's only two minutes long. You could go up there and get how to do a chat in Teams that's, that's 10 minutes long. Um, so there's quite a bit of difference in terms of, of content up there and um, would recommend that people subscribe to that channel. Um, and then the tips. Um, I've been posting tips in the ACB uh, uh, Facebook group um, for the last uh, month or so. Uh, continue to do that. Those tips are on JAWS, Zoom, Text, Fusion, Office, uh, Teams, uh, Windows, whatever the topic may be. And hopefully people are enjoying those. We're trying to help people learn um, and those are short, quick tips on how to do something. And those also turn into videos that are on the YouTube if you'd prefer to watch them in a YouTube form, uh, format. And then quickly, I'll just jump through some of the quick features that were added to the uh, products of software this year, which most of us use. Um, uh, picture smart on the web. So if you land a picture in Facebook, you can actually have JAWS. If you hear the word graphic, you can do an insert space. Uh, P for picture smart, and I think it's uh, C to acquire the image, but I could be wrong on the keystroke, but if it's uh, insert space followed by P and then do the question mark, you'll get all the keystrokes for picture smart. Um, OCR to Word, you can hit an applications key or shift F10 on any file in your computer. That's an image and that could be a PDF or, or a JPEG or whatever format and say OCR to Word. And that's uh, right there in the latest JAWS as well, which people really enjoyed not having to copy and paste into Word. Um, the Ask Sharky and Ask Zoomy stuff. And so if you haven't heard that you can now ask JAWS to do things um, or Zoom text or Fusion to do things, JAWS uses the wake word Sharky. Hopefully I didn't wake up everybody's computer by saying that. And if I did, hello Sharky. Uh, the other is Zoomy. So you can ask Zoomy to do things as well. And that's in Fusion and, and Zoom text. Um, team supports new um, uh, in the latest one in here in February, we support uh, apps like Weather and News, which are part of the Windows App Store, um, and then Math Equation support. Um, the last part I want to mention is the, the home portal licenses. If you go to portal.freedomscientific.com, you can get a license um, for $80 a year for Zoom Text, 
ninety dollars a year for Jaws. Those prices do go up in March uh, by five dollars. I think it's eighty-five and ninety-five. And then there's also a Fusion license. And for those doing their SMAs, um, you know, if there's an SMA program to get your software up to date, it's highly recommend that people keep it up to date because Windows is changing every every time you turn on your computer. Um, Office is changing um, every you know two to six weeks depending on how your platform set up. Uh, Teams is updating. Uh, your browsers are updating every time you turn on your computer. So if you don't keep the JAWS ZoomTex Fusion up to date, you're probably going to be behind in some of that software. So Dan, hopefully I, I didn't talk too much, but uh, give you a quick overview of what we're doing. Thank you, Matt. Great information. And again, thank you for being a sponsor and thank you for doing the weekly community event calls. They're well attended and very informative. So uh, thank you for being such a good partner with Vespero. Uh, and any time and, and just let us know what else we can do. That's the one thing I ask is if we're not doing something, you know, please let us know what we can do better. Thank you, Matt. Have a good afternoon. You too. Uh, next, uh, we'd like to introduce Jennifer Lyman. Uh, she is a nurse educator with Vanda, Vanda Pharmaceuticals. And uh, Francis and the team at Vanda are always and have been such an important and integral part of ACB for a number of years now. Uh, we welcome uh, Vans, uh, as we welcome Vanda's uh, participation this year again as a congressional sponsor. And Jennifer, we'd love to hear from you. Welcome. Great, thank you so much. This is so awesome for me. Um, but like Matt, I'm not going to take a lot of time. Um, again, my name is Jennifer Lyman, and I am one of the non-24 nurse educators. Uh, for Vanda Pharmaceuticals. And um, I thought I would spend just a couple of minutes um, sharing some information about Vanda, um, what I do as a nurse educator and why it's important to know about non-24. Um, many of you are familiar with Vanda Pharmaceuticals or you're familiar with the non-24 sleep-wake disorder, but some of you might not be. So I'll share information on Vanda and then talk about the role of a non-24 nurse educator. Um, most of you probably know that Vanda, Vanda Pharmaceuticals is a biopharmaceutical company that focuses on unmet needs of rare diseases and disorders, including non-24. So we're committed to education and research in that area. And it's one of the reasons um, we have nurse educators out in the field. Um, as a nurse educator, my goal is to raise awareness of non-24 through community outreach because it's a rare disorder that causes sleep disturbances, which can have significant health consequences. Um, I'm right now living in the Chicago area, but I cover the entire Midwestern region. Um, but I also have three other nurse colleagues. So we've split up the country into quadrants and, and that's the way we've been uh, working things. We usually meet in person or virtually with organizations and support groups within our regions um, for groups that support the visually impaired. But there are other people on our team as well. So each nurse educator uh, partners, if you will, with a health educator. Um, that's someone who over the phone can talk to people um, in greater detail about non-24 and um, maybe some therapies. They can talk to people about getting a sleep journal started, um, just lots of resources at their disposal. Um, we also work with account managers. Those are basically the sales reps. They go out and meet with healthcare professionals in their offices, whether it's a doctor or nurse practitioner, to make sure that they understand non-24, how to recognize it and how to treat it. So um, even with the nurse educators working out in communities, awareness remains low, um, including among healthcare professionals. So I'm sure many of you have heard a presentation in the past on non-24, um, but research suggests that you need to hear something five to six times in order to learn it. So repetition is intentionally built into our presentations. And it's one of the reasons we continue to come back and visit with um, organizations. Um, it's important to know that symptoms can appear at any time. So even if you've heard something about non-24 in the past, maybe you didn't have sleep struggles at that time. And because our health is a journey, 
things change and maybe sleep is now a challenge for some people. Therefore, when you hear that information, you'll be hearing it with new ears because it's, it's more relevant to you. So although non-24 can affect up to 70% of those who are blind, you don't have to be totally blind to have non-24. Another important reason why we're out in the community um, trying to raise awareness. Um, and we know you all are doing a great job welcoming new members. So that information might be new um, to the newer members. Um, just a little overview of what we cover. Um, our education sessions are strictly educational and unbranded, which means there's no mentioning of treatments or brand brands. Um, the signs and symptoms of non-24 are discussed so that they can be recognized. And we explain how non-24 differs from sleep disorders. So learning about a disorder is an important first step for people in advocating for themselves. So if anyone would like more information on Vanda, you can visit the webpage um, at Vanda Pharma, that's one word, V-A-N-D-A-P-H-A-R-M-A.com. Or if you would like to have a nurse educator speak at, at an event, a convention or support group, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm always available. My phone number is area code 202-875-4714. We love what we do. And on behalf of my colleagues, I wanna thank you all for allowing us to share information on non-24. It's so appreciated. Thanks for your attention and enjoy the conference. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you to all that Vanda does. And I, I just have to give a little shout out that Vanda not only participates as a sponsor in our national uh, convention and our DC Leadership Conference, as I've virtually toured around the country participating in multiple state and special interest affiliate uh, conventions, Vanda is also very present in those affiliate levels. And we really appreciate that. Uh, Vanda's support uh, for our affiliates really makes a huge difference. And thank you, Jennifer, for uh, all that Vanda does. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Dan. And it really has been such a treat for all of us to meet members across the country. So thank you so much for affording us that opportunity. Oh, have a good afternoon, Jennifer. And thanks for coming, stopping by. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, next, I am so excited to introduce uh, Eric Bridges, our executive director, to introduce our keynote speaker for today. So uh, everybody stay tuned, get ready to smile and laugh and have a good time. And I am going to turn it over to Eric Bridges. by saying that the, the uh, speaker today uh, and I have known one another for probably three or four years. I got to know uh, Will when he was part of the San Francisco for the Blind, uh, the Lighthouse, <laughs> uh, the San Francisco Lighthouse uh, leadership team uh, three or four years ago and have gotten to know him better since and uh, with his departure and uh, him arriving at Be My Eyes, it's been wonderful to be able to work with him and the Be My Eyes team. Uh, as many of you are probably aware, we've been a part of the Be My Eyes platform for almost a year now, and it has been wonderful to be able to provide that uh, level of support to ACB members, but frankly, folks from around the blind community that are interfacing with Be My Eyes. So, uh, over the last roughly year or so, you all have noticed that we have needed to uh, really figure out and adapt to the virtual world and how to communicate, how to, how to engage with the membership and the broader blind community. And uh, as an example, this morning, we had a breakout that dealt with that issue and the tremendous support that ACB Radio has lent to us elevating our, our voice to other channels within our community. I uh, invited Will to come and be with us today to talk a little bit about the importance of 
elevating one's voice over different platforms, uh, doing it in different ways. Uh, the importance of video, yes, many of us cannot see, but we're not the only audience that often visits uh, the American Council of the Blind uh, webpage, uh, website, or our social media platforms on Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and, and other platforms. And so the importance of video, uh, what it means to those audiences, there's a, a, an enormous audience that is low vision of which video is of great import. So uh, Will has a, a podcast that he does with Be My Eyes. He also has various side projects. I listened to him interview on one of his podcasts last year. Uh, the iconic skateboard uh, superstar, Tony Hawk, which is pretty cool, Will. Uh, that was, had to be a cool opportunity. I'm envious. And he's done a bunch of other things. And he's got some interesting perspectives uh, as, a, as an individual who is blind, that is in communications and all about figuring out how to do outreach to our community. And so with that, I am very pleased to introduce the Vice President for Community at Be My Eyes from Los Angeles, California, Will Butler. Welcome. Thank, thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. Um, really, really pleased to be here. And I believe the last time we saw each other was here in Los Angeles. It was before the world sort of went dark for a while. <laughs> it was just about one year ago. Um, it was. Yeah, well, and Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but we will have a chance to do some questions, right? Yes, yeah, okay. there will be a, a few minutes set aside depending upon uh, okay. your, you know, your presentation, yes. Absolutely, awesome. Well, I have a whole bunch of stuff I'd love to talk about and get through, but it's also really, really important to me that I'm answering you know, questions that are relevant to people and bringing that value that everyone's always talking about to, to um to the folks who are listening, and I know there's a lot of people on the call, and I want to, I want to engage. So I'm going to try to get through my spiel um, with enough, with plenty of time for questions. So as you're listening, feel free to take a mental note of um, something that might interest you, because I'm happy to to dive deeper into any of the topics that that I go into today. Um, yeah, and with that, um, thank you to the ACB. Um, it's, 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 it's a great weekend and it's great to hear all the ambitions on display today and uh, all the exciting new projects that are underway. Um, I certainly, uh, um, every time there's a new announcement uh, from ACB, whether it's about audio description or, uh, or uh, some of the new uh, podcasts and projects that you've been launching, I'm very excited uh, and I, I read with great uh, anticipation, uh, the dots and dashes every week. And, you know, I think sometimes as professionals who um, send out communications, you know, uh, folks like me and people on my team who send out email newsletters and those sorts of things, we sort of feel like we're sending them out into the abyss. And um, so I definitely like to take the opportunity anytime I can to remind folks that um, when you hit, hit the send button, uh, those efforts are not in vain. Many, many people are reading these communications that we send out and, and today more than ever. Um, so a little bit just to, about to intro to Eric, thank you so much for the introduction. And again, my name is Will Butler. I, uh, my, my title is VP of Community at the Be My Eyes app. Um, Be My Eyes is a wonderful uh, company and a mobile application. If none of you, um, if any of you don't have the app, please download it. Um, it's a free sighted assistance app. Um, and we are based, our team is based all around the world. Um, so we have offices in Denmark and in California, as well as little outposts around the Midwest and um, all over the United States. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Be My Eyes, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about where I came from and sort of how I'm viewing the media and communications landscape today, um, being that I used to work at the Lighthouse for the Blind in San Francisco, so I have some experience in the nonprofit realm, 
And then I also have a background in journalism. So I have gotten a peek into sort of what, what the media landscape, evolving media landscape is like. Um, but first I just wanna yeah, elaborate a bit more on what Eric was talking about, about ACB on Be My Eyes. Um, for those that don't know, um, you know, many people have thought of Be My Eyes over the years, rightly so, as a volunteer community. And um, Be My Eyes was founded six years ago on a very, very simple principle, which is that you should be able to overcome an accessibility barrier with a pair of eyes whenever you needed it, not have to wait for someone to show up at your house or for your family member to be available. Um, our founder, Hans, uh, in Denmark came up with this idea. He himself is legally blind. He says hello to everyone, by the way. And, um, and he, he came up with this idea of, I should be able to push a button and have a pair of eyes at my disposal. Um, I, you know, personally, our whole executive team believes that sight should be free and that it's not something you should have to pay for. And so we've worked very hard to make sure that the volunteer network is, is you know, always available and always um, quick to answer. Our algorithms, you know, work behind the scenes when you push the button on the Be My Eyes app to reach a volunteer in just a matter of seconds. We, we serve 185 languages today and across all of those 185 languages, our average connection time to a volunteer is less than 30 seconds. In English, you're gonna find it, if you speak English, it's even less like uh, some, most of the time in the single digits. So you're just waiting literally a few seconds for a pair of eyes, as opposed to 10, 20 years ago, when, when you needed a pair of eyes, it might take days, hours, weeks, months to have someone um, available to read you the things that you wanted read. So that is what everyone you know, in our community is familiar with about Be My Eyes, about sort of the Be My Eyes story. Um, but the sort of next chapter that we're in now that folks aren't as familiar with is our investment in specialized help services. So um, a couple of years ago, we sat down with Microsoft and to address a, a problem, which was that, um, you know, we had users calling, um, calling, uh, making Be My Eyes calls for Microsoft issues and Microsoft had a help desk that wanted to help people with Be My Eyes issues. Uh, and Microsoft wasn't getting a chance to see how their products were working for blind and low vision people once they were out in the wild. Um, they could do user testing before things were released, but it was a totally different matter altogether to actually see um, what the real life issues were. So we asked Microsoft if they would like us to route calls into their call center, and that was the beginning of specialized help. Um, so today you can call Microsoft 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the Be My Eyes app, directly from within the Be My Eyes app to make a Be My Eyes call um, and connect very quickly with someone who is trained to help you solve your problem. So from there, we, we quickly had kind of a chain of, of other companies join. Google joined shortly after Microsoft. Um, and today we have a whole sort of hub on the Be My Eyes service of providers. Um, I'll talk a little bit more later on about Be My Eyes and happy to answer any questions about Be My Eyes. Um, but that's not exactly why we're here today. I wanted to talk about uh, what ACB is doing on Be My Eyes because during, this, uh, during the pandemic time, when you know, I, was, I was sitting back and watching all of, our, all of the doors closing of all of the great blindness organizations around the country. And I thought to myself, blindness organizations need to not lose that connection with the, the average consumer who can just walk in the door, um, walk up to the front desk and ask a question or um, give a call. And so we reached out to blindness organizations around the country and around the world. And we invited them to join the Be My Eyes platform uh, at no charge. Um, this, is a, this is a service uh, that we're granting specifically to blindness organizations that have uh, a mission to serve the blind and low vision community. And what that allows is an official presence for any blindness organization in the Be My Eyes app, along with a video call button and a calling feature that allows you to be available to 
any Be My Eyes app user uh, during any hours of the day that you choose. So ACB, uh, about a year ago now, really embraced this initiative and um, joined the Be My Eyes service and now has a team of folks at the central ACB offices answering Be My Eyes calls uh, five hours a day now, um, five days a week, um, to answer any questions that any member may have just high level about ACB and about membership and about resources. And it, it, it's been an incredible way, not only for ACB just to have a profile and a brand presence in the community, but also to just increase that feeling of connectivity that consumers, that the end user, that the average blind person feels with ACB. Um, I, I would love to chat a little bit about that later, but it's just one example of, of how there are so many new channels now where you can connect directly with those you're trying to serve. Um, so I, I, uh, I, wanna, I wanna just briefly go back and talk, give a little context about who I am and sort of where I came from. I, I, I did not grow up as a blind person. I didn't identify with even low vision, even though I was very much low vision as a, as a young kid. Um, I didn't identify with my struggles in classes. I didn't identify with the fact that I had trouble reading sheet music on the piano. Um, it wasn't until I was in my teen years that I actually started to lose vision uh, in a way that was substantial. But, um, but I didn't identify with it at all. And so I didn't know anyone who was blind. I wasn't familiar with anyone who was even identified as visually impaired. It was all uh, very foreign to me. And then when I was 19 and I became legally blind um, due to retinal detachment in my good eye at that point, my one good eye, I really had no footing underneath me. I really had no resources. My doctors didn't, everyone is familiar with this story, right? Anyone who's listening to me talking right now knows what it feels like to walk out of a doctor's office and feel like you maybe didn't necessarily get what you needed. Uh, but you don't know what you need, right? And, um, you know, even in those days, it was just uh, about 12 or 13 years ago now, even, even in 2008 or nine, you log on to the internet, it was a different internet than it is now. Um, there were no blind, in, you know, influencers, certainly not. There were no blind, uh, you know, YouTubers with millions of followers there weren't really even much in the way of podcasts about blindness, at least nothing that you could find if you weren't sort of an insider, if you didn't already have an in with the community. Um, the only thing, the only real online resources to speak of at that time to the average, you know, lay person Googling around for issues about blindness was newsletters and newsletter archives. And, you know, newsletters are still an effective way of communicating, but it was only an absolute seed of what we have today. Um, today is a completely different landscape. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and I wanna answer any questions that might exist about that. Um, but bef you know, before getting into that, I came into my own you know, kind of experience of blindness. I took me four years to start using a cane. I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of, uh, uh, let's say interesting uh, situations in that period of time. I, I uh, was stopped at border patrol because I looked suspicious. Uh, you know, um, I probably looked like I was intoxicated or, you know, and some, and this sort of like, it, there's just so many examples of our, um, of how we behave when we're trying to fit in with others, when we're trying to hide our vision um, as a young, person without a cane, without a dog. Uh, I was absolutely uh, just trying to fit in with the, the stereotype of what I thought a young, you know, quote unquote, able-bodied person should look like. And so it was a struggle. It was really a, um, you know, a challenge. And finally, when I picked up the cane in 2012, everything just cracked open. Everything changed. Um, suddenly it, things weren't so awkward at work anymore. Um, people didn't, people didn't 
you know, side eye me and try to figure out what was wrong with me. Why was I walking so slowly in that one dark corner of the office? Uh, why would you know? Why why did I uh, reach out to the you know the, the over the tip jar at the cash register and drop the coins right onto the counter? You know, strange little things like that that had no explanation when I wasn't identifying myself as visually impaired. But then suddenly with the cane in my hand, everything fell into place. And my career took off as well. I started writing more. I had more confidence to go out in journalistic ventures and interview um, sources and um, be comfortable with the fact that I couldn't see everything. And I was pitching to major news outlets and pretty soon I was writing for publications that you know the names of like New York Times and New Yorker and Atlantic. And I was writing and not just about blindness, but about um, technology and culture. It was really quite a, um, quite a wonderful time for, for a young you know, person coming into their own. And I attribute it very much to my willingness to embrace my blindness. But at the same time, it wasn't the whole picture. I still had so many parts of my life that I hadn't figured out yet. And without kind of a support community online that I could look to in the evenings when I got home you know, from work and skim through you know, information and resources and t joke around with other people who were going through what I was going through, it really, um, it really wasn't a full picture, a full picture of community or of options of how to live my life. So around this time, I was lucky because I um, ran into the folks at the Lighthouse for the Blind in San Francisco. And I came to work there in 2015 during a big, big shift at the Lighthouse and a move to a new headquarters. And I spent three or four years there at the Lighthouse and over the course of, I could give a whole talk about what I learned at, at the Lighthouse, but I, you know, to sum it all up, I really feel like I sort of went back to college in a lot of ways. Um, I had just gotten out of college, but I feel like I went back and I went to sort of um, to blind school in some sense. Uh, it was incredible all that I learned. Um, just about, not so much about the, you know, how to, um, you know, operate a piece of technology or how to, uh, you know, um, measure, you know, the right length of a cane, but more, more things about attitude and your bearing in the world and your place in the world and seeing, you know, coming to work with 75 or so different blind people every day and seeing the myriad diversity of approaches to blindness and how, well, some people behave like this and some people behave like this. And you know what? Everybody's approach to blindness is valid and, um, and good and works for them. And I, I really can't emphasize enough how valuable it was for me to be exposed to that many different perspectives. And so I think, you know, fast forwarding a little bit today, where I run community and communications and social media and brand for Be My Eyes, which is this vast blindness community that spans 175 countries. I'm thinking about what is the universal way? What is the, the, the way to connect with a blind, a visually impaired, or an ally, a consumer, user, app user, whoever it is, it's not limited simply to people who identify as blind or low vision. It could be anyone around them, anyone in their family, anyone on the periphery, um, or just simply someone who's an ally. Because let's not forget that of our 5 million you know, sighted app users, many of those people will also experience visual impairments. In fact, a higher percentage than even the number of users we have already. So, it's, it, it's really important that we're speaking to everyone when we speak about issues of blindness because it really truly does affect everyone. And even if you don't become blind, you're going to have someone in your life who is, and you're gonna to need to know how to treat them, how to respect them, how to give them autonomy, how to give them support. So I really can't emphasize enough how, how important it is our communications are, are, are vast and diverse and speak to everyone. 
but what is that thing, right? What is that, um, that universal way to communicate a message about blindness and how do you do it at a mass scale when there's so many different ways to communicate? I mean, um, today there are more choices than ever when it comes to getting your message out there. A lot of people's minds first go to Facebook, right? And Facebook is really just the tip of the iceberg. Um, in fact, I, I think Facebook probably represents only a small slice today of the communications that are happening in the community building that's happening on the internet. You know, just sort of speaking broadly, all of this applies equally to topics of blindness as it does to the mainstream community. But you have blind and visually impaired people now on TikTok. I don't know if anyone has ever explored TikTok as a social network. It's one of these brand new social networks that just came out the gate you know, in the last few years, very quickly rose to popularity. And you have dozens and dozens and dozens of blind and visually impaired people, many of whom are young people on this app, making videos on a daily basis and connecting with hundreds of thousands and millions of people. I'm not exaggerating here when I can tell you that a 22 year old on TikTok can make one video and in a matter of hours, they can have reached more people than the ACB has reached over the course of that entire year or dozens of years. And I say that not to be sort of daunting because I do realize that like not every social media platform is right for every business. Personally, Be My Eyes doesn't even have a TikTok account, but it's important to understand how all of these different platforms and social networks are creating a constellation of communication and engagement around us so that we know what environment we're playing in. Um, there's all these other platforms as well, and I'm not gonna go into them today because it's a whole you know, dissertation, but there's forums like Reddit, Instagram, which is very much owned by Facebook. There's Twitter, of course, where many of you are familiar, there's chatter constantly going on. And then all these splinter social medias now that are popping up. Things like Discord, which believe it or not, is a hub for blind gamers. Um, you have Clubhouse, which is the newest sort of audio-based social media, which just popped up just in the last year. Um, I spent six hours on Clubhouse a couple of days ago talking to dozens and dozens of blind and visually impaired people about everything from um, what we think of visual, uh, blindness simulations all the way down to what's the right cane for a hiking trip. And so like it or not, our community has splintered into a million separate parts. And all of these conversations are happening simultaneously. And there are rooms now, Zoom rooms, you know, all of these things where um, people are talking. So you have two things going on here, which is that you have less control over the overarching narrative. But at the same time, you have a stronger word of mouth effect. So you have less control over the overarching narrative. You don't have the ability to press one button and send out a communication that's going to affect everyone. And yet, if you do something valuable, if you do something that makes a difference in people's lives, the word of mouth is going to spread hundreds of times faster than it ever did before. And that is regardless of what platform you're using to spread your message. So, you know, simultaneously with this, we have the rise of voice technology, which is a really interesting sort of curveball in here. And that's, you know, Alexa and podcasts and all these sorts of things. And that has an interesting effect, a level playing field effect as well, because we get to consume content the way that many people like to today. And we're very much a part of the mainstream. We have many apps bringing us in and making sure that their mainstream experiences are accessible. Um, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing because it means that we can pull open the Kindle app or we can pull open the Audible app, whatever it might be, and interact. Um, we have, due to the wonderful work of ACB and others, we have um, streaming entertainment platforms, adding audio description. Blind folks are allowed to participate in the mainstream in a way that they weren't before. And so I really wanna emphasize that the role of you know, an organization, I think like ACB, when it comes to putting out a podcast or just posting something on Facebook or 
trying a new media format is really to sit back and think, what value can I add to someone's life? What can I say that's going to affect that 19 year old in Iowa who just is experiencing a vision impairment for the first time? Um, we're looking to create community here and communities created through um, trust, which comes through vulnerability and honesty, right? And uh, everyone now has a high quality microphone and a high quality camera in their pocket. And so, you know, it's not about production value anymore. It's not about being polished or shiny or high end. It's about taking out your phone, hitting record and sharing something that's honest and authentic and real with people that's, that you may be struggled with once in your life that's going to help people. And that is what is going to activate that word of mouth effect that's going to spread your message far and wide. And that's the thing that's gonna strengthen communities for the long term. Now I realize I've gone on and on and, and not left that much time for questions. It's amazing how time flies when you get me up on my soapbox. But um, I'd love to just sort of open it up and answer anything that, that may pop up uh, in just the last couple of minutes here uh, before we move on. Thank you, Will. This is Dan Spoon, ACB president, and we'll have people raise their hands now for questions. And I'll get one in while, we're, while people are raising their hands. So uh, the theme of our DC Leadership Conference this year is fostering voice, choice, and community. And it just really resonated with your talk to us this afternoon. Where, where do you see um, communications going here in the next five years? It, it feels to me like the days of the pre-canned broadcast and people just being listening as opposed to interacting that's, that's the past and the future is live and engagement. Uh, what, what are your thoughts yeah. in that area? Well, a few things. I think, first of all, very much live. You said the word live. That's going to be important. Um, people aren't going to be spending lots of time pre-recording things and releasing them. Um, they may be archived as podcasts after the fact, but a lot is going to happen live. So invest in people who are good talkers. Invest in people who are dynamic and and passionate. The other thing that's happening is it's a move toward the sort of personal brand, for lack of a better term, the move toward a focus on the individual. So on these social networks where people are talking with each other, um, it's going to be about personalities. You know, you're the, an agency or an organization's communications are going to be reflected through personalities. And I really think that investing in people and personalities is, is going to be of a huge benefit to any organization that's trying to get the word out. Um, the final thing I think is that it's not super important which platform you choose um, to post your things on. It's much more about um, thinking critically about the content <coughs> you're putting out and thinking, how is this helping some, really keeping that, having that individual in your mind's eye of who you're trying to help when you're putting out your content, making sure it's authentic and vulnerable T to me, that, that is where this is all going. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think, I, I think podcasts are also, I don't want to take away from podcasts because I think I should say, you know, we launched one podcast to Be My Eyes. We were very happy with it. So we launched a second. And this week I'm going to launch a third. So it's, <laughs> we're investing heavily in podcasts. In fact, to sort of plug it, you know, this, this new thing we're working on is totally about humor. It's called Say My Meme, and it's going to be completely about describing memes for people who are blind or low vision. Because memes, you know, these little funny cartoons that are on the internet are really actually a cultural zeitgeist now. And they're a way that people communicate, but they're entirely visual. And so a podcast that might be sort of a fun, funny, casual um, you know, inoffensive thing might actually be the deepest, most meaningful way that a potential member connects with your organization. That's great. Uh, so Cindy, Donna, do we have any hands raised for questions? Right now there aren't any hands. There well, are no. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to sort of wrap it up. I know I'm over time now, but 
Um, happy to answer any other questions, Dan or Eric, before I jump off. It's been if, great to be here this morning. I'm if I could jump life. in. I, I, please, I just, please, Cindy. Yeah, yes. I just would like to uh, invite you, Will, to maybe touch base with me and see about doing a community event about Be My Eyes uh, for ACB. And we, you know, been engaging with people in the blindness community for nearly a year now on a daily basis and yeah. would love to partner with you on maybe bringing some of, maybe focusing on different areas of Be My Eyes, such as specialized help or some other aspects of Be My Eyes, if you would like to do that. So I would be thrilled. Absolutely. We, we, we've been so busy this, these past uh, several months of Be My Eyes, we I didn't even get a chance to share, but we launched Be My Eyes for Work, which is our new workplace accommodation software. So any of that your, could be that could be a presentation all in right. It could be all of itself. itself. Yeah, and we're, we're yeah. helping with COVID tests in the UK and in the US. Exactly. So yeah, um, we love it. it. it let's let's, do it. let's definitely do that. It and sounds th good. Thank you so much, Cindy. You bet. And, thank and you. well, I want to learn more about the the memes because I'm telling you, everywhere you go, people talk about memes, and I know kind of what a meme is. But you, you, as a blind person, I I haven't been able to 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 enjoy them. So well, that's exciting. We're well, we're launching a podcast just for you, Dan. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> and bring well, everybody up to speed, and I guarantee you, it's going to be a hoot. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Will. We hey, really appreciate for, it. Yeah, keep an eye out for, for Say My Meme. That's coming uh, in the next week here. Awesome. Say My hey, Meme. Yes. Thank you so much for taking time out of your weekend to be with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Eric, thanks so much for inviting me. It really is an honor to talk to everyone. And please, everyone, just email me. My email address is will at bemyeyes.com. My inbox is flooded anyway. Just shoot me an email, will at bemyeyes.com. We'll figure out how to make Be My Eyes work for you. And I will give you, you know, personal advice on communications if you if you really want it. I'm I love this community and I'm happy to do whatever I can for everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Uh, so just for everybody's schedule, we'll kind of we'll be running maybe oh five minutes five minutes. So adjust your schedule for five minutes as you see it on the agenda, uh, and. Next, we're going to take the opportunity to hear uh, from a, tw a little flashback at a 2020 highlight video. So everybody stay tuned for some highlights of ACB in the past. Take it away, Rick. An old flickering film reel appears. Counting down a clock cuts to ACB logo over U.S. Capitol at night, then fades to Statue of Liberty, which dissolves to Pacific waves on a beach, then to the Rocky Mountains. California. Florida. Iowa. Texas. Guide dog users. Students. IT professionals. Government employees. The American Council of the Blind has members in all 50 states and is actively engaged in a wide variety of activities. Welcome to the 2020 convention of the American Council of the Blind. President and I would Dan like Spoon. to now call the 59th annual ACB conference and convention to order. By American the flag blows in the wind. Early light. Thank you, Janet. Thank you to your committee. And thanks to all those other countless volunteers, our ACB radio team, our ACB staff, and the hundreds and hundreds of volunteers who have made this convention uh, a reality. My name is Roy Samuelson. I'm a tall male wearing a black t-shirt under a wrinkled denim jacket. I smile a lot and get animated when I get passionate. But first of all, thank you for inviting us audio description narrators into your TVs, your theaters, and your smartphones. Jeff this Tom. year, our International Achievement Award goes to Vocalize in the United Kingdom. Hi, I'm Matthew Cock, Chief Executive of Vocalize from the UK. We're so incredibly grateful and proud to have been given this award. The award comes at a time when theatres, museums and heritage sites across the UK face an uncertain future. And we're all concerned with ensuring access and inclusion are not sacrificed in the new normal. The award's already been a great morale booster to help us at this time. Senator Ed Markey, Senator from Massachusetts. 
And while I wish we could be together in person for your annual conference and convention, I wanna thank the American Council of the Blind and all its partners for your incredible continuing commitment, even through this pandemic to connecting everyone and bringing opportunities to all. Because of the ADA, a low vision resident of a nursing home can demand a large print meal or activity schedule. Emily Glazer. Um, so what drew me to Achilles is that it's a very inclusive, very positive, uh, very forward moving, um, forward thinking organization. Hello, I'm Charles Cooper. And on behalf of Signal Outdoors, we're really excited today to have a conversation with Clark Rockfall. Walk, walk through some of the the technologies that have become available that are now being utilized to, to create sort of a better experience for people when they're in the outdoors. The question about technology and how technology can be used by people who are blind and visually impaired, um, especially in outdoor environments is a really interesting one, Charles. Hello and welcome to Get Up and Get Moving, a call for leveraging technology to improve health and wellness. My name is Robert Frawley, and on behalf of Sight Tech Global, I am so excited to have you join us today. I was able Charles. to bring myself down from uh, being insulin dependent to not needing to use insulin any longer. Uh, I was able to lose 75 pounds just because I was paying attention to what I ate and how it affected my blood sugar. Clark, are you pumped up for White Cane Day? I am. Thanks everyone joining us on YouTube Live. It's called ECB Voices for a reason. It's for all of us to take our individual experiences or some of our shared experiences and pass them through the ECB community and the community at large. Fortunately, ECB thanks to companies like Apple, who introduced a year earlier the first accessible iPhone, we knew what could be done. And thanks to groups like the American Council of the Blind, we knew our voices calling for equality in a changing media and landscape would be heard. That's what made the day in the White House so special when President Obama signed into law the 21st Century Communications and Video Accessibility Act. Welcome to uh, YouTube Live today here at the American Council of the Blind. And we're really excited today to celebrate International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Tony it's Steven. that struggle and desire to be independent. I think it's fair to say that same struggle and desire is very well alive in our country right now as America wrestles with this isolation that the coronavirus has thrown on all of us. Cindy I Hollis. am so grateful to have the opportunity to get to know so many amazing people through the American Council of the Blind and through our community events. The yeah, pandemic please. will eventually end, but what we've, what, the foundation of what we've built is only gonna be further enhanced. And so, you know, we've, we've found a way to engage with a whole new group of people uh, that is growing by the day. And we are, frankly, we're, we're so, excited, but we're also very appreciative. The end of the film reel flickering. Wow. Woo. Woo. Brought a tear to my eyes, guys. That was sensational. All of us coming together and just showing in a five minute highlight reel, what ACB means to all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody for this year. Um, gathering my thoughts, I now wanna move forward with how we continue to develop leaders inside this organization. And that is through the Derwood K. McDaniel Fund uh, Committee and two key programs, our ACB First Timers Program and our JP Morgan Chase Fellows. And I want to introduce today, Kenneth Simeon uh, from Beaumont, Texas, who's the chair of the DKM Fund Committee and Zelda Gephardt, uh, from Edgeley, North Dakota, who is a member of the DKM Fund Committee and is also a director on our Board of Publications. 
So Kenneth and Zelda. Thank you, Dan. I am so glad to be a part of this event. It's been pretty lively and uh, I'm looking forward to more in these next few days. The Derwood K. May Daniel Fund Committee strives to honor the legacy of Derwood K. May Daniel, also known as our founding father of ACB. I'd like to begin by thanking my committee members, which I call a team that comes together to work and accomplish all the goals that we have before us. And we have Anthony Akamine, Ted Boardman, Zelda Gebhardt, Betsy Grinovich, Amanda Stelm, Frank Ventura, and Sheila Young. Now we will have a brief overview of both of our awards today. And let's begin with Zelda Gebhardt, who will share about our ACB JP Morgan Chase Leadership Fellows Award. Zelda? Thanks, Kenneth. Um, hi, I'm Zelda, and I'm, I'm a proud member of the Derwood K. McDaniel Fund Committee. Um, I've been on the committee since 2014, and our committee has the privilege to select both the DKM first timers and the, day, the ACB JP Morgan Chase Leadership Fellows. It's, it's a fun job, guys. In other words, we are in the business of growing leaders for ACB. And I'm going to focus today um, on, on the Leadership Fellows part. Uh, this is the sixth, sixth year that the J.P. Morgan Chase has partnered with ACB uh, to encourage existing leaders to take their leadership to the next level. Uh, this is done by providing the resources for five individuals to be recognized and attend the ACB conference and convention. And hopefully um, they'll, they'll attend the convention virtually in 2021. And, and hopefully next year they'll get to come in person to Omaha at the 2022 convention. Uh, how you can apply, you, you need to apply and, and, and maybe you can join the ranks of the 30 people who have been previously selected. Many of them have been successful in increasing their level of service to ACB by serving on committees. And we even have one that serves on the ACB board. So we're very, very proud of this program. Uh, the criteria that you need to meet in order to apply is you must be 18 years of age or older, uh, be blind or visually impaired, be a dues paying member of ACB. And to apply, you submit a letter of application and have your affiliate president submit a letter of recommendation. Applications must be received um, by April 5th and they're to be sent to Kelly Gask at kgasque at acb.org. The selection process includes an interview with one of the teams from the DKM committee. And if you are an affiliate president, please encourage those in your organization who have sh some shown leadership skills and potential. I want to end with a quote from one of our leadership fellows from last year. She said, after attending the convention, I came away from the convention more informed, inspired, and feeling revived. So Kenneth, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thank you, Zelda. I am honored to say that we will be celebrating our 25th anniversary as uh, the DK, TKM First Timers Award that we give out. Uh, we will have a reception for those who are selected as we do every year. And we have a great theme uh, together in harmony that we'll be focusing on during that event. And prior to us getting to that point, we do want to encourage those who are eligible uh, to apply uh, for this award and I'm honored to say that I was a first timer in 2010 and uh, things have gotten uh, so uh, much better in my personal life as a blind or visually impaired person. Uh, since then, I've, I've uh, learned so much about ACB and become more involved in ACB as we encourage everyone who receives one of our leadership awards. 
the DCAM First Timers Award is our primary leadership award. And those who join the class of 2021 will have the opportunity to participate in the virtual conference and convention this year. And next year, we hope to be in Omaha, Nebraska, where their way, their way will be paid to join us in Nebraska. So the prerequisites are being an ACV member, at least age 18, blind or visually impaired, member in good standing, having paid 2021 membership dues, never attended an in-person conference and convention. And we ask that applicants agree to participate in the entire convention from July 16th until the 23rd. There will be designated events that we ask them to agree to partake in. And we also want to make sure that they uh, know that each applicant is expected to submit a letter of application detailing who they are, what they've done in their local community, local chapter, or affiliate. And we uh, encourage you to read the uh, article for our DKM First Timers Award uh, that tells you all the details you need to know about how to apply. And in addition to the letter of application, we ask that an, uh, an affiliate president, whether it be special interest affiliate or state affiliate president, president to submit a letter of recommendation for the applicant who is a part of their affiliate. We want to ask you to visit our website. Our web page on the ACB website is www.acb.org forward slash DKM. To reach out to us with any questions, uh, you can actually send email to me at simeon.k at att.net. And that is S-E-M-I-E-N dot K, which is the letter K at att.net. Or give us a call at 409-866-5880. Thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to receiving those applications and letters of recommendation. Stay tuned, we will be on a uh, community call coming up on Friday, March 5th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And we ask you to tune in and more of our notifications will we we'll be going out on all of our ACB list. Thank you. Have a great conference. Thank you, Kenneth. And thank you, Zelda. And thank the DKM Fund Committee for all the wonderful work they do uh, helping us develop uh, leaders of the future inside of ACB. And I just have to say, I am going to be so excited in Omaha when we have three years of DKM uh, uh, leaders that will all join us in person. So uh, I can't wait till that, till that party gets started. Thank you, Kenneth, and thank you, Zelda. Uh, next, we are going to hear from a wonderful friend and ally of the American Council of the Blind, and that is Karen Kinniger. Executive Director of the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled. Uh, Karen is from the Washington, D.C. area, and we would love to hear what's latest and greatest with the National Library Service. And uh, Karen, uh, please take it away. We're glad to have you here today. I'm I'm hearing you I'm hearing you Karen I think She's muted Let's See if we can get can her now. now we can hear you uh, Okay let me start over and say apologize for that. <laughs> uh, Okay so so uh, again it's a real pleasure to speak to at uh, ACB I'm always enjoyed um, having this opportunity and it sounds like you've had a really fantastic year in spite of all of the things that we've all been dealing with so congratulations on that on all the activities that you've been doing um, I'm going to scoot through my list fairly quickly and then we will um, circle back if anybody has any questions 
So on the legislative front, I wanted to let you know that we are in the second year of funding for the e-reader project, the Braille e-reader project. It's a five year um, funding and we're in the second year of that. So we are able to uh, deploy e-readers and to buy more. And I'll talk about it in just a second. And we're also in the second year of our BARG modernization funding. Both of these funding um, streams were granted to us, I think largely because of the support that we've gotten from, from ACB and others. So thank you so much for that. It's been a tremendous way of, of getting, moving some things forward. Um, speaking of BARD modernization, we have moved BARD into the cloud. What that basically means for users at the other end is two things. One of which is that it caused some trouble with BARD mobile and we're getting all that worked out. Um, but the other is that the download speeds should be significantly faster. And the third and primary reason that we did this was so that we could expand our um, capabilities for, for support um, so we could have more barred users at a time. And we've about tripled, I think, our capacity at this point. So that's, that's been a good thing. Um, and part of the reason for that is a regulatory change that we have just made within the last couple of weeks uh, this has been a long time coming, but what this regula regulation change will do is make it easier for people with print disabilities to sign up for NLS programs. They used to have to get a doctor's certificate saying that their print disability was due to some organic dysfunction or something. Um, that was a high bar for them, and we have, um, we have taken that away and allowed them to be certified by the same people who certify um, other people who apply. And we've added some other certifiers like um, reading specialists and school psychologists so that we can reach out to those people who could really benefit from our program. Um, I know the next question might be, what about, what about us? What about our basic you know, patron base? And the answer is that we have statutory priority to blind and visually impaired people. So. Um, hopefully we won't ever have a need to exercise it, but it's there in case of, of need. So the Braille e-readers, which has been a, a very um, major project for me and something that I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to report on, are out in five, four or five states at this time. We have, um, we're in a pilot process. They've been out since November and we are getting really good responses back from them and lots of downloading going on, lots of braille reading. I know we all value braille reading as, a, as our basis of literacy. We have a couple more states coming up um, in the next few months. Ohio and Washington will be getting the, um, the Zoomax unit when, when those are ready to deploy. The humanware unit is the one that we have out in the uh, states that, are, that it's out in right now. So, Members of, or, of libraries in those states are eligible to get them. Unfortunately, we have to roll this out slowly. So we're going state by state. So um, I know we wish we could just give everybody one at once, but we're not able to do that. So um, as I said, we're getting really good feedback um, and lots of downloading. So I think, think that part is going really well. Marrakesh, the Marrakesh Treaty that was um, finally ratified two years ago by the United States and then the NLS had to get some other regulations changed last summer in order for us to participate in Marrakesh. But all of our roadblocks have been lifted and we have begun to participate in cross-border exchanges. Um, one of the results of that is that we have swapped our collection with Canada and we will soon be adding Canadian titles to BARD. Um, so watch for those. We have been also adding some foreign language materials to BARD, and we, to BARD and we actually added a bunch of French materials at one time, which we got some significant feedback from our customers, you guys, about. Um, and we're looking into um, ways to not deluge us with a particular foreign language um, all at once. But one of the things that we're working on is a way in BARD Mobile, particularly where this issue is, is strongest, um, a way that people will be able to opt into the subjects that they're interested in or opt out of the ones that they're not interested in. That's going to be coming in in the next iteration of BARD Mobile, I think, um, the next major um, update. So watch for that. It'll be a while as things always are, but it is coming. And in the meantime, we're looking at ways to, um, to 
make these titles that are in foreign languages available without having them all coming through at once on the on uh, Bard Mobile. So um, this past year and during the COVID year, we've added something around 4,500 new titles to Bard, and that doesn't include the um, the locally produced materials that we've been regularly getting from our network libraries. So Bard is growing by leaps and bounds, and we're very, very happy about that. We think that the more opportunities we have for accessing the um, material, the better. So we're working hard to increase these numbers. And this year, our goal is 5,000 titles to add to BARD. And um, hopefully, we'll be able to reach that goal. We're well on our way. So what's coming up at NLS? Well, one of the things that we're working on is a, is a smart speaker skills, or what they're called on, on uh, Google Home, I'm not sure. But anyway, the ability to play BARD books on um, on a, your smart speaker, that's, uh, we have a contract that's working on that and a lot of the groundwork is already laid for that. So that should be coming fairly, um, hopefully within the next um, multi several months anyway. Um, also, we're doing a small field test right uh, very soon about um, with a smart smartphone um, project that we've been working on for a couple of years. The smartphone will be completely voice controlled and except for the initial login, which has to have a screen. But um, we're going to test this with about 200 patrons um, to see how, how they take to this particular approach. We are still working out what is going to be the next talking book machine. And we are, um, this is one possibility that we are looking at. Uh, we have also contracted to develop a, what we are calling a stopgap talking book machine, but basically a, a kind of an intermediate device that will um, very much look like the current talking book machine was at least in terms of the, it's a big desktop unit with big buttons and stuff, but it was, will also have um, connectivity to, to bars so that you'd be able to download directly into it. Um, th these will be made available on a fairly limited basis when they are available. Um, their primary intent is so that we don't ever run out of talking book machines, which we're not close to doing, but we're just kind of covering the bases. But we also want to see how people take to being able to download directly from BART into the talking book machine. So that will be coming in the next, probably the next year. Um, the last thing I wanted to, to mention is that I am planning to retire this spring. Um, it's been a fabulous nine years, and I've really appreciated ACB support throughout my, my tenure as director of NLS. And I particularly want to thank you for your support and as evidenced in the fabulous award that I was um, honored to receive last summer. So thank you so much. Um, the job of director of the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled is posted on USA Jobs now. It will be closing March 29th. And if you know anybody or if you are anybody who's interested in applying for that position, uh, it's a big job, but it's a fabulous job. So I would encourage you to consider it. And that is basically my report for today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. And thank you for being a friend and an ally of the American Council of the Blind. And we wanted to take just a moment here to, uh, to recognize all of your efforts. And we would like to present you, of course, virtually, it will, it will uh, be, be arriving in the, in the mail soon, but we would like to present to you an ACB Lifetime Member Award and Scholarship. So you will forever be a member of the American Council of the Blind. It's one of our highest honors and you are so deserving. And we just thank you so much for all you've done to help the blind and visually impaired community. I am deeply honored. So thank you so much. This means a great deal to me. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Thank you so much. Yay! Congratulations, Karen. Thank you so much. You're a friend and an ally and, uh, and don't be a stranger. You're retiring, but you're still a member of our blind and visually impaired community and you'll always be a member of ACB. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. All right. Have a good afternoon. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.
Well, thank you. Wow. We are going to miss Karen. She's such a wonderful person. So if anybody's interested in that job, there's a lot of wonderful qualified ACP, ACB folks out there, you know, keep, uh, uh, keep that opportunity in mind. Uh, and again, thanks to Karen. Uh, next, we'd like to hear from our ad hoc resolutions committee. Uh, that resolu the resolutions committee was chaired uh, by Ray Campbell from Glen, Allen, uh, Glen Ellen, Illinois, who is our second vice president and was the, again, chair of the ad hoc uh, resolutions committee. And Gabe Griffith, who was, is the chair of our resolutions committee and is also president of the California Council of the Blind. So Ray and Gabe, uh, please take it away. Thank you, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance haven't had a chance to uh, say hello to everyone yet, uh, but hello to everyone in ACB. Well, they only gave us ten minutes, so uh, as Tony Stevens would say, I think it's be direct, be brief, and be gone. So, um, <laughs> hope I had that right. So, Gabe's going to handle most. Be, be of this. brief, uh, actually, is officially it, right? Okay, be brief, I, be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. And be, there got it. it, got it. Okay, <laughs> I wanted to. Um, okay, well, I. I, I See, I left the brilliance out. I, that was not an oversight. Um, uh, by, anyway, um, so Gabe is going to handle. But we could definitely a lot try of, to be brief and be gone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, Gabe's going to handle a lot of this, but I just wanted to uh, say that we had a terrific team. Uh, if I start naming people, I'll forget someone. But um, I, I think that one of the great things about working with this uh, ad hoc team, uh, which came out of you, the members, asking us to say, hey, take a look at this resolutions process. Our goal from the start was we want to make the resolutions process as easy and as transparent and as uh, because the resolutions are really what we the, and you, the, all the members, are saying that ACB needs to do or needs to say or whatever. And so we wanted to have that as part of that. And I think that everybody who served on the committee would agree that we had very good, thoughtful discussions. We didn't always agree with each other, but we went through that and, uh, and everyone got a chance to participate and be heard. And I think that was something that we really wanted to do. So we've come up with, I think, a, a good process that's going to um, uh, enhance the resolutions uh, uh, for ACB going forward. Um, you, you've seen a report in your conference handouts uh, of the work that we did that was endorsed by the board of directors in November. And so um, it gives me great pleasure then to turn it over to Gabe Griffith, the chair of the resolutions committee to kind of take us through what we're going to be, what we're going to be resolving to do going forward. So Gabe, go right ahead, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. And I do have some points I'm going to cover. And uh, Ray, if there's anything that I miss, please let me know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of talk about the process of what we're looking at for this year and then what we're going to look at in the future of uh, when we're able to go back into person. So for this year, what we're going to do is we're going to ask, well, first of all, uh, I guess for future, we're, we're, hoping to have a uh, constitution bylaws amendment that would revise when resolutions are due. But for this year, what we're going to do is we're going to ask that resolutions be submitted 45 days before the convention, which would be roughly June 1st. Um, that's not going to be a, a requirement. So the, the final deadline is probably going to be sometime during convention um, last year, we had it on the, the last day of convention, so we'll probably, I'm guessing, do something like that again this year. What we will then do is once we have the resolutions all submitted, we will have the committee kind of do some working on them uh, behind the scenes, uh, working with the uh, submitters of the resolutions. And then much like last year, we're gonna have some community calls on those to do the final editing so that people can all participate. As people have probably heard, if you listened to the board meeting yesterday or there was a community call last night and uh, my understanding is gonna be that it's gonna be widely disseminated and discussed and more. But this year, ACB is gonna have a, a uh, virtual voting process, but that's only going to be for elections. 
And so as we did last year, the uh, resolutions that, uh, that are passed through the committee are going to be submitted to the ACB board for their final decision and adoption and action. In the future, uh, we, we uh, think that having resolutions submitted ahead of convention are going to have a number of benefits. Some of those are for the committee members themselves. Uh, the committee resolutions committee at convention typically meets, as many have probably heard, late at night. I think eight o'clock at night is usually the earliest that we start meeting. And those meetings often go midnight, 1, 2 a.m., sometimes even, even later into the morning than that. And so if the committee isn't having to meet late at night, it's going to give more ability to be awake and actually participate in convention, uh, especially being awake for the general sessions in the morning and aware for that. Um, if we have the process done mostly over community calls, then judging from last year, we will be able to have more members actually show up to the meetings and participate um, in my experience, usually on those in-person meetings, it's maybe a handful of folks in the room that, uh, that are not committee members, um, usually only those folks that are really interested in a specific resolution. And last year on the community calls, we had great participation. We had, I don't even remember, maybe 20 people at least on a call. So that was really encouraging. And we, we hope to be able to learn from that and utilize that going future going forward. Also, if resolutions are done ahead of time, then we won't have to, hopefully we'll be able to, to do one or two a day throughout the, the convention and therefore won't end up with the final day being an eight or nine hour day of listening to resolutions being read. Uh, and along with that, we plan to be able to have hard copies of the resolutions. You know, sometimes we have resolutions that have 15, 18, 25 clauses to them and are very technical in nature. And so uh, we're hoping to be able to have hard copies so that folks can get them and be able to, to read them and study them ahead of time. Um, also, we're going to be... Uh, you know, I, I don't know how widely this is, is known, but after the convention and after resolutions are adopted, members of the resolutions committee of the, of the staff and of the ACB board get together and figure out a prioritization of the resolutions. And so what we want to do is be able to um, figure out more, a better criteria for those resolutions so that you know, if it's writing a letter or uh, working on legislation that the ACB staff has a, a better direction of how that can go. Um, and then finally, what I want to do is just give out my information, um, especially since it's, as uh, Dan had said, I'm the, also the president of California Council of the Blind. So my information is on our website anyway, so I'm not giving away any secrets here. You can reach me by email at Gabe.Griffith, that's G-A-B-E dot G-R-I-F-F-I-T-H at C-C-B-N-E-T dot org. Or you can also reach me at 925-222-5762 uh, in case you have any questions about this process or a question about uh, submitting a resolution. The, the committee, if you have an idea, the committee is always happy to help uh, craft that into a resolution and get it submitted. So please, if you have any questions, reach out again, gabe.griffith at ccbnet.org or 925-222-5762. Yep. Thank you. Ray, do you have anything to add to all of that? I'll just real quick uh, talk about this mention that the committee is there and very helpful in writing resolutions. Not to put her on the spot, but last year, Regina Brink had an idea for a resolution. She was very passionate about it, but she's never written a resolution before. Went to the committee, the committee helped her, and it 
was one of the ones that we adopted. So uh, that was uh, the, the other thing. The other thing I just say, the new process as we move forward with it is going to be widely communicated. So you will know uh, when that, uh, those deadlines are and, um, and all of that. That's all I have. Yeah. All right. And and Thank and with that, if any deadlines change, it won't be until probably at least 2023 because we're going to have to have an in-person meeting to be able to adopt a new any any uh, bylaws amendments. So. Yep. And Dan, Dan, thank you for uh, the chance to serve on that ad hoc committee. Um, having been involved in resolutions for many years, I know I had some thoughts on it. And this whole thing is, as Ray said, came out of a resolution that was submitted uh, a couple of years ago now. So um, thank you for the chance to serve both on the resolutions committee and on this task force. It was a great experience. Well, thank you, Gabe. And thank you, Ray. And I loved what you all said at the end about communications. And uh, next up is our community group. And I know I can hear uh, Cindy Hollis's wheels turning already. So don't forget those community <laughs> events. And they're a great way to talk about resolutions and get the word out. So we'll look forward to those. And uh, that'll give people an opportunity to ask questions. So Thank well, you, Ray Cindy knows. You, Ray. Cindy knows. I know nothing about community events. So, no, not, you know. not a bit. All right. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Ray, and thanks, Gabe, and have a, have a rex, uh, great rest of the DC Leadership Conference. Thanks so much. You too. Thanks. All right. Next, I uh, want to have the opportunity to introduce a wonderful panel to discuss uh, the community. And so, first, we have Cindy Hollis our Membership Services Coordinator from Flat Rock, Michigan, and then Kaylee Al Allen from Mesa, Arizona, Leslie Spoon from Orlando, Florida, uh, Tyson Ernst from Springfield, Illinois, and Linda Yax uh, from Harris, Arkansas. So Cindy, take it away. We look forward to learning more about the community. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. And we will get to that panel in just a minute. I kind of wanted to start off by giving a real quick overview of the changes that have occurred in the community that didn't even exist a year ago. <laughs> so it's, it's just really overwhelming to think about. It wasn't even a thought. We had not planned this program. It has become, I dare say, one of the largest programs that ACB is uh, conducting at this time. And a year ago, I had announced that we were going to start the Hump Day Happy Hour for Presidents, and uh, that did start on March 11th. It was just a few days later that we were told we'd be working from home indefinitely and everything started closing and my membership services wheels started spinning going, oh my gosh, people can't get together. How can you stay connected? <laughs> so I created what I am referring to our first community event, which was on March 17th, and it was posted just on leadership and asking leaders to come together and let's talk about ways that we could stay connected. And we did two such calls that week. Uh, the next week, I planned to do a couple of just social events myself. I called them coffee socials. Those were on Tuesday and Thursday. I started them at 1 p.m., but eventually, it wasn't very long after, we moved them up to 11 a.m., and I still do them, and they have evolved as well into something different. But it was that Friday, that first Friday, Dan, you and I talked, and you said, what about reaching out and seeing if anybody else, you know, has a calls that they would be willing to open up to anybody, and and the rest is history. I did that. I got a few emails from affiliates who were willing to do uh, that and put together a, a sort of calendar, sent that out. In those first two weeks, we had 11 calls. So that first real week, it was probably about nine calls that we opened up to everybody. 
nine today would be like a bad day. <laughs> I mean, you know, this in a week, we typically have anywhere from 10 to 19 calls in one day. In our, in our first full month, we had, I believe, 68 events or calls. Uh, I don't even remember when we last had 68 calls in a week. Uh, this past week, we had 93. Uh, we have, I think, 77 this week. And that's with the DC Leadership Conference going on for three days. And some people that normally would hold an event have suspended for just this week. So you could see that there has been great growth and a lot of people have been around since the beginning, but many continue to join us. And why? It's because they're invited. It's because people are sharing it on email lists, not just our affiliate email lists, but they're sharing among guide dog lists and other organization lists. And we have a uh, Voc rehab counselors and TVIs sharing it with their students or clients. And uh, so the word is getting out. And I like to think of the community as ACB and our doors are open and anybody can come in. So it's, we don't ask for ID at the door. When we have an event on the schedule, anyone is welcome. Anyone, and that means anyone, whether they're a member or not. It means regardless of age, uh, we welcome everyone. Consequently, our youngest participant so far that we know of is 12 years old. And we know we have several people that are of our senior population and everything in between. And People of all ages have stepped up to help with whether it's putting together an event or hosting. We are blind people really working this community and doing for each other, which I feel like has made this so not only organic in the growth, but authentic in what we do. And so some of the changes that have occurred, well, we, of course, over the course of the first few months, we added a community stream to ACB Radio. Thank you. Thank you, ACB Radio and their support. They started streaming for us some of our events. And next thing you knew, we had a community channel. And it is uh, turned into, of course, podcasts. About a third of our events are streamed and podcasted. And uh, we are so grateful for that. And the hundreds of people that count on those podcasts and listening to the, the recordings that continue to play on the community channel, whether we have something live going on or not, are, are appreciative as well. And of course, people can access our calls through Zoom, including on their regular phone. And they can also listen to ACB radio on their landline as well, which is really an important piece because we want this to be accessed by everyone. So we have pre-recorded information about all of our calls and you can listen to that via phone by calling 800-424-8666 and following the prompts there is a listing for every day. In the beginning, it was attempted to put all of that information in one mailbox. Well, we quickly moved to three and then five, and now we have a mailbox for every day because we just have so many calls. We formed a community uh, Facebook group, very active, positive, uplifting, supportive environment. I, I'm so proud of what is offered there because it really is a place for people to go and get questions answered and share information and 
just really be a continuance of the community that of these events that we do. We have, of course, the blog that has been mentioned in the past. And uh, the Voices blog is, is another way for us to share what's going on in the community. So there's probably something else I'm missing, but I really want to focus on what kinds of calls or events you'll find in our community. And they have evolved. And in the beginning, they were mostly social. And social is still probably close to a third of the calls. So social calls are still very, very popular. But we have calls that are technology related. Uh, we, we call these personal development, so they can be learning the guitar or learning a craft. Uh, oh my goodness, peer support, lots of peer support being offered. Our first peer support call was our widows and widowers call, and it has grown from there. Uh, and then we have, let's see, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Health and wellness. One of our first calls was a yoga call. We're going to hear about that. Uh, but that has expanded substantially and significant participation from our uh, attendees in those calls, regulars. And we have something currently six days a week in that realm. And then many of the calls are topic driven and which really encompasses anything that I didn't mention already. So a topic driven call could be something as serious as talking about resolutions or voting at convention uh, or voting in general uh, when, you know, we had a lot of calls on voting uh, for the elections it, last fall. They can also be uh, lighthearted, like talking about old time radio or radio in general, music, book chats. Uh, we have several of those popping up. So you, I don't think we can have enough of them. And so that gives you some idea. And then of course, fun. We have a lot of fun calls. Uh, we can always use more, but uh, we do game night. We, we have opportunities for people to share their talents and sing and have fun and it's just become quite a, a place to build community and community means that it's not just somebody talking at people there is participation it allows for people to take part in it and really be a part of the community and we see it all the time where you know you ask for help people reach out and offer it and uh, because of that I, I posted something not long ago about if anybody has filed their own taxes using assistive technology and has been successful please let me know I have a panel of three already I'm putting together that uh, we should be able to provide some real-time uh, help to people. And these three individuals that reach out to me all use different programs, which is really cool. Uh, if you are somebody who's low vision and has filed your taxes successfully using magnification programs, I'd love to hear from you. Community at acb.org. All right. But now I want to get into the panel because I selected four people that have played really pivotal roles in building our community. Uh, this is a, a sampling of really who we have taking part in our community and actively keeping us moving forward. So uh, Leslie Spoon, Kayla Allen, Tyson Ernst, and Linda Yaks. If you could all unmute, I'm going to ask you each different questions and um, well some of it will be the same question but I'll just call on you and uh, so let's start with you Leslie uh, of course people know you you're you're <laughs> married to our president so hello Cindy yeah. hey Les um, 
I but am I, married to the president. Yes. You are, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, but, it's funny because somebody asked me on one of my calls just real briefly. They said, do you happen to know Dan Spoon? <laughs> <laughs> now, see, it's because we have so many new people in the community. Not everybody knows everything about ACB, right? Right. It was so funny. And I said, um, yes, I do. I happen to know him very well. <laughs> he is my husband. <laughs> and so, Leslie, they how laughed, long have so. you been a member of ACB? I have been a member of ACB. Well, well, to take it back a little bit further, I was, I've been a member of the Florida Council of the Blind for 20 years, um, over 20 years. I, be, I moved to Orlando in 1997 from Las Vegas, Nevada, when Dan and I met and got married. You don't want to know that story, but... Sure we do, <laughs> but a different time. A different, different time. time. <laughs> so um, FCB, I've been involved with the Florida Council of the Blind and my local chapter, the Greater Orlando Council of the Blind, it was known as Mid Florida Council of the Blind when I joined it, and I was president of that chapter in 2000. So um, the blindness world is not new to me. Um, you know, I do have retinitis pigmentosa. So I was involved in my local chapter when I married Dan and moved to Orlando because that's what he did, you know. So I was like, well, that's what we're going to do as a couple. So um, became president in 2000. I am now a fundraising chair. I've been that for many, many moons. Sheila Young, near and dear friend of mine, she's the president of our local chapter and president of the state affiliate, which is great. So, um, so I've been involved with that, um, you know, over, over many years. And I remember meeting you at a national convention. Yeah, so I was going to get to that. So real quickly, so 2009, here it comes. I had, well, to back up a little bit more, I, I owned my own women's gym for five years. So we had to kind of back out for a little bit, Dan and I because that was my dream. And Dan gave me my dream. Um, what a wonderful husband I have. I said to him, I want to have my own gym. And he said, well, we'll do it, you know, but we can't be involved in the council for these many for five years. And I said, okay. So we did that because that took 80 hours of my life. So um, I understand. Yeah. So that's our work life balance, you know, that we all talk about. So it comes and goes. So 2009, you know, the economy got bad. Dan says, we're going to have to close the gym. And I said, no, really? We're going to have to close my life? What are we going to do? And he says, we're going to get back involved in the council. So we got lucky. The council came to us. The American Council of the Blind came to us. And um, right, my sister came. That's past Anita. She came, you know, I was very close to my sister. And she came. And she was also visually impaired. And um, for people that did know her. She was this big, wonderful, booming personality and just loved everybody and loved FCB and ACB and was very I'm going to ask you to speed up, Leslie. Oh, sorry. I was involved in Nevada. I'm sorry. I talk like Dan. I've gotten to (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So ACB came to us in 2009 and we went. And so then behold, I met this wonderful person named Cindy Hollis and Brenda and Dan Dillon and got involved. And ever since then, it's just been, you know, a wonderful marriage. My memory is you guys selling, I think you got to selling Braille raffle, Braille form raffle tickets, like almost. Show your love for ACP, Braille Braille form raffle tickets. I remember. Still still in my brain. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to move over to Tyson. Tyson, how did, how did, or how long have you been a member of uh, ACB? I've been a member of ACB since uh, 2017 when I moved to Illinois and uh, just by chance happened to run into the ICB president uh, looking for a job. And uh, she invited me out the next weekend to their state affiliate uh, convention. And my partner at the time went and never looked back. And you are now an affiliate uh, acting president, right? Currently, yes. Yep. I am the acting president for the Veterans Affiliate, Visually Impaired Veterans of America. All right. And Linda, how about you? I joined um, ACB in 1994. Um, My children were grown by then and I had the time to devote to it. It's pretty much been my volunteer go-to since. I've held many, many offices. And uh, I, I just want to say that this community has just saved my sanity through this pandemic. And how about you, Kayla? Um, I am new. I just became a member in July um, because I felt so accepted not being a member. It made me want to become a member. 
Oh, good. I'm not the baby here. <laughs> no, no, I am. <laughs> no, Kayla's the baby. All right. So, Kayla, we're going to stay with you um, because I, I, I want people to get an idea of what really happened and what brought you to ACB. So, you joined, you're one of the, I think, later stories of actually facilitating a call. So tell us about what brought you to the community calls. Um, I ha- My friend Melanie um, just was talking about the coffee socials and stuff like that. And so she sent me an invitation to come. Um, and that was late April. And then in June, or in May sometime, we decided we were going to start a craft group. And our idea was to meet for an hour, two Sundays a month, and um, just facilitate and talk about craft. Um, okay. So that first meeting was June 7th. Yes. So that's and my, I, that was and, my first hosting. <laughs> and, and then eventually, <clears throat> you, you were there to support Melanie, and eventually now it's become your baby pretty quickly it yeah, did right yeah 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 so, it was too much for her she's like I can't handle this is too I, much. and we're going to talk <laughs> about the too much because you're the one we're going to talk about all the changes that have happened with those craft calls they've been amazing but I want people to be hearing that Kayla came because somebody invited her to come to the community and because of that she became a, she went to convention she became a member and she is i uh, she is leading the crafting kingdom and we will we will come to that here in a in a little bit more about what all the changes that have occurred just in that area of community calls so i'm going to go back over to linda linda what was the first call you started why did you decide to um uh, start facilitating a call and and how long you know when did you start coming to the community calls so however you want to bridge those together I think I was on one of the very first coffee socials that you did um, I don't remember how I heard about it probably through something email mm-hmm. related uh, I terribly missed being able to go to church I wasn't getting fed spiritually and felt that was probably happening throughout the community. So my friend Vicki Ireland and I started, let's just talk about Jesus. Back in, um, I think we had a meeting or two before the convention, and then we took off that week or so and came back. So that was my first call. I have a husband who is in a nursing home, and I had done hands-on caregiver support for him and felt like there was probably a lot of folks out there who were missing their loved ones because they were in long care or who were doing hands-on caregiving support. So I started the um, caregiver support group. And to be honest with you, I don't remember when we started that. And then just recently, there was a lot of discussion about finances and wanting to have a call on that. So we've had, I think, three, let's just talk finance calls now. And so that's what I've been doing. And I love it. And then Linda is also a host and has been hosting for quite a while now and uh, uh, hosts webinar calls as well. So and and has started volunteering, helping me with categorizing all of our calls, which is really important so that we can show statistics about what we're doing. So thank you, Linda, for your service. Uh, Tyson, why don't you tell us a little bit? What brought you to a community call and about what was your first facilitating of calls? Because you did, you're our first series. I, I was. <laughs> um, so getting, getting into the calls in the first place was something showed up on one of my email lists of forward saying, hey, here's this thing to do. And, and uh, I wasn't doing, I, I really had no connection with people at the time because of the pandemic shutdown. And uh, our local chapter had stopped seeing each other because of that. Uh, we had our, it was like a couple of days in, in March that we had it and we were joking about getting together like the next week to, to talk, to, to get, uh, to have some beers over like St. Patty's day or something. So that came out um, and I joined, yeah, like I think I joined your first one. 
Um, and uh, as far as as far as me starting up a series, I'm blaming that completely upon you. Well, hey. <laughs> So you you were talking during one of those social. What did I do? <laughs> you, you came out during a social and you said, if anyone wants to host a call about anything, if you have a topic you're good at, if you have oh, a skill you're good I at, I probably did like do that. that. Yeah. And send me an email and and let's talk about it and let's do it. So I thought about it for a weekend and I wrote up this whole proposal about you well did. I'm going to do this and I taught for this year. <laughs> stuff like that. And I'd love to do this about the Victor Reader stream, da, 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 da. And, um, and I shot it off and I got a response back in about 10 minutes. It said sold. It's the funny thing is, is I think you were trying to sell me and you didn't need to sell me. You just need to say, yes, I'd like to do this. And I was like, well, yeah, I, okay. I wanted to show you that I was qualified to do it. <laughs> so, so yeah, just a one word response sold. Uh, and that started, uh, so I, I started the first one talking about what the Victor was and how to, how to look at it and operate it. And that ended up becoming a six part series before we literally like went through the entire thing. Uh, and I'm going to be doing an, uh, I just got asked by bits to do an updated um, kind of a talk about it uh, because there's some new things that just came out in the last couple months. Wonderful. So that led to um, that led to uh, some stuff with Rachel Schroeder from Illinois, where we talked about some, some PC computer stuff and that's been on hold for quite a long time but the but the other big thing it led to was um the magic mac show which came out of a, a seeing a need where we were talking about iphones and ipads with matt balbrecht and andrea de was doing her basic class and uh diane was doing her iphone facebook class and there was all these things about phones and and pcs and all this stuff and there was nothing for mac computing so i i i talked to Jason Castingway into being my partner in crime with that so that when I you know messed up something he could call me out on it and uh, that evolved to to bring in Katie Fredericks which is you know a fabulous decision for that show and since the since that the three of us I love doing that call that's like just being amongst two friends and Debbie's been hosting it Debbie Hazelton so yeah it's just been phenomenal so you know one of the things that I think back about the victor uh, calls and those it was it ended up being six it was the first one that we did on a on a regular basis weekly um, Wednesday nights and people looked forward to it so it was the it, it was kind of that first call that specialized technology level call and that was also podcasted streamed podcasted i still and, get i still get yeah i still get emails from people that are saying thank you so much i look back at that all the time and i listen back to it so really it, it kind of changed some of the direction and really told us that these calls weren't going to just be social uh the the social element as i mentioned is still very much there but i think that that was the call that really said uh you know there's there's some needs for people to to learn we have this opportunity this platform to share with our members and friends about blindness related topics and really you know share some some knowledge educate um, and just provide this service and it definitely has exploded it's not it it's it's not just any one given topic and so anyway thank you Tyson for stepping up and I I'm guilty as charged I did say that I know I did <laughs> and there's no doubt um, and but I've also I'm going to tell you I've said sold probably to many people who have asked if they could do something maybe not use the word sold but you know um, I've I've had many people reach out to me and say, can we do this? And is there a time that this would work? And, you know, what, what would be the best time? Well, you know, if, if somebody wants to do something and it is family friendly and uh, you know, I'm, I'm game for us to give it a try because you never know. We are a big community with varying interests, right? Including some of us who want to stay healthy and well and, and so uh, before the get up, get moving campaign <laughs> even gets starting, uh, we Should had, we get up? Should we, we get up and get moving? <laughs> <laughs> we had Leslie. And Leslie, how did you get started with your first yoga call? And, uh, and yeah, what brought you to participate in the community and 
get going with that. Well, you know, I love to get going, Cindy. So, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, even as we were ending yesterday, I told Dan, I got to get on the elliptical. I've sat too long. So um, you actually, we actually spoke the end of yeah. March. Um, I know you and Dan and Eric had this, this wonderful collaboration, as we all say, and created the community events. And I talked to you and I said, you know, I would love to do a yoga class and I think at the end of March and last year, you said, let's do it. You kind of like Tyson sold. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful thing for me. Um, you know, I can't, I can't say enough to you for, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I love to teach and, and teach people my trade because, you know, getting up and getting moving is hard for the blind and visually community. And uh, it's just been a really, really eye opener to me to teach blind and visually impaired folks, because I got to be honest, I teach to sighted people. I've taught to sighted people for the last 25 years. So this is a new eye opener for me. I've had maybe had one or two blind people that came to my gym um, that you guys would know that are in our community. And so, you know, I talked to them, but this has been really great for me because now I'll talk to my sighted friends because, you know, they still come over and we still walk and we still do aqua and walk on the treadmill and I'll say, Hey, what do y'all think about the clock? You know, do you think this, this makes sense to you or something like that? I'm like, close your eyes and let me know if this makes sense to you. So it's been a really, really ex good experience for me thinking out so, of the box. So Leslie, you started with one call. It was on Wednesdays, I believe. Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was Wednesdays. on Monday or Wednesday. I can't remember. Okay, it's one of those so, days. One of those days. Um, and it was soon thereafter, the next thing you know, you were doing two yoga classes, right? Monday and right. Wednesday. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's evolved. So tell everyone, what are the calls you are doing now? So Monday is easy chair yoga, which were very easy. And then Wednesday is more advanced. We're on the floor yoga. So we call it full flexibility yoga. And those are both at 4 p.m. Eastern. Tuesday and Thursday is resistance um, 101, and you can have bands, you can have soup cans, you can have weights. That's um, seated or standing, and that's the resistance. So I'm teaching them all about their muscles and their body. I'm teaching them how, you know, what their muscles mean. What, what is your gastrocnemius soleus, which is your calf? What is your anterior tibialis, which is your shin? You know, so they're getting, they're getting the body. They're learning you speak the body. very well. Thank you. <laughs> Can you, you know, spell those words? No. Uh, I could, but you don't want me to. Uh, so that, uh, those are on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3.30 p.m. And then, we, you know, yeah. New Year's comes and we all say, what are New Year's resolutions? I want to lose weight. I want to I want to work out. But I really don't like yoga and I really don't want resistance. I really want some cardio. So. We have added a happy hour cardio on Fridays at 3.30. This is so much fun, guys. I tell you, you don't even have to have any equipment. I'm telling people how to dance around. It's just a half hour cardio, and then we do balance and abs, which is, you know, your stomach, but you don't say stomach anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. That's yes. good. <laughs> don't say stomach. It's either your core or your abs. So, okay. so it's evolved. And you know, the great thing, Cindy, and I know I'm trying to be quick. The great thing is anybody can come to these. You don't have to come to yoga or you don't have to come to resistance. Come to happy hour cardio. You don't want to do cardio, come to yoga. So there's something for everybody. So get up and get going. There you go. All right. Thank you, Leslie. And I want now Kayla to share. Remember, you guys, she's the one that came the late the last one to enter the community and joined our organization after she was already fully en engulfed <laughs> in, in community activities through the craft activities. So tell us now today, uh, and you can, you can certainly share the, um, progression if you'd like but tell us where you are today Kayla with these craft activities well specifically today um, <laughs> my partner in crime Courtney is hosting our 75th event right now since June 
right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So um, that's pretty, when I counted that up this week, just to see where we were at, I was pretty impressed. I didn't That realize, is amazing. You know. so, it, also um, tells, it also tells us that uh, that is not doing something just twice a month. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, whether you're good at math or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, we've, we've slowly evolved. Um, like I said, we started with just doing chats and people that was available to them already was just doing a craft chat. Um, Hadley already did that, um, which they do a great job, but they wanted more. They wanted hands on. They wanted to learn the skills and get their hands messy. And so I, my first class that I taught was, um, we took a glass jar and we decorated it and told each other about it. And then the next one was origami. Um, because it happens so quickly, I wanted to do things that they already had the materials to do in their home. So that's kind of where it started. Um, now we have um, a variety of people from the community helping teach classes. Um, some of them provide kits and mail them out and do all the payment and I don't do anything to do, you know, they take care of it all. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, so people are able to get kits for a craft that they've never done before. And the nice thing about that is you get what you need for that project and you don't have to go buy a whole bunch of materials and then decide, um, you know, this really isn't for me. I don't want, you know, and have a whole bunch of materials to um, store, get rid of, or, or even try to have to get to the store. So that's been really cool. Um, so we had two events in June and March. I have 16 events uh, scheduled right now. So we should do this. Repeat that. How many? 16 for March right now. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so, and a lot yeah. of them are two hours, right? Yeah. So that's really been great. Like Cindy, I've come to Cindy. I'm like, how, how can I get, can I do 90 minutes? She's like, sure. I'm like, cause this isn't enough time. Can we do two hours? She's like, sure. Like pretty much anything I've asked for, I've not been told no. Maybe there's been a suggestion of doing it better or different, but Cindy's never said, no, we can't do that. And that's been amazing for someone like me who is creative to not be told no, because when you're told no, then you're kind of shut down. <laughs> so um, that alone has been amazing, just knowing that I have support in what I'm doing. And um, yeah, so, and Courtney helps a lot. Like I couldn't do this without Courtney. To be and so. you, you guys have several correspondent ways you communicate with each other as well. You have how many email lists do you guys have? Um, we have a main list that is just general crafts, where I send out like a weekly email that will have like all your craft supplies needed. It's like for. a little mini newsletter, you guys. It's amazing. Anyway, and I tried it. So I have classes on there. Um, next week we'll have classes and supplies through May are somewhat into May. So I have all that already booked through May right now. Um, so I will start booking June for people. So that's really exciting for me that the community is just amazing. Everyone is stepping up and wanting to help and be part of it. And that is really cool for me. Um, we have a, we have craft specific groups. So we have an ongoing crochet class that meets twice a month. Um, and so we have a Google group that ju is just for that. The same for loom knitting and needle knitting. Um, so we have Google groups separate for that. Um, we are starting a buy, sell, trade group. So if you have extra craft supplies and stuff like that, you'll have a platform where you can um, either sell or trade them with someone else. So um, to help dash bust, bust out, you know, I don't need 90 things of yarn, or maybe I do. <laughs> but those don't have as, as of an understanding husband as I do. <laughs> no. Um, so we're, we're doing that. Um, we just started a craft group, this last, like a chat group. That was one thing people really wanted is just a place for them to come and sit and do whatever craft they're working on and just chat. And so um, we have 
um, people I had, there was a girl there from Finland, Canada, and then all over the United States. So it's really cool that we're reaching more than here. I mean, I, before this, I worked on a local level and I was reaching a school where I went in and I taught art classes. Um, so this is really cool to know that it's not just my local um, area that I'm actually reaching. I'm reaching globally almost, um, you know, so we've had Australia and that's really cool to me. And you guys have a Facebook group so as well. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, so, so we have a Facebook group and then the listserv. And um, if anyone is interested, um, they can contact me at acbcrafters at gmail.com and I can get you info to be part of any of that. All right. So this is what the, the potential is out there for whatever it is that you think, if you think we need it, maybe we do. We probably do, actually. Okay. Uh, if you wish it to be, there's others that wish it to be too. And so I didn't even get to talk about all the partnerships that we've had. We've had Matt Volbrecht who came to us through gaming labs that we did. And he has been doing calls since the beginning of May uh, around at Apple products. He's a certified Apple teacher and has been so generous with his time bringing his team on board every Friday at three. Vespero has been coming on um, Thursdays. They are now at three o'clock. Every Thursday since October is when they started and hoping to bring more regular content like that. Uh, the, those partnerships just so important. And um, but what I was going to say is, if you have an idea, uh, I don't want you to just give me ideas. I need you to help actually map it out. I can't look for the people to facilitate calls. I get, I get a lot of ideas thrown at me. I, I really just don't have that kind of time. There are so many people out here, though, that are willing to share their, their time, their talent uh, with the community. And so you know, share it on an, an email list you're on or on the Facebook group, community Facebook group. If there's a topic and you'd love to see somebody lead it, uh, I mean, there's ways for us to reach out and bring more people into the community fold. So I, I, I will end by just saying that, you know, they say that it takes a village. We know it takes a community and it's each of you, these four that are here, and it's each of you out there that have come to one of our events. And whether you've come to one or you come to several a day, we're glad and we have new people coming on all of the time. And I hope that this is encouraging. If, if you are an affiliate leader or chapter leader and the wheels are spinning, gosh, I wonder if we could do that here for us. Yes, you can. Reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk you through it, help you out in any way I can. Uh, if you have ideas, if you want to do an event, I can be reached at community at acb.org. Uh, this community we know shows no sign of slowing down. Grateful that uh, we just received a grant and a job posting will be going up in the next uh, couple of weeks to support this community uh, and me with it. And I appreciate that. So uh, Dan, thank you so much for this opportunity. And thank you, Tyson, Linda, Leslie, and Kayla for uh, being with me today. All right. And I thank pleasure. you, Cindy. This is Tony, everybody. Oh, hey, Tony. I'm Tony Stevens with the American Council of the Blind. We're going to jump in real quick to a leadership live as we get folks set up for the next panels. Um, with here with my my fearless co-host Debbie Hazelton. Hello. There we are again. Uh, we're going to try to catch up on some time here so we can get caught up. I need to actually run and be on another. If only I could multitask myself and, and duplicate myself. Tony and Debbie, oh, this Trent is, Dan, is coming I'm to back. say hello. Hey, so, Dan. Hey, so. Um, as we're getting started with this leadership minute, I just want to again thank our, our presidential scholar, J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, we had a chance to hear from two of our other, not our, our sponsor, 
We had a chance to hear from two other sponsors earlier with Matt with Vespero and Jennifer with Vanda. Thanks so much. But thanks as well to JP Morgan Chase, who have been a huge supporter of ACB. And they're at a, at a wonderful presidential level of their sponsorship this year. So we're very thankful for our ongoing continued relationship with JP Morgan. So in that being said, uh, we just got a couple minutes here to let folks remind them that they can hop on the other meetings now. The rooms are open uh, in room B. You can stay in room A here for the continuation conversation. Uh, on sort of uh, young uh, under 45 members that have joined, uh, sort of the next generation, if you will, of ACB. In room B, I'll be jumping on there in a couple minutes, so maybe you can get ahead of me in line. Uh, that'll be with Bill Reeder, a fundraising talk we're going to be having in a couple of minutes. And then in room C, we're going to be learning about audio description. So check your emails for those links uh, that were sent out to everybody that's been registered, and you can hop in those. Again, we've got the membership with young members coming up here on this channel and on ACB Mainstream. We have in room B or also on ACB radio live events. You can listen in on Alexa as well. That live events channel for ACB radio and on room B with your links for the registered members, we're going to have fundraising. And again, in room C, we're going to be having the audio description project, which is going to be on ACB radio special events. So I can now breathe. Oh yeah. Pretty exciting fundraising though. As well. Thanks to everybody that's given to ACB radio. So. Yeah, exciting stuff. Definitely. We've had some so, great presentations. We have. It's great been, it's been excellent. From, so exciting to hear from the community. Yeah, and Karen Kenninger. Oh, my heavens, that woman has done so much for NLS and, and particularly for Braille and getting that e-reader going, getting uh, funding behind that. I'm so excited when that comes out. And thanks to Gabe as well for the resolutions committee yes, and the wonderful work that absolutely. they're doing and, and Kenneth with the DKM. Uh, mm -hmm. So for the leaders, uh, you know, that, that we're able to, to have supported through Kenneth and for others. So it's been great so far. And I hear president spoon on the line again, he's back in the, in the, uh, the William Shatner of our organization since we're <laughs> flying the enterprise. Uh, so well, welcome back, Dan. Well, thank you, Tony and Debbie. And wasn't Will Butler really uh, great? I was so insightful. He was and, great, and yeah. seeing, Boy, this is, well, we're, we're, we're touching, right? We're touching on the edges of this with, with, com with our different communications channels and outreach and, and talking about the, in the earlier ses session, the kind of transformation of ACB radio mm -hmm. and, and then what we're seeing with the community events. And it, it continues to resonate with me. It's that, it's that live, it's that participation. I loved when he said being vulnerable and really kind of being honest and, and, and mm -hmm. it's, it's not that polished uh, performance anymore. It's the reality. It's the, it's the genuineness of it all that really connects. I so. think that's part of what community is, you know, it's not like we're really on stage. We're just, you know, we're, you're with us in this, you know, it's like we're in living rooms at times. We're yeah. just everywhere. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So I think we got time for a mini mall minute. I'm going to use that as an excuse for me to hop on my other meeting to run down the hall right. and jump in front of another camera. But I'm going to turn this video off and throw it to you, Debbie. And sure. Uh, and then I think is Patty on as well. Are you with yes. us again, Patty? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, well, let's get that I'm mini here. mall minute, and folks can get in their rooms and uh, stretch <laughs> their legs for a minute. And I'll I'll see you again in an hour, Debbie. Very good. Enjoy awesome. room room B on uh, ACB Radio Live, right? With uh, Bill mm -hmm. Reader. That'll be a great, great yeah. conversation. B and C and, uh, and right here in A, we have things happening. So, Patty, sure, go ahead with the mini mall minute. I'm going to show you one of the newest items that we have. It's only a $4 item. It is a little pouch. And it has ACB written on the flap of the pouch. It has a microfiber cloth that is five and three quarters by five and three quarters in it. You can clean your phone with it, especially after you've eaten, before you get back on your next ACB Zoom call. <laughs> so everybody can see you clearly. These are $4. Our number again is 877-630-7190 or 877 um, 969 mall which is 9696255 give us a call thank you that's excellent okay is our presenter ready for this 
first uh, session here. Debbie, I'd be happy to, to introduce them. Okay. First, I just want to, for those that are traveling over to room C, which is on ACB radio special event, that's going to be all about audio description with uh, Kim Charlson from Watertown, Massachusetts, Carl Richardson from Brighton, Massachusetts, which are going to, uh, to talk a lot about, you know, kind of what's new with smart TVs, how you get access if you're having problems with your audio description signal on your television and cable channels. And then Carl is going to interview Jonathan Sweet from Spectrum Access about what's new there. And then Joel Snyder, our audio description uh, director, is going to talk about uh, virtual museum tours. So great stuff happening with audio description on Room C. And then right here on uh, Room A, you don't have to go anywhere on Mainstream, I would like to introduce uh, Michael Talley, a uh, member of our ACV Board of Directors from uh, Alabama. And he's got a panel of folks all under the age of 45 who've only you know, been involved with ACB for a few years and really wanted to have a good discussion about you know, what has brought them to ACB, what, what is really, uh, you know, what do they see as their value add and in getting involved and, and maybe even a little bit of discussion for our affiliate presidents and members mm -hmm. out there or where do they see some of the barriers sometimes for inclusion. And that panel has uh, uh, um, Desiree Christian from Portland, uh, Oregon as well as Greg Wansnigger, uh, they call him Triple G, very involved in the community calls from Wisconsin, Christian Kellen from Michigan, uh, as well as Matt Selm from Kentucky, and Maria Christic uh, from uh, Albany, New York, who's involved in both guide dog users and BPI. So, uh, Michael, we welcome your panel. Hey, very good. Well, good afternoon, Dan. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you sound great. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for inviting me to, to host this panel. I'm excited about this. Um, it has just been a wonderful day. Let me say from uh, your opening speech this morning uh, to the trainings to just the information that has uh, been presented today, it has been a wonderful day. Um, and I, I appreciate everybody that is joining us and especially my panelists. I, I would like to thank each and every one of them. So what we thought we'd do is take about 30 minutes, uh, 25 to 30 minutes and talk for a little bit and then an open up for questions and answers. And we definitely want it to be interactive. We want you to um, ask questions and, and, and pick our brains a little bit um, about what is working and what's, um, what, what maybe you could do in your local chapters and affiliates. So um, at this time, I will ask the uh, panel to introduce themselves. I'll give my story uh, at the end. I'll let the panelists go first. But uh, whoever would like to go first, um, y'all speak up and introduce yourselves. And then after we introduce introductions, we'll, uh, I'll present a question to you and we'll go from there. Sure. I'll go first, Michael, if that's okay. My name Absolutely. is my name is Greg Wansnyder. They do call me Triple G in the community. Mm -hmm. I live in Waukesha, Wisconsin, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Milwaukee. And I have been involved in ACB since last summer, since the uh, and I got involved through uh, convention last summer. And so a good friend uh, was actually on a Zoom call and they kind of told me about ACB and more of, uh, more of what it's about. And uh, I just got involved through actually one of the social events. So that's my story of kind of how I found ACB and yep, so. That's, That's a me. great story, and we're very fortunate to have you. And and um, you do you host uh, some Zoom rooms? And just speaking of Zoom, I I do, I do. Yes, I I host a few community calls and um, webinars in the community, and I I might talk about that more. Um, I but I facilitate an open mic night every Wednesday night that people are welcome to come to. It's uh, any music people want to share, poetry or stories, of course, keeping it family friendly and safe for the entire community. But Wednesday night at 
at 8 Eastern. And as uh, with all community calls, if you don't already, I, if you aren't already on the community call email list, you can email community at acb.org to find out about the open mic and the other community calls that ACB has to offer. That's great. Thank you so much, Greg. And we look forward to, to hearing more from you here in just a few minutes. So thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Who'd like to go next? I can go next. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, you're coming through loud and clear. Thank you. My name is uh, Kristen Kelling. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I first joined ACB, I believe it was back in 2018. Um, in end of 2017, by that point, I had been nagged so much by some of my dear friends to go to a local chapter meeting. Um, so here in Grand Rapids, it's um, visually Impaired Persons for Progress, also known as VIP, as you may often hear me refer to it as, um, which is affiliated with the Michigan Council of the Blind and Visually Impaired, also known as MCBVI, because who wants to say all that? That's a mouthful. Um, I So then in 2018, I officially became a member, um, at least I believe it was 2018, um, and became secretary of MCBVI last year, um, and also became the membership chair of my local chapter, uh, Visually Impaired Persons for Progress. And where I'm at now is I still do both of those things, but I'm also one of the Zoom hosts, which I really enjoy. That is great. So you as well hit the ground running and have uh, made a big difference. And so we're so uh, fortunate to have you uh, with ACB and involved and, and helping to change lives for so many as well. So thank you for, for that. I can go All next. Right. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. You got it. Coming through loud and clear. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, Michael. Uh, so no, no, no worries. <laughs> so I'm Maria Christich. I live in Albany, New York. And uh, actually, uh, Michigan, where Kristen is from, does have a special place for me because my guide dog, Lacey, is from Leader Dog, which is in Michigan. And uh, I have been involved in ACB. I've been a member since 2016 through initially through a uh, guide dog users, Inc., which I'm still involved in today. Uh, and I've been in uh, various leadership positions since 2017. I became involved, I'd heard of the consumer organizations in undergrad uh, through various email lists that I'd been on and had kind of learned a little bit about them. Um, here and there, I had attended one uh, state convention in New York State here, uh, at the invitation of a friend, but I hadn't particularly been too, you know, deeply involved. It was just more of a surface level getting information and such. And really, once I finished my graduate studies in 2016, I had some time and I thought I want to become a little bit more updated on what's happening in the guide dog advocacy space and meet other guide dog users. And so I did some research uh, with the, the consumer organizations and really found uh, some of, and this is, you know, online research and really found that some of the um, ACB values of, you know, flexibility and collaboration uh, really resonated with me. And um, in terms of GDUI, the, the leveraging of technology with electronic voting. And um, so this, and, and I'd read a bit of history in terms of the uh, founding of, of GDUI and, um, you know, kind of what some of the things they supported, which I support as well, the accessible pedestrian signals and um, tactile domes and things like that. And so it, it just resonated with me. And so so literally just one day out of the blue, I just uh, joined online. <laughs> and uh, from there, you know, I think the um, leadership roles and the greater involvement just took off from attending meetings uh, in GDUI. These were, you know, board meetings and, you know, reaching out to people where I felt that I could contribute some uh some skills and add some value, uh, having a, a finance and a legal background and, you know, people deciding to give me a chance and giving me opportunities. And so it's just 
uh, expanded from from there. I'm treasurer for three special interest affiliates and uh, participated wow. in bylaws <laughs> committees and um, also do some uh, website stuff for a couple of them since I uh, started out in my undergrad as a computer science major. So it's just really um, taken off and it's it's been a good experience. My goodness. So you don't have a lot of uh, downtime, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing great advocacy work and we, we appreciate you and so fortunate to have you as well. So thank you for that. And I look forward to hearing from you a little bit more in a few minutes. Thank you. All right. Either Matt or Desiree, would you want to go next? Ladies first. Sure. Ah, there you go. <laughs> good, good gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I am Desiree, a Christian from Portland, Oregon, and I um, have been involved with ACB for, oh gosh, many years, but my, my mom has been a member. Uh, when we lived in California, I, I watched her um, be president and treasurer, you know, growing up. So it I, unlike a lot of people, I didn't go looking. It was like, you know, kind of like already, my family was already doing it. So why not when, when I got interested? So I serve uh, local, state, and national levels with ACB on various different committees and chairs and all, all the things. So, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you joining us today and look forward to hearing from you. All right, Matt, it looks like you might be traveling. Are you driving, sir? No. Nah. <laughs> I think you're, you, you look like you're in the passenger seat, I believe. Yes. So, um, I, uh, my name is Matt Selm. For those of you that I did, that do not know me, I'm the uh, current first term president for the Kentucky Council of the Blind, as well as the first vice president for ACB Next Generation. Uh, my story goes a little further back than most people on here. I got involved with KCB in 2014 when we formed a local chapter for Next Generation. And it is only, well, and primarily due to my wife that I'm involved. Uh, she, <laughs> she drug me to a meeting and it's kind of taken off from there. Um, I've served a few, a few different roles in the local group and have since primarily under her leadership helped to form ACB Next Generation and have also continued to be involved in my state affiliate where I'm now president. And for those of you that have been there or are there it's a lot of work there's no rest for the wicked so um i i would say i've i've primarily stayed because i you know i really um i i really enjoy seeing the growth and i really enjoy the the people um you know and i and i enjoy helping out i'm a i'm a sucker to work so you know <laughs> Never have well, to no, how, how long have you been president of the KCB? Since November I, I, of last year. So Ah, so, so you just got in that seat. All right. Well, you know, earlier today we heard about the wonderful uh, things that are going on with ACB Radio, soon to be ACB Media, um, and they were talking about podcasts. You guys have put out a podcast for a very long time called Sound Prince. It's very well done, and um, I know you guys are very active, and even before COVID, I mean, y'all were just constantly uh, having get-togethers and fundraisers, and KCB is a very, very active uh, affiliate. We are extremely active and we are uh, very blessed to have some strong and powerful leaders that contribute to the organization. Um, one person cannot do it all. It, it does take mm -hmm. a lot of hands sometimes to get things done. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've we've just we've we've been very very lucky in that amount and i know uh you know i'm sure everyone knows carla uh <laughs> rushable everybody knows carla 
And so, um, you know, I've been, I've been lucky to sit under her learning tree for a time or two and learn a few things. And, uh, you know, so I'm sure we'll talk about some of that more, but you know, we, yeah, we're, we're, we're striving here. So. Yes. Well, um, and I'll just throw this out there for anyone that would like to, to speak up. So, the last year has been very challenging and as you all know, and not being able to have meetings in person and, uh, and state conventions in person and and not even sure what to do about this year, but let's talk about what is, is working well in your, uh, your affiliates. What, what, um, what have you seen? We know that the community calls have just exploded on a national level, but what's going well in your organizations and what, what does that mean to you personally being so involved and, 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 and having such an impact? What, what does that mean to you as well? Uh, this is Maria. I'll actually piggyback a little off of what you're saying, Michael, with the community calls exploding nationally and say that we've really found them to be working well in uh, in the affiliates that I've certainly been involved with, uh, with GDUI. We've had a couple, you know, relating to the new revisions to the Air Carrier Access Act, where we've been able to talk to members about the new changes. Uh, we are going to be hosting one soon about uh, people's experiences in guide dogs us classes during COVID and such. So it's absolutely helped. And, uh, you know, I know with BPI, we've had, uh, we uh, just recently had a book club and we've had some chats relating to audio description and certainly next gen with the Saturday night late live hangouts and such. So it's most definitely been a boon, you know, on the affiliate uh, level, on the affiliate level as well. Um, and so, and, you know, and I think also from, um, you know, what is working, you know, in my just involvement in general, I really just appreciated how down to earth and approachable people have been at ACV. You know, I, I think in Rochester uh, in, at the convention and I approached the International Relations Committee table of ACV thinking, you know, I'm from Bosnia originally and perhaps I, uh, you know, could have some involvement there. I was interested and there was, you know, then president elect Dan Spoon. And, you know, we just had the most friendly conversation. There was none of this sense of like, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm talking to the future president of this organization. Um, so, <laughs> so um, you know what, I really just found, you know, it's been, certainly there's been the, you know, learning advocacy strategies with, um, especially some of these, these trainings that have happened recently through the community channels, but, you know, in general, but even just the networking, you know, when I was um, one of the, the people that I met, um, um, through guide dog users um, and in, in guide dog users of New York that I'm the secretary of, she actually was kind enough to write, uh, to be one of my references for my job application for this job. Oh, that wow. I have. Yeah. And, um, and then for sure. And, and, you know, just then, um, you know, networking and, but, you know, there's also th- this aspect of feeling like I can make a difference, you know, back to the, the, the GDUI, just this recent, you know, I was providing um, comments through GDUI to the Department of Transportation on these new forms that are being used for guide dog travel. And, you know, tomorrow we're going to get to hear this amazing panel um, on, on from uh, the air with, with representatives from the airlines on this, you know, regulation through ACB. That's something I never would have just, you know, me as an individual gotten, right? And so- yeah. So it's that both that professional, I think, and, you know, personal networking as well. And BPI, they've even done some wonderful sensitivity trainings uh, uh, that have really made an impact. Yes. And I think that speaks to, you know, to the grassroots approach of ACB that really, you know, works well, whether it's that having the the idea, we think we can add value in approaching the leadership to have it done. Or, you know, you look at next gen, just forming together as a you know group. Do we want to do this? And here we are a year later, you know, turning turning one as a special interest affiliate. So, um, again, just that uh, cohesive spirit and the fact that, um, you know, you have a a collective action and, and can get things uh, you know, done and have a, have a sense of you're not alone. Right. That's, that's definitely. absolutely. Yes. And it's so important these days. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. All right. Anyone else would you like to, to speak to what's working well for you guys and what it's meant to you? Sure. sure. I'll, um, I'll, oh, okay. Oh. Christy, you can go. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so MCBVI since uh, the pandemic started, um, they've come, people have come to a realization that 
we needed a way to connect with those that are in our affiliate. So within the three chapters within MCBVI. Um, and so now, now I don't remember when we started them, it was sometime last year during the pandemic, they started what we call the connection chat and it's once a month and um, people within MCBVI can come and, and socialize and just talk about a lot of different things. And um, I, I don't always get to go to them, but I, I know that, that they mean a lot to a lot of different people. They're pretty well attended. Um, it, I, I just think that it's, it's great that they, that they have this option available because Absolutely. Um, not everybody is able to go to the, the community calls um, or, or um, sometimes they might get overwhelmed in a larger uh, social call on the community yeah. calls. So this is just kind of, it's, it's kind of nice too to get to know some of the people within the affiliate um, a little bit better. As far as what's working well, um, I, obvious, I think that the connection chats are working really well. Um, you know, so I, I think that, that that's been wonderful for people, but I also really appreciate the fact that there are a few people within the affiliate that not only are Zoom hosts and help host some of the ACB calls and are actively involved in that, but there, are, I also appreciate those who are willing to, to step up and, and facilitate those, those calls as well. Absolutely. And those calls are so meaningful to, to so many people that um, emotionally are affected by not being able to get out and visit with people or be able to go places. Some people are scared. And so to be able to reach out and connect with other people is so vital these days. And uh, you're right. It's just it's, it's so meaningful. So thank you for that. Um, all right, we've got about 10 more minutes or so before we open up for Q&A. And I just realized your host did not introduce herself, but we're going to go ahead and uh, get through these. Uh, I, I want to go to Desiree or to Matt and uh, get Desiree, I guess we'll go to you next. And, and then I'll quickly introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, time flies. Um, so what we have noticed is because we've moved to such a virtual environment, it's allowed a lot more of our younger people. So like, you know, people that will qualify for next generation to step forward and get involved. Um, two of us actually work at uh, the national level uh, are and have been doing so at NextGen at the national level for several months now on two different committees. And we're now both co-chairs of our state convention committee. So like two young people wow. under, you know, that 45 age limit in charge. Yeah, our state better look out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great thing. Yes, we need that. That's wonderful. And so what does it mean to you by getting so involved and helping out on not only a local, but a national level? What, is, what does that mean to you personally? It's really good to see the blind community be able to grow and mature. Um, and it feels like I'm much more in touch with that happening now that I'm working at, you know, just such a bigger level than just locally, like I was doing for a long time. Um, and that part is really awesome to, to be able to see that growth versus, um, you know, watching and seeing relatively low functioning blind people, but to see that change, to actually see good yeah. change. So it's not so much that way, which is excellent. Yeah. It's so funny you mentioned Next Gen, and we're fixing to go to Matt, but it was just so wonderful to see the growth of the Next Generation um, affiliate, and the, the board of directors just unanimously supported it, and, and, and from top down, everyone has just been so proud of it, um, and so I'm glad that uh, you're involved with it and, and helping out. So, all right, uh, Matt, we'll go to you, sir, and tell us 
uh, what's worked working well for you guys and, and, and what it's meant to you to be so involved with KCBN next gen. Yeah, I would say that uh, it's been, we we were on the, on the zoom train pretty early on before the pandemic. So it was a bit of an easier change for Kentucky to switch to zoom um, and just start really conducting a lot of our events that we did in person, try to modify those to a virtual format. And it really allowed, you know, people that may were not near to those events to still come and participate. You know, people that are really in some remote parts of the state or just don't have reliable transportation. So that's been, a good thing to start with. Uh, yeah. Personally, for me, I, you know, I think a, as much as the pandemic has been a hindrance to the country and the economy and people's um, health, you know, I think as a overall as a whole, we've sort of risen to the challenge and tried to adapt and be flexible, you know, and I, yeah. I definitely foresee a virtual component sticking around within Kentucky and on a national level because of it. So, well, that is good, and and I know that we even heard a lot of yesterday about future conventions being hybrids. You know, partial, part virtual, part in person, and so we're really going to be hearing more and more about conventions being uh, using a hybrid model. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of community calls about that. And a lot of um, just discussion, especially on the email exchange on on the on the mail list, you know. So, I right, well, thank you, thank you for that, Matt. Um, so, nothing like uh, doing an introduction of your host, uh, <laughs> your moderator, right in the middle of the thing. But let me just say a little bit about myself. My name is Michael Talley. I live in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm currently the president of the Alabama Council of the Blind, and I'm also on the ACB board of directors. So, um, I got really involved um, with ACB on a local level uh, back in about 2008, 2009. I had a many, many friends that were very involved in ALCB. Um, uh, Norman and Debbie Culver, the Garrett's, the uh, Osborne's, Ken and Charlotte Osborne. And so as, uh, as, as, as I got, more and more involved with them on a local basis. I, and, and, and then I, you know, David and Rhonda tried. And so I, I, um, I, I started to see, Hey, there's, there's a huge organization out there. It's not just here in Alabama. It's making a positive impact on a national level. And so I started looking at the national, um, what the national organization was doing. And the more, I looked at it, the more impressed I became. And then I started attending national conventions. And um, it's kind of funny, the, uh, I was at a convention and, and the, my, I was first vice president of Alabama Council of the Blind and my president, Joan Gary, she said, Michael, I'd like for you to go to the nominating meeting. Yes, ma'am, I'll go. And so I went. And as we're sitting there, um, they're, they're taking nominations for a, a board position. And someone leans over as a real sweet lady, I won't say her name here, but she says, Hey Michael, would you would you be willing to to run? I was like, sure, whatever, you know. No, and I had no chance whatsoever. And uh, so they put my name up there, and next thing you know, I have been elected to the board of directors. But it's been a great experience. I uh, I got to work under Kim Charlson and uh, under uh, President Kurt, President Dan Spoon, and it's just been uh, just amazing, an incredible opportunity. But I've got to learn and meet so many wonderful people across the country. And I just want to strongly encourage anyone out there that's thinking about getting involved that hasn't maybe taken that step to, to, to do it, just, just to put your feet in the water and go for it because it can change your life for the better forever. Um, so, and we'll always um, be here uh, to, to encourage you to, to uh, support you and don't be afraid of, you don't have to be that person out front being a public speaker. You might be that one uh, in the background that's helping and supporting others and, um, you know, that, that's okay too. We, we need those all kind of leaders. Um, okay, guys, so we've got about five minutes and we we'll definitely will open it up for questions and answers. Um, if you would like to answer or ask a question, please go ahead and raise your hand. Let's get you in the queue, get those lined up. But we've got about five minutes to talk about what would you like to see uh, – ACB go in the future, like what kind of direction, um, what can we do better? We always, as good as things are going, they can always be improved. Just, just like Alabama here, you know, we're all about national championships with football, 
But but the next day, Coach Saban is looking at his his system and going, what can we do better? And so, what are there things uh, as good as things are going in your your affiliates? What where would you like to, for to see ACB go in the next uh, you know uh, three to five years? Well, this is, this is this is Greg. Oh, okay. Greg, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. go ahead, Greg or Triple G. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I would definitely like to echo something that uh, Cindy Hollis said at uh, at the uh, meeting at the last uh, community call meeting. But we do need. Uh, we would like more people to host community calls on any any number of topics. I mean, you could host a community call on hot air ballooning if you have experience with that or, you know, different things like that, because that's going to do well for ACB to help us learn better. That's going to help us get a diverse perspective on things. And um, just, just, um, you know, put your neck out and, and host a community call or even take a position you know, um, I'm um, I'm on the PR committee for Next Generation, and I never thought I'd be any good at PR. I mean, I know Facebook a little bit, but I just, um, or even like Zoom hosting, for an example, I never thought I'd be hosting webinars, but I stuck my neck out and I said, Cindy, I want to be a Zoom host. And it's turned out I've learned so much from hosting Zoom meetings yes. and hosting webinars that it's been awesome. Speaking of PR and Next Gen, uh, let's promote a call tomorrow night and a special event for Next Gen. Yes, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, ACB Next Gen tomorrow night. Um, at um, I believe it's or eight 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 Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. So next gen is the affiliate for um people eighteen through forty, but we do have support class members, um, which are can be any age, um, which I am one, and um, we are having our one year anniversary party tomorrow night and um i believe it's going to be in the community call schedule otherwise if you would like the uh the link to it it's um on our social media uh channels um acb next generation on facebook and um and twitter um and you can find the link to that or you can just email acb next gen at gmail.com but we're um we're very proud and matt can probably speak to this more but we're very proud of uh celebrating one year of in existence yeah. as an affiliate hi this is yeah. linda yax i'm your host and i thought you were ready to start taking hands so i um, allowed mm -hmm. joseph to unmute so joseph okay, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear yes, you now. Yes, we can. <laughs> oh, well, loud and clear. I, Go ahead. Where well, are you from, my, Joseph? Tell us what well, state. I'm from near Philadelphia, uh, in okay. a, a sort of semi -town, a town called Doylestown. So I'm taking notes for your meeting, and a few odd technical things are happening. But anyway, I'll ask someone else that after it's over. I'm wondering, did you have – when younger people are coming in, are there certain issues that they feel uh, before that you came in that you had some doubts that an advocacy, advocacy group wouldn't be dealing with? Uh, was, it hard, anyone on the panel? was it hard for you to maybe relate to um, an issue that were you concerned that maybe you wouldn't be able to relate to the older people as well because you thought that they weren't they weren't going to be emphasizing the issues you were going to need to? So, this is Desiree. Yes. All right. Go ahead, Desiree. Um, Thank you for your call uh, question, Joseph. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Yes, sir. So. Go ahead, Desiree. Um. You know, coming again from watching my mom be involved um, and, you know, having ACB meetings in our living room growing up, 
when I joined for me, I, I knew that that's what I was going to get into was I was going to be one of the youngest members in my chapter. And it turned out in the demographic of my state. So I knew that there was going to be clashes between what they were interested in, what they wanted to do, the issues they're concerned about versus things that myself and um, now that we have a much larger group of younger members are concerned about and interested in. And I knew that it was going to be somewhat of an uphill battle, but I also knew if I went in there shouting that they're not going to listen to me because I don't know anybody that likes to get shouted at. I, you know, yeah. that's such a turnoff. So if I were to go in there and be supportive and make friends and slowly persistently, you know, say, Hey, this is a thing we need to change stuff. Granted, I do it in a pretty direct way. Cause that's just my nature, but still just not giving up and just continuing within, you know, my local and state level to just be like, no, we need change. You guys are asking for change. This is how we can do it to get younger members to address younger members issues. Um, but, you know, you still need to do it in a way where you're respectful to theirs as well, because they are older, they're not dealing with the same stuff we are. So, so Absolutely. somehow there's got to be a balance and I really wish yeah. there weren't just conversations, but there was like workshops that there was some sort of more action taken to uh, change the them us attitude, whether it has to do with age, which is what we're mostly talking about, or whether it has to do with race or whatever else. I, I really wish there was something more than just talking about it to address these things. Wow, what a great response, Desiree. This Thank is you. Kristen. I kind of have a little bit of an answer to this. Um, when I joined, I knew that starting at the local chapter especially, and then eventually the state chapter, I, I went in knowing that I was one of the youngest members. A lot of the people, we do have a few younger members um, within the affiliate as a whole, but most of the members, especially um, the ones that I know in, and in my local chapter, especially are quite a bit older than myself. And I think that it comes down to, first of all, you know, we can learn a lot from, from other people. And I think that it's important to be empathetic, first of all, because a lot of them a lot of people are coming from a different place than I am. A lot of people yes. um, have lost vision. They're, they're not, um, they weren't necessarily born blind like I was. So I think the empathy piece um, is, is really big, empathetic and understanding and respectful because Desiree, you're right. We're not, you're not going to get what you want if you come kicking and screaming and, and shouting and, and whatnot, um, and just expecting to get what you want. Because, and what I have found is that there are a lot of the issues that we're addressing that are issues for even us as younger members as well. Um, take the voting, the accessible voting, for example. Um, so, so that's really what I have is to be willing to learn and be respectful of other members and, and what they may be going, going through. And you may find that um, you're gonna have um, similar um, things that you might wanna work on. There, there's a place here for everyone. It's, it's just up to us to figure out where that is. Thank you. Great, great answer. All right. Do we, uh, Bye, it's Lisa, I believe. Do we, yes. Oh, go ahead, Matt. Never mind. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's fine. No, no, no. You, you want to do a quick response? That's fine. I don't even know if we no. have a hand up. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Just real quick. Uh, I'll try to be quick. You know, you asked really early on before his question what yeah. you thought that we could do, we could do better as an organization. And I would yeah. say this is really up and down from, the national all the way down the chapter and 
back back across again is we need to intentionally consider the new member experience and how do we integrate and welcome new members into our groups and into our affiliates yeah. how, how do we how do we track and retain people you know how do we form those relationships i, I think that deserves yeah. some real intentional thought so and uh, oh, definitely i i can definitely say from experience and and encourage this is kristen again encourage newer members to get involved i like but what once matt they do said get involved, and- we've, yeah we, i mean we've got to make sure that we are being intentional with wh- how welcoming we are because they they don't know anyone they're not as well connected so we've got to be intentional of how we handle that right desiree it, that's what i was going to say is i really like the yeah, language sorry. matt was using there intentional like yes, yes we do absolutely so good Okay, let's see if we've got another question. Is is there a hand up? There no, there's questions? not. I could make a comment okay. if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely. As one of the oldsters, <laughs> I just <laughs> want to say I am so excited to see young people becoming involved in ACB. Some of our affiliates are are aging out of ACB you might say and if we don't have young people joining and have young people getting involved there won't be an ACB so I am so excited to see next gen form and I'm so excited to have you guys working toward this and I'm so excited to hear the desire to collaborate with all ages and all uh, groups and and because we all face issues we just all face them a little bit differently. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Michael, this is Ray Campbell. I'm on the panel side. Can I make a comment? Yes. Sure. Okay. Go ahead, Ray. Okay, sure. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm like, like Linda said, I'm, I'm really excited to see this and I look forward to attending a one-year-old birthday party tomorrow night. It's going to be exciting. Um, but um, I just wanted to, to touch on, you were talking about, uh, Kristen was talking about the affiliate calls and, uh, we found that an ICB. Granted, we have a small group, but we have been doing some affiliate calls. And I know uh, because they've shared uh, for some of our members, it's really meant a lot to have the affiliate calls because uh, we do a we do a lunch bunch call every Saturday, or almost every Saturday. We and we've done a couple of book club calls and a couple of other calls on some things and. Um, I know it's it's meaningful to people, and uh, we've been doing that since the start of the pandemic, really starting with just a call to check in and see how people were doing, and it kind of evolved from there. So the message I'm leaving is you can do it, and it's going to get your members more connected, and we've met people from other parts of the state, some of whom have become members that we didn't know were out there uh, thanks to that, to that, and we hope to get more people on them, so uh, you can do it. Well, and Ray, just to piggyback off something Ray said, Michael, real quick, if I may, um, community yeah. community is just community, right? Community doesn't specify an age group, you know, an age requirement. Like, uh, and, and so we're all part of this community together. We're all, um, I've even heard of it referred to as a community family. Now, I don't know how many people, you know, want to go there, but uh, it's language that, you know, I would feel comfortable using that we're all part of this big community family together and we can all learn from each other. Um, and um, that's that's my main ambition in life right now is just to learn as much as I can um, learn and grow as much as I can. And that's why I say, again, take advantage of every opportunity. I like to say, and this is not my quote, this is, you miss out on 100% of the chances you don't take in life. Mm, so good. Yes. So yeah. 100%. So good. Have, um, you do have two hands up if you have time to take them. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, we do. And I'm, we've got about 15 minutes. So go ahead. Yes. Tell us your name and where you're from, please. Hi, uh, my name is Yasmin and I'm from New York. 
the, I'm from the corner from Thank the city. Um, I was calling, <laughs> well, I wanted to um, make a comment to say that um, I am, you know, one of the younger uh, members of my chapter and um, I'm also, you know, on the membership committee. So what we're trying to do is, um, you know, try to find the young generation, the younger generation, because, you know, the, we feel that, you know, they are the future. So we Absolutely. are starting to, or in, or in the process of trying to like reach out to colleges and universities in the city and to be able to, you know, present our chapter um, to introduce ourselves to them so they know that they have an additional resource to reach out to after they graduate from college. And, you know, when they're in the, the real world and the adult world, that they still have support as they move on. And I just wanted to say um, that I thought that I've been hearing like throughout the day that, um, you know, presenting a survey to your members to see what they you know, are interested in and just to get feedback from them. And uh, my chapter has done that. And we've, we are finding it more um, helpful to see like when they could attend, you know, meetings or events and things like that. And, yes. um, you know, we do have, you know, a little issue with uh, some of the older members, like wanting, you know, trying to transfer over from like just doing the, the teleconference to actually using Zoom and, you know, it's so far it's it's been okay you know we tried it with the meeting and um for the most part people were able to you know get on and still be a part of it so um i would say it's you know when i first came in i just kind of sat back and, and just watched you know as a new member like how things worked and who you know who was on what committee and things like that and now you know with our president um you know he has done a very good job in um, you know, bridging the gap between the older members and, you know, some of the younger members and, you know, to get everyone involved. So um, I think that, you know, as we, you know, go forward, you know, things are starting to, to, to look up in that way. Do you feel like you're getting the support that you need in, in the effort of reaching out to um, the younger folks? So does your chapter fully, uh, have they bought into that? Uh, we are doing it now, but we do have a very supportive president and, we, and you know, I do have a, a, a wonderful membership team and, you know, the, yeah. as the, the chapter as a whole, you know, they, they come to the general body meetings. They, you know, are very vocal in, you know, what they want to happen, especially in the advocacy front. So it's good, um, you know, to have that experience there, but it's just now, you know, we want to be able to, as people like step down from, you know, positions to be able to still mm -hmm. mentor, you know, somebody new coming in who may not have been in that kind of position before, because we yeah. see that um, their expertise is, is needed to, you know, share with the, the next person coming in. So, you know, it, so far it, it's been, you know, working out pretty good for us. Um, I uh, thank you so much. And Go ahead, Triple G. Yep. This is Triple G. I will just say that um, mm -hmm. surveys are great. I get about 10 to 15 of them per day, actually, for different um, <laughs> organizations I'm involved in. Um, but um, nothing um, like, and they're a tool in your toolkit, right? Just like all these tools um, that that we've talked about uh, this week. Um, but nothing nothing passes, nothing is better than word of mouth, than personal, personal invitation. You know someone, you know, invite them, get the message out. You yeah. know, this is when, this is where, yeah, that's what I want to say. Surveys are great, but word of mouth is just such an awesome tool. So please don't underestimate that. I think oh, that I you, have to you. agree. Um, this is Kristen. I tend to, to agree with um, personal connections and things. I, I do remember, if I recall, um, our affiliate back a couple of years ago did um, do a survey, but I don't remember it having got, gotten too many responses. So I think it probably just depends, number one, on how your survey is laid out, and number two, um, how 
you know, on your affiliate and how you're um, able to get people to, to do something like that. Um, but definitely I can agree that personal connections are great. Personal connections have gotten me involved in ACB. I know personal convention, uh, connections have gotten other people involved in ACB. This is yeah, I wanted to, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say like, as far as what I'm seeing about the survey is like, um, you know, for our chapter members to see, because, um, you know, we had, you know, a, a few like of the the um, main folks that always showed up to the meetings. So we wanted to find out, okay, um, may, is it the time that, you know, we hold an yeah. event that's a problem for you or, mm -hmm. you know, what day of the week it is, or, you know, what yeah. is the issue that, you know, that uh, we're not getting the turnout that we want. So as far as the survey, we thought, you know, we, we got a small response with it, but it was good to know. So as we plan events, then we know, you know, we're gonna get the most um, attendees because they, you know, they told us, okay, this is like the afternoon is the best time for us to hold something. Yeah. So that, you know, but as far right. as, oh, I understand the word of mouth, we, we send out emails, we do all of that to, you know, yeah. put the word out. Thank you so much for raising your hand and speaking, uh, Yasmin. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I look forward to, to meeting you one day in, in person and just continue the great work, the advocacy work and, and <clears throat> becoming a leader in your your affiliate. Thank you so much. I know that we've got one hand up for sure. Uh, Linda, if you Doug will, go Powell? ahead. And... Doug Powell? Uh, yeah, hey, Doug. All right, go ahead. Yes, sir. Doug? Let's see if you're muted you muted on your end. You should be able to unmute, Doug. Yeah. Can't hear you just yet, Doug. Doug is one of our ACB board of directors, and uh, he is a very uh, an outstanding advocate for sure. For some reason, it's not. He's. I mean, it keeps mm. telling me. To, you're there now, Doug. Mm. I keep <laughs> hearing somebody's jaws. Is that, that his? Might, that might be mine. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's fine. I it's just okay. was wondering if it was yeah. his. Can I just? Well, Doug, I apologize. This is Maria. Can I just make a very quick comment while we're just waiting? Um, I definitely agree on what's been said on, on the surveys and the personal connection, but I also want to urge, you know, affiliates to work on making sure your web presence is also up to date and um, informative because you really, really never know how people are going to find you. I know someone told me with BPI that they literally found it by doing some search for blind LGBT. And obviously they found BPI through the website and, you know, it changed their life. And on, you know, on the other side of the spectrum, I've had an example where, okay, I've just moved somewhere and I do a search for, you know, blind in that uh, location. And there's this nice website and it shows affiliates and it shows the chapter in the location I'm looking for. And then I click on the link and it goes, page not found. You know, that's not what you want your result to be, <laughs> you know, so, that's, um, so true. And that's, that's certainly, you know, an important um, aspect as well. And there's, and there's so many multiple prongs, you know, like I, there's, you know, the ACB affiliates pages, and maybe that's not up to date, but your website is up to date. So, you know, maybe the easiest thing is to just say for that ACB affiliate page, don't list the president, just list the website and say, and about us, and here's more info, you know, to make your life easier. But you definitely want to make sure that, you know, your presence is consistent and up to date. You know, you don't want people, if they are just doing this from an online standpoint, you don't want them jumping through hoops to try to get involved with you because that will, you know, dampen Absolutely. excitement. And if we're going after younger members, we've got to meet them where they're at, right? Well, yeah. how, how they're getting their information. So we, we definitely the need the to time. be. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Um, do we ever get Doug unmuted? We've got just a few minutes. We've got about three or four minutes. We need to start wrapping up. <clears throat> Doug, you should be able to unmute. This is Hi, the can you hear I me? Keep, I keep getting his hey, message. Hey, there you are. There, there I he am. Is. Hey, All right, yeah, it took a while hey. for me to get the unmute button. I'm um, sorry. Uh, no problem. <laughs> uh, you, you guys remind me of when I was coming up, and, and uh, I, I did the same thing as, as a couple of you have talked about. I sat back and, you know, I joined a local chapter and sat back for a while and then became president of the chapter. And I had some very... Uh, uh, Uh oh, thank you. Again. I'm sorry. Try again. Jaws jumped on me. And I was going after right, someone it, else. Am I back? Yes, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're back. 
Okay, good. Uh, so I had we had some very uh, influential people in ACB in my chapter, and you know I came up against that stuff about you know I would uh, make a suggestion. Oh, we did that twenty years ago, and it didn't work. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and yeah. or uh, so uh, I was wondering if you guys have uh, uh, hopefully that era has passed. Um, but, uh, no, no, it hasn't. <laughs> not? Oh. That's a shame. <laughs> um, but, hmm. uh, you know, I said, it, what I said at that time was, well, I, I understand, but, you know, it's been a while and, uh, you know, I'd like to try it this way and, and uh, it may not work, but, you know, it's worth trying what, again. So um, yeah. please, you know, please don't uh, be intimidated by, uh, by the old school. <laughs> um and I had another question I wanted to ask you guys. Um, and in trying to, I, I, it slipped my mind. Um, now, Doug, you're young enough to join next gen. Are you going to join? <laughs> <laughs> you act like you're an old timer. <laughs> yes, we're always looking for new members. ACB next gen. G-E-N oh, that, oh I know. Yeah. That's, that was the question I was going to ask. Um, as, a, as an old fogey, um, and trying trying to revitalize our affiliate and chapters and, and and stuff like that, getting some more young people to come and join. Where do we old fogies find the next generation? Uh, do you have any hints about how to? Uh, you, you said make sure that your mm. website is up to date, and that's that's certainly pertinent. Mm. And the, and uh, I I need to work. We need to work on that. But are there other places that we can? Um, this is Maria. I'll speak to that because we've recently we've recently had a couple of younger people join my local uh, state local chapter of state affiliate here. Um, you know, I think definitely the if you have local colleges and universities, you know, someone here mentioned reaching out to them. You know, maybe forwarding the, an ACB scholarship to the disability services office at the university and say, hey, if you want to, you know, send this out to students and we're a you know consumer organization, people might be interested, or even you know if you have um you know an association for the blind or some kind of a rehabilitation center that has youth programs you know that's definitely a possibility of you know coming and speaking about your organization to let people know that you uh exist and you know i think some of it too resources i know um you know, again, coming back to guide dogs, I know, you know, GDI is listed as a resource on the website of my guide dog school and such. So, and there are people of all ages who, um, you know, get guide dogs, but those are, you know, a couple, perhaps my other panelists here have other uh, ideas, but I know those are a couple that have worked for us and have gotten us a couple of recently younger members in the local chapter. Michael, I got a comment if I may. Just to That's kick fine. in on Please keep in mind, we, we, get, we got about two minutes. Yes, go ahead. All right, I'm going to make it quick. Uh, so first of all, I That's do, uh, you know, Doug, it's good to good to hear from you again. And I do. And this is Matt Sam talking, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do yeah. want to uh, publicly thank Doug. I, I met him while leaving Rochester last year. And the poor fellow, I must have talked his ear off about all the ideas that I had and uh, everything like that. And he says, oh, why don't you get involved with the leadership task force? And I said, well, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, always need more work. So I'm involved with that now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's gone good. I really enjoy that committee. Uh, yeah, to that answer your, committee. yeah, it is a great committee. To answer your question, um, I think... So... What Maria said is true, you know, making sure that your presence online and everything is up to date, Mm -hmm. um, making sure that, you know, you're actively using your channels of communicating, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, You know, in Kentucky, we have a list of colleges and professionals that are in the field that we send our newsletter to and send information, especially highlighting scholarship opportunities. Um, I, I would say that a lot of times when we talk about growing as an organization, we often talk about that in the context of getting younger and sometimes getting younger to a group may not necessarily be, you know, if our average age of the group is, is 60, 
you know, maybe getting younger just involves bringing in some people that are a little younger than us in our fifties. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes these things, they, they, trickle they down. trickle down. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's never an overnight solution. It is a long-term, it's very long-term, extremely long-term. Um, you know, I don't think we're ever going to sprinkle fairy dust and people just pop up overnight. You know, it takes momentum and, you know, sometimes momentum begets more momentum, you know, intentionality. And, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, guys. Well, all right. And, and, and just real quickly, if you will, because we've got to wrap it up and hand it back over to uh, Dan. Okay. Go ahead, so, Dan. so my question is, I wonder how many of us are reaching out to community centers. I mean, it says it right in the, there in the name community. People are going there to take mm -hmm. classes. People are going there looking for community and you get all yeah. kinds of people going to community centers. So just just putting that out there. Excellent dialogue, guys. I, I want to thank each and every one of our panelists. Um, I think we've given some seeds, uh, some 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 food for thought for sure. And I'd like to to thank everyone that's listened and commented and um, just thank you for being a part of this organization, for, for working to build a brighter future. And uh, to all of the panelists, you, you, you are uh, an encouragement and just your energy, your passion, what you're doing with your affiliates is so encouraging. And not only to the, 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 the people that are listening today, but for, for future generations to come. So thank you for everything you do. And, uh, and thank you for being a part of this panel. I, I know it's meant a lot to me and I know it's meant a lot to those who are listening. All right, Dan, we'll, we'll hand it back over to you, sir. Oh, and Michael, before your panel goes, I got to ask a question. This was a really wonderful session. So, so thanks so much to everybody. And my question, because I heard, you know, I was li listening uh, and trying to be intentional, as Matt said. I love that word. So, uh, yeah. you know, Matt, I know visiting Kentucky a few years ago, you all had a local chapter of Next Generation before it ever made it to the national organization with folks like Joey and Natalie and you and, and Amanda. And then Desiree, I heard you say that it meant a lot to you. You kind of started out kind of growing up through your family and now other folks that are younger have joined in the, you know, the ACB of Oregon affiliate and, uh, and O-Triple G and, and Kristen, you guys kind of got involved a lot through, through the community. How important is it to find some other friends, buddies, but people that are kind of, you know, in, in your age range, your social circle that where you're not like the lone wolf out there. I know, when we did the Next Generation Scholarships two years ago, that really seemed to bring a group of people together from across the country that got to meet each other face to face for the first time. It, are those the type of intentional things that can help? This is Kristen um, and I would argue that, yes, I mean, it, it's good to have friends all across the spectrum. Um, I think in part because when you're friends with those who are older, you're learning from them. They, they bring a lot of years of experience and, um, and stuff like that. But it's also important to have people that are more in your age range, at least for me, because then it kind of helps you to know that, you know, it helps me to know I'm not alone in this. You know, I, I can you know, like, like we can, we can do this, you know, we have similar interests, similar things that we're concerned about. So I would argue that, yes, it is quite important. This is I, Triple G. And I just want to say um, really quickly that um, growing up, I, well, in, in school, I had some friends who are, um, you know, on, on what I call the blindness spectrum, um, you know, either totally blind or visually impaired, because it is a spectrum. But uh, what I would say to that is, um, yes, it's really important to have friends of all, you know, backgrounds. Of, um, I believe that um, I was told once by a science teacher that the key to stability is diversity. And that starts in your friend group. Friend group. And um, I enjoy having friends of mine throughout the country 
the, throughout the world through ACB now. You know, I have a friend from Dubai that I've made uh, through ACB and um, someone who comes on the community calls. And I just have, I just consider them friends and I can call them and ask them, you know, questions about, well, how do you deal with this when your parents say this to you? Or how do you deal with this when uh, you you know, have this computer issue, or it can be a variety of things, or just, just chatting, um, you know, about different things. So, uh, and we have different interests, and uh, I, I just love that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where I see it. This is Desiree. So, um, I'm, you know, everybody has that, oh, I'm unique position, and, <laughs> I'm, I had my kids when I was really young and they're now adults. So here I am at 41 and I've got an 18 and 20 year old. Um, and I find it hard to find that particular demographic. However, with my interests, I end up getting those needs met outside of ACB. And this is just me being my direct real self. And so I actually volunteer with a geek oriented organization um, that again is about benefiting, you know, doing charitable works of good, but that's where I've ended up finding more of my people per se. Um, and I, and I really, and I'd love to see more, you know, of that kind of thing happen. Cause I know there's like all these different communities within ACB, but I just wonder how many of us like struggle to really find like our people. And it's not that I don't have friends. Oh, cause dear Lord, do I have friends in ACB, but I just like, I can't be the only one out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What Will Butler said earlier, there are lots of little groups as opposed to thinking there's one big message that, that goes out there. Yeah. Lots of little, little platforms. Yeah. And uh, Dan, to, to speak to your question a little bit, you know, I think, if gathering the trade winds of, of young people helps gain more young people and er, serves as a, 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 a honey pot or, or a honeycomb to feed the larger organization, then all, all the better. Because in the end, um, you know, we're all here for the greater mission of of ACB. That's why we all do what we do. And, exactly. you know, we, we have to, uh, we have to eventually replace ourselves and, and, and spread our wings for lack of better terms. So. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you for a really wonderful, informative panel and, uh, you know, keep on being great ACB members. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, All thank right. you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah. All right. I think we've got Debbie Hazelton and maybe Tony joining Indeed. back for Leadership Live. Yeah, I think I heard Tony. Tony, you're there, aren't you? Wow. I know he was wrapping up a, a session in room B there, so he yeah, may be on his true. way back. That's true, but I know that we have a one minute. We have a mini mall minute here. We have Carla ready to come in. Hey, Carla. Can, uh, who's hosting? Um, you can, I am. There we go. Oh, all right. Let me, Carla? let me find her. Let's, She's yeah, let me look on a phone. She couldn't get the link to work today. Oh, okay. Just, I don't know what her, uh, there's a 502. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I think I see her hand. Yep. There she is. There you go, Carla. Hey, hey, Carla. You can speak now. Just unmute. <laughs> she will i know there we go there we I go couldn't, i couldn't hear my i couldn't hear my phone talking to me because everybody else was talking <laughs> so now we yay got yay right. we're here all right um well i have a couple of things to make sure that we cover and the product that i want to highlight that patty tells me she's uh, is next on her list is the spa the um the the spa that will help you sleep at night. It's uh, good. It makes four. You can choose from four different 
relaxing sounds, um, and it is very simple to operate. It um, it has a uh, you, well. The four sounds you can choose between are summer night, ocean waves, rain, or white noise. Um, it helps you to drift off to a good night's sleep. It has a built-in 15, 30, or 45-minute auto off timer. And it's very compact. It kind of looks like an egg. It's sort of egg-shaped. Um, and it's convenient for travel. It's good to use at home or whenever you happen to be wherever. It stores in its own black polyester pouch imprinted with the ACB logo. Um, it's all push-button operation. So there's nothing that you have to look on a digital uh, readout or anything that you can't do with the push-buttons. It runs on three AAA batteries that are included, and the measurements are five and a half by four inches, and it's twenty-five dollars. And the the uh, I'm not sure I said, but the ACB logo is imprinted on the pouch. Cool. So um, that's a great little product, and sometimes we all have problems sleeping, so um, that can be real helpful. I do, if we have time, Debbie, mm-hmm. just want to remind. Uh, everybody of a couple of things. Sure. We are open from noon until 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, so we are accepting calls from noon till 9. If you get a voicemail when you call, just leave a message and we will return that call. The phone numbers are 877 630 7190. Or eight seven seven nine six nine mall. That's six two five five eight seven seven nine six nine six two five five. And also, just a reminder that um, our promotions will go on all week, um, all the way to Friday, in what we are calling our DC celebration. And we will, um, if you have a seventy five dollar order or more, over the entire week. We will take ten percent off that order, so uh, that does not apply to items that are not shipped by ACB. But for anything ACB ships, the seventy-five dollar or more uh, will get you a ten percent off. So we hope to hear cool. from a lot of you at the mini mall. Yay! Thank you, Carla. And I'm here, Debbie. Yay! Hey, Tommy. Sorry, I had to close Hi, up my you? own session with Bill Reader and Joe Lynn, and it was wonderful. I know, but that was good. Thanks to everybody. Yeah. So. Well, wonderful. Thank you, Carla, for that many more minutes. What an afternoon, huh? I'm exhausted. And I only had to run 10 feet. Remember when we used to be in like hotels? We got our 10,000 steps in? Oh, yeah. We're going to die next year. We've probably gotten 10,000 thoughts in. (laughs) Exactly. 10,000 texts and emails. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, it has been a fantastic day. We want to welcome everybody coming back from their breakout sessions. We just finished a real good one with fundraising. Were you listening in on the mainstream channel? I listened a little bit there and I listened a little bit on audio description. It was good to hear Kim and others nice. over there on good. special. And all of them have had great numbers. I mean, I'm seeing, you know, uh, 50s, 60s and and upward over 100. Um, and I'm just so excited that everybody else is excited. This is great. It's it's great to have all these different projects and teams speaking up. It's really and great. What's been exciting is, you know, we're talking about this. We, we are doing more now than we have in past leadership conferences. I mean, we're having triple as many people attend, which has been wonderful. Yeah. But we're also really having just so many more people be a part of this. And we're giving them more stuff to be able to do. So, I mean, people are kind of going their different ways as if we have different, you know, conference rooms kind of things. But it's been exciting to have, you know, three concurrent meetings. We're going to have two consecutive tracks each day of the legislative seminar. So essentially like four, mm-hmm. uh, you know, separate tracks. And so there's a lot of a lot of diversity now for the leadership conference, which is excellent that we're able to do this through Zoom. And so thanks to all of our, our uh all of our volunteers. Thanks to Larry. If you talk to him, Debbie, he was streaming our last I one. I know so. he was. I heard. I heard that. Yeah, and so. uh, and on the list, we're trying to get the NVDA things together that people are asking for. And mm-hmm. you know what I'm noticing is that people are expressing the things they're wanting. 
and they're asking the questions and they're showing up to find more like-minded people and similar interests. And so I think that's, that's really good. That's what networking is all about. So I think that's really great. Well, I'm excited to be having our next panel coming up in a second. How are we on time? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, should be. So we're right at actually about yeah. time. Yeah. And uh, Tony and Debbie, where, where uh -huh. I keep kind of just the, the light bulbs just keep going off in my my poor little head here is that, <laughs> you know, by what we've developed over the last year through our community events and our ACB radio is you know, we would have really struggled to do this a year ago to have enough Zoom hosts and have enough broadcasters to even cover this type of uh, an mm -hmm. event where we had, you know, three breakout sessions and concurrent uh, activities going at the same time. But because of, uh, you know, everybody kind of stepping up and, and, and learning and taking on more responsibility has been so seamless. Yeah, I yeah. think we yeah. could have done that, but I don't know that we would have heard from anywhere near as many members and people coming forward and saying, I am really interested in this. And I'm here. I think we're hearing so much passion from people. And Debbie that and, is exciting. Debbie and Tony, this is Ray Campbell. I'm still sitting on the panelist side. They haven't kicked me out yet. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, host, seriously. Host, speak. host. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. I get no problem. I'm, I'm actually going to be getting out of here because I got a family thing to go to in a few minutes. But anyway, um, you know, I just wanted to say that um, something that uh, you know what we started a year ago. There is absolutely no way, and Dan, I'm sure you agree with me. There's no way the board and the staff could have sat down and planned this mm -hmm. and put a plan together. It's kind of like you know. It, we talk about all the policies and things with the community and stuff. It's like, okay, Cindy, we, cr we created the monster. Now we got to figure out how to manage it. And, um, but, but it's really great. And it's brought so many new people to ACB and I'm just, I'm, I'm just blown away by the perspectives. And as I've said before, the talent in this organization that's, that's stepping up and, and, and doing all the, the wonderful things and, 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 and the people that I've got that, that, that we've all gotten to meet, uh, you know, that panel, those panels this afternoon have been great. I mean, just people that we would have never, perhaps never found out about if we hadn't developed this community the way we have. So just oh, wanted to you, throw that in. And thank you, President Spoon as well for, uh, for, for helping out with uh, Leadership Live while I was away. Uh, and I know, uh, thanks, Debbie. Um, I wasn't your wingman for a few minutes there, so. Gosh, uh, don't you dare let me down now. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> failed in my responsibilities as a, as a, as a co-host. I'm counting on you, counting on you. Yes, indeed. Well, we're in this together, so. So shall we pass the torch pass to you as, as we come so. back together, uh, President yeah. Spoon? Oh, th well, yes, or thank you. I, thank you, Tony, yeah. and thank you, Debbie. Uh -huh. And uh, again, we will hear more from uh, Debbie and Tony uh, tomorrow. We have uh, two more uh, leadership live breakouts uh, tomorrow and Monday and also two on Tuesday. And thank you all so much. You all are the glue that kind of keep, uh, keeps us rolling here and gives us flexibility as we move from one event to the other and, well, and keeps that constant communications going. I'll be so thanks so much. I'll this fireside uh, chat later. So I'll be back for that. Uh, oh, I am so mm -hmm. glad you're going to be part of that. And uh, we're really looking forward to that at uh, yeah. 730 tonight here on nice. ACB Radio Mainstream. So, yes, uh, indeed. Okay. Well, thank you. And I guess it's uh, now my opportunity to uh, introduce our next uh, panel as part of general session, uh, introducing uh, the, the uh, topic of uh, Get Up and Get Moving, our new health and wellness campaign. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, uh, Tony Stevens, our development director, who's going to talk to us uh, about what's going on with that campaign and, and the different uh, development activities that are taking place inside of ACB. And then we're going to hear from members of our resource development committee, our RDC committee, uh, chaired by Dan Dillon from Hermitage, Tennessee and co-chaired by Leslie Spoon from Orlando, Florida, who is also our uh, auction committee chair. And then we have uh, Donna Brown uh, from Romney, West Virginia, who is our ACB Brenda Dillon Memorial Walk chair. 
Uh, we have George Holliday, who is co-chair of our monthly monetary support MMS program. And we have uh, David Trott, who is our ACB treasurer, and him and Alan Peterson are kind of our leaders uh, for our Braille Forum raffle. So we want to welcome our overall uh, development team and uh, hand it to you, Tony. We look forward to a, an exciting uh, late afternoon of uh, development activities. And thank you so much again, uh, Dan. I'm, I'm, I'm back again. I was only gone for like uh, just time to take a breath. Uh, I'm excited because the, the list you, you announced is really the, the rock of uh, the work I do in the sense that, uh, you know, in the last session we were on, those that were listening in with, with Bill Reeder and Joe Lynn Bailey Page earlier about volunteers, um, all those people Dan just mentioned are volunteers for the organization and they do an amazing job of helping to raise money and raise funds. And for that, we're extremely thankful. Um, you know, we have uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, really engage with them uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, but as volunteers, they really help uh, in sustaining us through a number of programs. What I'm gonna be sharing with you all is, um, is in opportunities uh, that we have around a major health and wellness campaign that we have. And that campaign uh, is something that we've really been working on. And, and the whole purpose of it, in a sense, is really to empower our community, particularly those that are most vulnerable, toward being able to take back their health, coming after a really long year and what will be more than a year of isolation and challenges that we've had in our community. Uh, but that's you know only challenges that, that we've recognized for the year, but they helped us uncover so many other larger challenges. And knowing the work that Clark's been doing in advocacy, we were really trying to think of what ways can we focus in on the health and wellness? Because that's where so much foundations are focusing. That's where so many corporations are focusing, other nonprofits. Where can we focus in? And that led us towards the creation of the Get Up and Get Moving campaign. And that campaign has been wonderful in as much to say that it's been something we've been sort of crowdsourcing with a number of corporate partners and stakeholders behind the scenes and have been getting support and ongoing support. So we're excited that it's been taking traction and you're gonna be hearing a lot more about it uh, in other ways that we try to work to, to raise money and things like that through ACB. Um, to that end, I just wanna take a liberty just for a minute um, and talk about health and wellness. Cause I don't know, um, are, do we still have uh, any of our California folks are on? Debbie, did, were they able to chat during the last leadership live while I was running back into the room or not? If they are still in as, as Steve, Judy, and um, cause I wanna give a shout out to them if they were waiting. If not, so be it. Um, we were gonna have someone as a guest for leadership live. I don't know if they were on or not, but talking about a fundraiser. Oh. That's Carla going on in California right now. Okay, right. Carlo was our guest. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if Judy and Steve, we we're going to try to get them on in the Leadership Live today, they'll be coming back as well on Tuesday during our health and wellness segment, where we'll be talking a lot more about this campaign. But they had a fun fundraiser. I thought that was great uh, because this campaign is all about get up and get moving. And California is working on a fundraiser literally for treadmills under my desk, at my desk right now. So I could be sitting here and I don't even have to get up. I can just get moving. Uh, but why get moving? Why is that important? Uh, you know, there's been a lot of data and a lot of research that shows the more we move, the more we can help get our health under control, things like obesity, but particularly for our community with diabetes, for our diabetic community. Uh, you know, it has been very critical. Uh, and we've had some, some, some great, you know, success stories uh, that, that are wonderful from some of our members. Uh, Jeff Bishop and Brian Charlson shared in a podcast series we did as we started to launch this Get Up and Get Moving sort of campaign uh, earlier in December. Um, but uh, the essentially the idea is, uh, you know, for us to be out in the community, to know how technology and how, how things can, can make us independent in our community. And so it's tied to advocacy. Uh, it's the first time in, in that, that, you know, I've talked with Eric about it that we can really think of with ACB where um, we're sort of making a large campaign, if you will, that's going to be several years in the running. And the idea of the get up and get moving campaign is, you know, there's going to be things like, uh, a challenge is going to be tied to it. There's going to be live events, uh, so a couple of events each year for the next three years or so uh, in major metropolitan cities where we're going to be doing some media opportunities. Um, so it's, it's going to be rather sophisticated. We are now currently scoping it out, trying to find out realistically what can we do within our bandwidth and where are the opportunities with our partners that we've been engaging with on the corporate side that are enthusiastic about it, knowing that we're all excited to come out of isolation, but particularly for some folks in our community, it's going to be even more challenging. But 
it's also a large public awareness piece, right? So the idea is it's a campaign that'll help bring in revenue, bring in opportunities, <laughs> sponsorships, and through other ways we can raise money in the organization uh, through foundation support. A lot of foundations are focusing on health and wellness, particularly in some of these areas that are impacting diverse communities of color and other groups like that, uh, where there have been additional struggles. And our hope is uh, to be able to have a campaign that raises awareness to the issues we've been having uh, and, and helps grow the organization by getting the word out through public awareness and finding ways that people can do things just like you heard in the community meeting earlier today in general session, things like what Leslie's doing with the armchair yoga, so many simple ways that we can, we can increase our health because uh, when we increase our health, uh, that gets us, uh, uh, you know, in a place uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, where we can get up and get out and really take back our independence, but more importantly, be seen in the community, right? And that's the part of the key of the Get Up and Get Moving campaign as well, that we will be seen in the community. So when we talk about these events and things like that, you'll hear from me over the coming year. And so, uh, you know, uh, that's exciting. Uh, I want to thank our, 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 our committees uh, that do the fundraising because uh, they have really helped out and they'll be sharing some things they're thinking of in this health and wellness space to really help get our minds around a real holistic, robust campaign uh, that's really going to help uh, drive the conversation as we come out of this pandemic, as we come out of isolation, uh, particularly those that, like I said, are more vulnerable in our community. And we take back our health, we take back our independence, and we get out into the community. And we're going to be showcasing and spotlighting and working with our partners on ways that technology can really help empower our lives as we get out, as we experience public parks, as we experience getting back on mass transit and feeling like we can safely be back in our community again. But we want the whole world to see us. And that's what the campaign is about. Uh, we're not gonna come out quietly. Steve is here. And Steve is there. Hey, Steve, how's yep, it going? He's raised his hand. Hey, hey how you doing, Tony? Thanks uh, for having us on here. You're and welcome. Got, and, uh, you know, we don't have too much time, but I'll just throw it to you just for a minute. What's the name of the, the, the thing you guys are doing? Because I need it right now on my treadmill under my desk. It's a little foot treadmill that you all are doing for a creative. Well, home. that that's exactly it. Uh, actually, there, there's there's two devices. The uh, one is called the mini tread, and that's a motorized device. And one is called the sit mill, which is a self powered device that you uh, and they're, you know, very, very small size of an airline seat put on your desk, uh, you can get in some uh, good uh, movement while you're uh, listening to ACB radio or whatever else we're doing at our desks. Uh, it's from a company called on the Move, that's O-N-T-H-E-M-U-V, which uh, they talk of as uh, uh, movement unleashes vitality. So it's on the move. And Patrick Netter, who is actually the inventor of the uh, both these devices, is here with us also uh, this afternoon. Wonderful. Thank, thank you, Patrick. And, and, you know, I think in a sense of, um, uh, I think you all will be with us on Tuesday. So tune in uh, to one of our leadership lives and we'll get a chance to talk more about that. Um, and I expect to hear a lot of these treadmills running during your California team walk this summer, uh, during our walk that Donna is going to be talking. You're, about. you're reading my mind. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do the virtual yeah, so. walk with California, uh, on our, on our mini treads. We'll have to think <laughs> of a California challenge or people that have these devices. Uh, they're pretty cool devices. So, but, um, but in that sense, uh, thank you, Steven. I'm glad we got you on. Cause I know we wanted to get you on in the leadership live and I apologize. Um, but thanks for jumping in there real quick you know, to close out the part on the health and wellness campaign, and then I'll, I'll yield my time to the other people, the communities that are, uh, you know, the committee chairs that are doing such fabulous work in fundraising uh, and the success that we had over the past year is incredible. Um, you know, the health and wellness campaign is, is essentially just this, uh, you know, technology can help us take back our life. Uh, and the campaign is meant to, to tell the world about how we're, we're coming out of isolation and we are, uh, you know, uh, looking to be in a world that is much more inclusive uh, after this pandemic. And, you know, keep your ears open uh, because we're going to be talking about ways that you can get involved with the campaign, talk about the get up and get moving challenge as that comes to, comes to greater sort of granularity. And we'll be sharing that with folks as well. Uh, but it's just something to think about. And it ties to a way uh, that maybe your affiliate, your organization, you know, what ways can you think of, of being able to look at, you know, uh, the, the, the side of your advocacy and what you're doing and to be able to find partners who can help lift you up and support you. Because in a lot of ways, the fundraising side of this campaign is specifically that, to get people behind us that support us and how can we have them, in a sense, as we get up and get moving, walk with us, right? And be a part of our community. And that, that in and of itself, you know, we'll be doing some fundraising talks and conversations on ways that you can think of ways to have similar uh, positive experience uh, because it's exciting when people that 
aren't directly impacted. These, you know, corporations are not people, many of them blind themselves and are, are not uh, in that way. And it gets exciting when you have people in a larger sphere begin to get excited about what you're working on and the mission and what you're trying to accomplish. So as we, as we get up and get moving out of the pandemic, uh, we'll look forward to working with those partners. And we want to find ways that you can also build similar relationships with your corporate partners, community foundations, other ways as well. So that's on my fundraising plate this year to help you know, sort of work with our affiliates and empower them. So, uh, but that's, you know, essentially the campaign in a nutshell. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I want to thank Eric and, and Dan and our leadership team for really being supportive of it. Um, and as well for our committee members that all now turn to uh, when you talk about their own committees. And I think they've been wonderful in thinking of ways they can help support ACB and the national uh, advocacy and work we're doing uh, to help this campaign be a success as well. But, you know, I'll go and turn it over now to who's first on the list for coming up now and talking about the committee work and ways that, you know, uh, folks have been able to give over the past year. That's been so amazing and so outstanding and the success that we've had and where we're looking for 2021. So I think, who do we have? Tony, first? this is Dan Here, Dillon. Me, Dan. I, I was going to talk a little bit about the RDC and most people out there listening know what the RDC is all about, but there's always a few that don't know. So I wanted to tell you that the RDC, RDC committee, it stands for Resource Development Committee, and we pretty much oversee the, the fundraising within the organization. And uh, uh, the people that follow me will talk about the individual fundraisers, but um, I want to talk a little bit about our ACB Angels program, though, and that was started back in uh, 2014. It's been extremely successful. It's brought a lot of money into ACB, but more importantly, though, it recognizes members who have passed on, uh, specifically members who have contributed a lot to the American Council of the Blind. And uh, it, it takes a donation to ACB of $500, a minimum of $500, it can be donated by an individual. It can be donated by an affiliate or a, a chapter, or affiliates can go in together to uh, to come up with that $500. And in return for that $500, uh, the recipient will get their own web page with a picture, with a bio, and then they will, will receive a, a plaque uh, that has raised lettering and it has Braille on it, uh, stating the person's name and the and the, the the date that they passed and that'll be displayed on our angel wall and when we when we have a a face to face uh a convention that wall will be uh d displayed in our exhibit hall so uh that's that's what the angel program's all about if you're interested you can contact tony at a Stevens at acb.org. And I would like to uh, pass it on to, to Donna um, to talk about the walk. And that, that walk, uh, the ACB Brenda Dill Memorial Walk, started back in 2009. And in the past... Uh, uh, let's see, is that 19 years, I guess, 18, 19 years, we raised well well over $350,000 for, for, no, over $550,000 for ACB. And, uh, well, anyway, Don will tell you more about it because now uh, you can you can split whatever you donate to ACB. Uh, half goes to an affiliate of your choice. But uh, Donna Brown, would you like to talk a little bit about the walk? I am ready. All right. So um, the walk started actually in 2009. And I can remember it like yesterday. It was in hot Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the 2021 walk, our theme goes right along with the um, health and wellness campaign, campaign. And our theme is Get Moving Together. Uh, and so we chose that theme partly, you know, we're all going to be virtual this year and, and we know that. And so the cool thing about the walk, um, when you sign up for the walk, it, it costs $25 to register uh, and each individual that that's what they pay to register for the walk 
when you register for the walk, you will actually have your own walk web page, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, costs more than $25 to create your own web page. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so because we're all virtual, we, we won't have an actual in-person walk. So you can walk anytime you want. You can walk anywhere you want. Or even if you have trouble walking, that's one reason we chose Get Moving Together, because some people need to move in, in other ways that they may be una unable to walk, and that's okay. Uh, so Get Moving Together. So we're all going to kind of together do it virtually. Um, some people might, you know, physically maybe get together and, and do a walk. Some affiliates might do that. I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so the goal for the walk uh, is the overall fundraising goal. The walk truly is a, a fundraiser, but it is also an opportunity for, for people to uh, have a, an opportunity for a fitness activity, get moving. Uh, so the goal for this year is $95,000. And you think, woo, that's a lot. But we've come awful close to that uh, a couple of years. And so I believe this year we can exceed that probably. So how it works, when you go to register for the walk, um, you will be asked, do you want to walk as an individual or do you want to be a member of a team? Um, you can create a team as well. And so the deal with the team is you, your affiliate can have a team. It's basically affiliates or committees. We haven't gotten stretched out to the chapter level yet. That gets a little bit trickier. Some states kind of work that out. But anyway, so you, your affiliate can have a team, which includes special interest affiliates. Um, and committees can have a team. And so when a person creates a team, they would be called the team captain. And they need to indicate what percentage of the amount of money their team raises will go back to that affiliate. You can have up to 50% come back to your affiliate or your uh, committee. If you're a, a committee that has a budget, it's kind of a good way to get some extra money maybe for your committee. Uh, so anyway, then when, when a, you go to sign up, if your team's already been created, created then you can just join that team. Uh, so anyway, it's, a, it's, it's not as confusing as it sounds. Um, so before I forget, the website is not quite ready yet. There was just a little glitch in probably one of the most important parts of the website, and that's where they take your money. Uh, so as soon as that's worked out, which should be within the week, uh, emails will be everywhere telling people how they can sign up for the walk. So here's some incentives. Um, we really want to encourage new people, new teams, and, and people who've done it before to sign up for the walk. Um, the first five new teams that sign up for the walk will receive some Starbucks gift cards. Uh, so, and I already know of one team that's, you know, as soon as that website goes live, I think we'll be signed up and they're a new team. So, um, then what happens after you sign up, you, you are given a, a web page, and that's what you want to use to share with your family, friends, uh, acquaintances, coworkers, you know, whoever. Um, and that's how you, one way to seek donations. Um, I always have some people who donate, but aren't real tech savvy. So I print out a donation form and they fill it out and either, you know, give me the, the donation or mail it in themselves to the Minneapolis office. So if you have any questions, you can contact me. Uh, my name will be on the walk website, the walk announcement and, and all that kind of thing. So let's get moving together and help us raise $95,000 and help your affiliate raise, you know, 
whatever amount, uh, uh, you know, our little Mountain State Council last year, we got a check for almost $1,500. That's a lot for us. So the sky's the limit. Thank you, Donna. Leslie, would you like to talk about the auction? I sure would, Dan. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I'm real good. Good, 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 good. So the auctions, I'll say auctions because um, we are now the auction committee is doing the holiday auction also. So we're doing the summer auction and the holiday auction for the ACB radio. Um, they were wonderfully uh, participate. We had wonderful participation last year in our virtual world. So I can't say enough to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We raised over $52,000 for both auctions combined um, with the summer and the holiday auction. So thank you so, so much. This was um, created many years ago by Dan Dillon's um, late wife, Brenda Dillon, and Cindy Hollis and um, Jeff Tom. So uh, I came in as a member of the committee and now I'm the chair of the auction and it means so much to me. It's so near and dear to my heart. I love it. I uh, can't say enough about the auction. I love to get up and get going also, but you know, auctions are just as near and dear to me. So um, we will be reaching out to you. Our name is the Diamond Jubilee. So it will be the Diamond Jubilee auction this year. It will be on July 20th, Tuesday night. It will be virtual again. We'll have our wonderful auctioneers and describers back. Uh, again this year, um, Cindy and Dan and Michael and Jeff and then their describers. So stay tuned for all those wonderful dis auctioneers and describers. We will do an appetizer auction again. It'll be Thursday, July, oh, oh, July, let me back up, uh, Thursday and Friday. <laughs> so before the convention starts, and then the night of the auction will be July 20th. So the appetizer auction will be Thursday and Friday, um, like we've done before. This just kind of helps. Uh, it's a little appetizer, a little tease before the auction. So we have about, you know, 12 to 15 items each day, and they can contact me by email or calling me. It's kind of like uh, I'm the... Um, you know, like a little auction house for those two days. So it's a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, my email is Leslie Spoon, L-E-S-L-I-E-S-P-O-O-N-E at cfl.rr.com. You can email me. Uh, we are going to do pictures this year for the items. So stay tuned if you do send out descriptions and you can do a picture that would be great with your description. If you can't, no worries, we'll get the picture for you. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. We'll be, the committee will be reaching out to you. So stay tuned and enjoy. And we just look forward to everybody contributing again. And again, I can't say enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was the best year we've ever had. So uh, keep up the great work. Thank you, Leslie. George Holiday, would you like to talk about the MMS program? I sure would, Dan. Thank you. All right. And I'm going to thank my co-chair, G-Man, and all the members of the MMS team. <clears throat> but especially, I want to thank all the members of ACP who are participating in the MMS program. Last year for the convention, we set a goal of enrolling 321 total members in MMS. We started out with 258. We hit our goal and went up to 230, I'm sorry, 332. So our goal this year is 421, 421. 421 for the year 2021. We can do it. <clears throat> we have a lot of members in ACB, and we have a lot of people who want to <clears throat> do fundraising. So now what I want to do is, before I tell you how you can do it, I'm going to entice you a little bit by letting you know that just for this seminar, first prize for the... All right, 
<clears throat> anybody who starts out with a $10 donation, a monthly donation, and or increases their donation by $5, their name goes in the hat for a drawing of a 32 inch smart television. But in addition to that, we are gonna be drawing names for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for a $50 gift card. So, but to go further, <clears throat> your name will go in the hat additionally at the ACB convention for first prize of a five, for a $500 gift card. And second, second prize will be Sonos second generation smart speaker. And we will also have daily prizes. Now, we need you to, I'll give the information where you can email or call, but you wanna make sure you start out at at least $10 and or an increase of five. When you sign up, you can designate half of that amount to go the up to, up, up to half of that amount to go to your affiliate. It, it would be automatically withdrawn for your check account or credit card. And so once the initial sign up is done, you have no worries. But on top of that, every quarter, whatever you split with an affiliate, they will receive, you and, and the, your affiliate will receive a check every quarter with that amount. So it's a win-win situation for ACB and your affiliate, and there's no work, hard work behind it. Just the initial contact of getting your contact, you're getting your uh, initial, initial payment. Uh, now, you can con if for those who want to contact us via email, it's askacbmns at gmail.com. And you can leave your name and number there on that email. And <clears throat> Gene or I will get back with you. Okay. And well, let me give you the telephone there also. It's 202-743-0755. Now, we only want to get, the only information we want from you initially is your name and telephone number and what your initial start amount would be. I mean, it has to be a minimum of $10. It could be 20 or 30 or more. And if you are increase, increasing of, of, a million, of a minimum of $5, we need to know that. And then uh, later on in the month, that information will be given to the Minnesota office. And then they would initially contact you and follow up to confirm your donation and get your credit card information. And we go from there. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can use that email or, and or telephone number, and we'll be glad to assist you, and we'll be glad to sign you up. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, George. Mr. David Trott, would you like to talk about the ACB Braille Forum? Uh, 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 yeah, raffle. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, but first, as treasurer, I want to thank all of you. Not just the members, but our friends, our sponsors, our corporate sponsors, and our great staff who've done such a great job at raising money for ACB this last year. When we thought it was critical, you made it happen, and you made it happen in style, and we would be remiss if we didn't recognize you for it. So wherever you are, give yourself a pat on the back. If you didn't give a dime, but you give your time, you gave the equivalent of money to ACB. So we love you and appreciate what you've done for us. And it's for us, all of us, and that includes you. Now, let's talk about my buddy, Al. He's not with us today here, but he may be listening somewhere. But if he's listening and he's not, y'all tell him his goal this year is 150. Uh, he'll understand what you mean. <laughs> 150 tickets. Alan is our greatest ticket seller. He is the greatest ticket seller for the Braille Forum Raffle of all time. 
uh, he, he does a great job every year for us. And when you see him, thank him for it. Uh, board members and officers, if you thought I forgot y'all yesterday and you're smiling, thinking, oh, David's leaving us out this year. Uh-uh. It's on the way. Don't worry about it. It'll happen for you. Um, I'm looking out for you because I know you don't want to miss out. Now, you out there, wouldn't you like a chance to win third prize of $500 or maybe the second prize of 1000 And I know there's even a few of you that'd like to win that first prize of $5,000. Well, I've got that opportunity for you here today. Uh, between now and the ACB convention, uh, banquet actually, and even during the banquet, we're going to be selling our Braille form raffle tickets. They're $50 each. And you or you and four of your friends can go in together and buy a ticket. Uh, that's all it takes, one little ticket. Of course, now we've had people buy more than one little ticket before, and we hope you will again. But this is a great fundraiser. It helps the Braille form each year, and we all love the Braille form. We love the, uh, the uh, themes that we're having now and the great opportunities that we have to learn and experience other people's uh, lives through the articles in the Braille form. It's just a great publication of the American Council of the Blind, and I'm, I'm proud to be associated with this fundraiser every year. Uh, actually, myself and Dan Dillon and Dan Spoon and Billy Jean Keith back years ago, uh, we've headed this thing up every year, and it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of work, and uh, we're going to do it one more time. Our goal this year, last year, you made my dream come true. Dan Dillon actually beat me a few years ago. I had had the record for the frail form raffle tickets, but then he beat me one year. Oh, man, it was so sad. Sorry, Dan. Last year, we had the best frail form raffle ever, uh, over $23,000, and our goal this year is $25,000. So y'all help us make that $25,000 uh, and raise some significant money for the Braille form, our, our star publication, and know that we appreciate whatever you do, if you join the walk, if you join MMS, uh, if you take part in uh, any of the auctions, any of our fundraisers, or if, you know, if you don't have the money and you have the ability and you host a Zoom call, anything that you do to help ACB comes back tenfold, I promise you. We love you, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you, David. And before I turn it back over to Tony, I would I would like to say that when we started the walk uh, back in 2009, one of the the, the, the the things that we talked a lot about and, and we did promote at the time was how important it was to get out and, and, and walk and, and get moving and exercise. And, uh, and now I'd like to commend Tony Stevens because he's, he's really the big, the big push. He's spearheading this get up and get moving campaign. And it's great for all of us guys. We, we've, we've, we've got to try harder to, 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 uh, to stay in shape and exercise and get moving. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate it. And for everybody, for, for Donna and George and, and David and, and, you know, uh, well, Leslie as well. Um, thank you all very much. It's, it's, the work you all have been doing this past year has been nothing short of amazing uh, in, in that, you know, all records were, were blown and out of the water in a sense. And, and it was exciting. So, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate myself to work with such an amazing team of dedicated volunteers who do such a wonderful job of raising money for the organization. You know, one of the things um, that, you know, we're, we're very much passionate about at ACB is really trying to find ways that, that everybody uh, can get involved and, and do something. You know, when we talk about a challenge, uh, it's, it's a question, what can you do? You know, what can you do for the organization in a sense of just being support? Like David mentioned, even if it's a volunteer, that, that has a huge significance, sometimes an even greater value. Um, even if, you know, you might not be able to give money if you can't give monthly. Um, you, you probably very well have friends and family and people in your network uh, that don't know of ACB yet. Invite them to one of our community events. Invite them to one of our activities, one of our functions, some way to help build the, the footprint. You know, David talking about the Braille raffle, it's real important to remember our community has very much grown this past year. We've brought in so many new members thanks to our community events and the work that Cindy Hollis was highlighting earlier in the day. 
Uh, but with that's going to come an additional cost, particularly around the Braille form, because we want to make sure that people get those issues in Braille for those that ask for them or in large print. And, and that's going to be a, a more cost. Our Braille costs of Braille form is going to have to go up as our, as our community grows. And that's a wonderful problem to have. Uh, so helping out with that Braille form raffle. Thank you, David. That's going to help help us as we continue to grow this organization. Helping out with the auction, that's going to help you know, really getting your friends and getting the enthusiasm together. There's no more fun event at the convention, I think, than the auction event where everyone just gets excited, right? Helping out with MMS, uh, not only can you have a chance to get a big screen TV or the, the you know, wonderful clear sounds of Sonus in your house if you're one of the lucky winners, but you're going to be giving a little bit each month. It's, a, it's you know, the, the price essentially of two trips to Starbucks. Um, you know, one of those Starbucks gift cards you can get uh, through, you know, registering for the walk. Uh, you know, that's, that's two drinks of Starbucks. Uh, you give that much a month. Uh, you can help sustain this organization significantly. And with the walk as well, uh, you know, if you can get up and get moving, uh, even if you can't give, if you're just getting up, getting moving, letting people know about it, you can start your own crowdfunding page and get other people to give to you, friends and family, and they can help. You don't have to be the one that gives. Uh, so we want to make it easy for people to be able to get involved with the organization. And with our Get Up and Get Moving, Dan, thank you so much in, in really emphasizing that fact that, you know, so much of this work started so many years ago after uh, the Brenda de Dillon Memorial Walk, named after your, your loved one who passed years ago. Um, and, and it's been such a wonderful opportunity to work with such an amazing group of fundraisers. So I'm the one that's thankful here. And in that sense, uh, you know, uh, stay tuned. We will be talking more somewhat about the health and wellness part that I shared at the beginning uh, during our health and wellness track at the legislative seminar. But be sure to check out all the times uh, for legislative seminar activities and events. We're going to be having this stuff recorded. Um, you know, share with your affiliates, share with your organizations and your members. Don't be afraid with the walk and, you know, the MMS. It's a win win for you as well as an affiliate leader. So, Try to take advantage. I'll, I'll, in fact, give a challenge now. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every one of our affiliates, every one of our affiliates had a team for the walk this year? That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's see how many people we can we can give up for a Donna's challenge for new teams this year. So it'd be wonderful if every team could have one. So uh, to that being said, uh, we're going to see if anybody has any questions as we close things up. Uh, and as always, you can also reach out to me at astevens at acb.org with any questions about any of these programs and we can help get you set up. A-S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S at acb.org. But does anybody have any questions before we close up for the day? There aren't any hands yet. All right. Well, we did such a wonderful job of laying things out for everybody and we're so excited. So thank you so much. So I guess we are uh, on this end uh, going to be transitioning back to President Spoon if you're available now, sir. Uh, we can pass the baton back to you. Well, yes, Tony, thank you. Thank you so much to the Development Steering Committee, to your uh, leadership as our Development Director, and thanks to the Resource Development Committee, the RDC, with Dan and Leslie and Donna and uh, David and uh, Jean and, uh, and George and uh, Carla and all the folks uh, that really uh, pull our uh, member events, uh, fundraising events together. Uh, we had our best year ever last year, thanks to the wonderful outpouring of our membership and friends. And uh, Tony, again, congratulations on that uh, Gibney uh, grant uh, that we had come in just this last week. That's going to mean uh, the ability to hire an assistant uh, for Cindy Hollis with our community events. So again, uh, the momentum and the good works of ACB just keep growing. And I think success breeds success. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was a wonderful and congrats to Cindy for the work of the community. That presentation she gave was so moving earlier today and so exciting. Uh, because it's the organization that's gaining awareness for everything we're doing. They're, they're helping spread the word. And that's, that's getting the attention of foundations even now. So we're thankful for that. So thank you, Dan. Thank you, Tony. And I also have to just say, again, um, it was very moving for me. But for our highlight video, uh, even though it was only five minutes long today, 
it really, to me, you know, as we go through these struggles day to day, you know, in your quote unquote in the trenches and you're just, mm -hmm. you know, working hard to survive till the next day and the next week, uh, you lose sight sometimes of all the good work that ACB does. And so, uh, you know, when we, when we had that highlight film today and it showed kind of all we've gone through for the year and how many new and wonderful things have been created by this organization and, and the, the commitment and just the pride of ownership of our members. Uh, so again, uh, thanks to all affiliate presidents, thanks to the ACB staff and Boy, uh, I know that highlight video will be out there on YouTube probably before tomorrow morning because I know there's a lot of people that like to watch it several times. It was really moving. Thanks. And before I just jump off as well, Dan, you know, thanks to our sponsors as well for this conference, uh, to JP Morgan Chase for our presidential sponsor, uh, to Vanda, uh, who's a congressional sponsor, and to Vespero, who's a Beltway sponsor. And they'll be featured in the uh, digital inclusion portion of our legislative seminar. Vespero is going to be you know, that's uh, an opportunity that they've been able to help support and be associated with as a, as a Beltway sponsor for that. So thanks to all of our sponsors, as well as our members that have given so much this past year. All right. Well, thank you, Tony. And, and again, so kind of wrapping up for today. Uh, first, I want to just thank everybody for all the wonderful uh, presentations, both in our general session and in the breakout sessions. We really had good participation and lively conversations. So thanks to all of those that gave up their uh, talent and time uh, to be part of our presentations today. Uh, a special shout out to uh, Will Butler from Be My Eyes for being our keynote speaker. And I want to encourage everybody that we are just getting started here with our ACB Leadership Conference. We have two wonderful days of legislative seminar activity coming up tomorrow on Monday and on Tuesday. Uh, both days will start at 12 noon Eastern. Uh, Clark Rockville will be ho hosting uh, both of those days with all kinds of wonderful breakouts uh, from uh, government agencies, from members of industry, uh, from our local members, uh, and also uh, driven a lot from our advocacy steering committee. Uh, we again will have uh, two simultaneous tracks going. Uh, I think tomorrow features uh, transportation and living, learning, and earning with vision loss, really kind of down the lines of uh, rehabilitation, education, and employment. And then we'll have a general session uh, after those two where we all come back together to talk about uh, accessible mail-in voting and all the progress that was made in that, uh, that uh, advocacy effort this year. Uh, then uh, day two, we will have, uh, you know, a, a conversation in the morning from uh, our the new uh, chair of the advocacy board, and then that will be followed up by two more uh, breakout sessions, uh, one on digital inclusion, uh, and also uh, one on the health and wellness campaign. So uh, again, uh, very, uh, very exciting activities there. Of course, we'll have our leadership live breakouts. And then at the uh, end of the day tomorrow, we will have a panel discussion with many of our community uh, partners uh, talking about policy. So you'll hear from many policy experts from AFB and NFB and Vision Serve Alliance and many of our um, uh, our partners in the blind and visually impaired community. So uh, really a couple of very exciting days where we're going to learn. We're going to learn about our legislative imperatives at the end of the day on Tuesday with a final wrap up with questions and answers. And then we'll be walking virtually on Capitol Hill to visit all of our representatives and senators on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and maybe even into the next week. So uh, look forward to, uh, you know, everybody joining us over the next two days. And I want to really highlight that tonight we have a pretty special event, which is a fireside chat with our 
partners in the blind and visually impaired community. Uh, we are going to hear from, uh, I, I get the wonderful opportunity to host this uh, fireside chat. And we're going to have, uh, you know, uh, our two major consumer groups besides the American Council of the Blind, the Blinded Veterans Association with Don Overton, and the National Federation of the Blind uh, with Mark Riccobono. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, the ex executive director of the American Foundation for the Blind, Kirk Adams. We'll also hear from AER and uh, Mark Reichert, from Vision Serve Alliance with Lee Nasihi, and from APH with Craig Meter. So it's really going to be a wonderful opportunity uh, for us to uh, listen to our fellow members in the blind and visually impaired community, hear what we went through in 2020, what the trials and tribulations and unexpected maybe pluses were that happened to us in uh, 2020 and look forward to how we can work together in 2021. So uh, please uh, stay tuned to your email list and to ACB website. Uh, there'll be postings out there on the community events uh, uh, email list as well as leadership as well as acb.org sharing the uh, links for tonight's uh, fireside chat. It will also be broadcast on ACB radio mainstream so stay tuned to this channel after you get a little uh, break for dinner and once again i just want to thank everybody for participating in our 2021 acb dc leadership conference uh, in memory of charlie crawford and wasn't hey, that dan. wonderful to hear those comments about charlie today hey dan it's gene can i put in a quick word for mms please gene could you you have a anything you'd like to share with us uh well, miss man i would like to say that it's been a little bit slow so if you'd like to win a 50 dollar gift card and have a chance at winning that smart tv today might be a really good day for you to call Ooh, so uh, uh, leslie and i might be calling as soon as we're done with this show okay. here gene yeah ask uh, email ask acb MMS or call that Google number, which I don't have in front of me. I, um, I can share that with you. That Google number is 202-743-0755. Again, 202-743-0755. And, and when you call it, Google is going to ask for your name and then they're going to, it's going to ring a little bit and then it's going to tell you that the Google, um, subscriber isn't available so just leave a message and I will get a, a, an email uh, with your voicemail so um, I will get back to you. Thank you very much. Oh thank you Jean and thanks uh, for all you and George and the MMS committee do and again I want to thank everybody for being here for day one of our DC leadership conference. Thank you affiliate presidents and affiliate members. Thank you panelists and stay tuned. We'll be back at 730 with our first ever fireside chat. So till then, uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for being involved and a member and friend of the American Council of Blind. See ya. Stay tuned. And we'll be back on ACB radio tonight on mainstream. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Jeff, thanks for streaming. And remember, if you haven't, please go to tinyurl.com slash ACB radio and donate to get that MP3 of Jason Castingway. Thank you. Thank you.